Here is my full free course on how to get 40 appointments per month on autopilot. Now, why should you listen to me? There's a ton of other gurus to talk about how to get appointments, but I will tell you there is no one that's booked more appointments for himself through cold outreach than this guy right here. There is no one that has tried as many outreach strategies as this guy right here. And there is no one that has gotten more appointments for more people than this guy right here. We ain't talking about this or this. We're talking about this. So what are we going to cover? Well, the first thing we're going to go over is the fundamentals, how to actually create a cold outreach message and also which channels you should use or how you should actually reach out to people. We're also going to go over the scripts that I use to book calls. And then if you're just starting your agency, there'll be something just for you. Then we're going to go over the best lead list tools that you can use and then also get into the strategies. So we're going to go over LinkedIn, voicemail and Instagram outreach. Now I do have a ton more outreach strategies like Google Calendar invites, Facebook, iMessage, WhatsApp, Twitter. But that's in my advanced program where we set up these systems for you. We give you access to the tools that you need. And I personally help you one on one guide you on what you should be doing to get as many appointments as humanly possible. I'm going to splice this video up so you can go to the timestamp of wherever you want to start. Also, there's a ton of links and websites and downloads that I recommend you to check out. And so all of that will be in the description below. Let's get started. What's up, everybody? Today, we've got a really good video, which is crafting your cold message, uh, a guide to creating a cold message that converts. So this is version number two of this video. I've made a lot of updates. So if you've watched my previous video on how to create a cold message, this has a lot more to it. So please uh, stay until the end. There's so much to this. Um, and in today's video, I've got some guides. I'm going to teach you everything that I know. So I try to, I have like 96 slides, so this video might be long, but, um, everything that I know, and I'm going to give you some scripts that you can use, uh, some frameworks that you can use just so that you can easily. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to instantly create an amazing offer with whatever you're trying to pitch. So, uh, let's just get into it. So anyways, the mindset of crafting a cold message. So let me just move my big head here. Um, First thing is we want to be human, so we don't want to sound like an ad. Uh, just think, how would I talk to a friend? So what would we say to our friends is what we should say in the messages that we're using. So we want to use slang. We want to use grammar errors. We want to tell jokes. Um, this just makes us stand out from the crowd. So here's why. Because a lot of people do this where they, they make their uh, emails or their their uh, text messages or whatever they're using, their Facebook messages, they just make it look perfect, right? And so this looks perfect. And so um, when we get emails like this, we instantly filter them out because we've programmed ourselves to uh, filter out the noise. And so we always see um, emails that look like this. So anytime we see a newsletter and we have these like, just these key things that we see, which is like a photo, everything looks pretty. The uh, here up at the top, we have everything is capitalized correctly and there's buttons. And so we, when I see a thing like this, I'm like, well, I'm not really interested in this. I don't really care. It's a newsletter and I get hundreds of these a week or a month, you know? So we easily filter them out. So this noise is a constant bombardment of advertising and stimulus. And so think of a radio, right? And we have a radio, you have the, the noise. So that like the <laughs> that you constantly hear when you're listening to the radio. And uh, we want to find the signal, right? So we want to find these voices or like the people singing. And so let's just say you're trying to tune a radio, you hear the static, and then you hear voices or a song, and then you stop to listen because it's different from the static that you're normally hearing. And so uh, it catches your attention when you when you hear something different. So the average across the entire spectrum of when, of the radio, right? It's mostly noise, right? Mostly static. And then when you hear something or when you hear um, a signal, right? You get intrigued. So. Our job throughout this entire process is to step, separate ourselves from the noise so that we stand out from the competition. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. And the way to do that is just to, number one, is be to, to look human. Um, because when another human reaches out to a human, you feel much more inclined to respond to them based on reciprocity. So we want, to, um, we want to, someone to feel like they have to respond to us because they, want, they don't want to leave us hanging, right? Um, so... When your mom calls you, you feel obligated to pick up the phone, right? But when it's a scam likely, you don't feel any obligation. You, you don't feel anything. So you just you know, hang up. Uh, and so it's the same with advertising. As Gary Halbert says, people sort their mail over a trash can. So this was back in like the 1980s, 1990s. Uh, and you, you know, you would get all this mail, right? And everybody, when you, in the advertising, when, in direct mail advertising, I'm sure you probably get mail and you get all these, I'll get like, Chase wants to increase your credit limit or Arby's new whatever, you know, just random ads and they instantly just go in the trash for me. And so you have your stack of mail that you get every day and you have a lot of them that go in the trash because they just look like advertisements or those magazines that are just a whole bunch of coupons go straight to the trash. And so uh, everyone sorts their mail over trash cans. So the best way to get someone's attention is to not look like the trash, which the trash is just other advertisements. So the way to look 
like not the trash. It's to look like a real human. So if you hand wrote a letter, that doesn't look like, you know, trash, right? Um, so if you get something that looks like an ad, it goes straight to the trash. But if you get something that's handwritten, then you feel obligated to open it. So this applies to uh, not only mails, but also phone calls, not just mails and phone calls, but applies to all forms of communication that we do. So instead of this, which looks like every other email that floods your inbox, you want to do something like this. Send something uh, that has grammar errors, humors, and just try to be as human as possible. So also you can add scarcity. I've added scarcity here by just saying, R.E., did you see this, John? As if I already sent an email earlier. Um, and this is a follow-up email, but you have just this weird emoji that not, you know, you don't really see that. Now, a lot of companies are using emojis now just to look cool and fancy. Just, so um, when you see the mainstream doing it or when you see other companies doing it, you know you probably should stop doing that thing because the mainstream is doing it. And so if the mainstream is doing it and they're putting like smiley faces inside their email subject headlines, then you're like, all right, well, if they're doing that, that means it's people are going to start filtering that out. So people are going to start seeing emojis in the subject headline and they're going to instantly be like, all right, well, that's noise. That's just static and I don't want it. I want to find the signal. Um, and if normal people don't put emojis in the headline and only companies do that, then we don't want to put emojis in our headline, right? Um, or our subject headline. But, you know, this is a little different. And uh, we're using a little humor here, and we try to be as human as possible. Um, also by lowercasing this uh, and then having you spelled as just you rather than Y-O-U, stuff like that. What, another step further that I could have gone was just lowercasing John rather than doing the capital J. So uh, just some things you can think of, right? Also... Automation works, but being robotic doesn't. So we want to use automation to our advantage. Um, so we know we don't want to look perfect and we want to look human by using these grammar errors or slang or humor and all that stuff. Um, and so we want to look normal, right? But we still need automations throughout our process. So our goal is to look human by using robots. So use robots to look human. And uh, we do this by adding mistakes, adding variables like first names and talking to people as if we would a friend. And so you want to send an email that sounds like it's directed to that person or a message, right? Or a Facebook message, whatever. Something that sounds like it's only for this person, but we want to use automation so that we can send it to multiple people um, and they feel like it's for them. So if I said, um, hey, Carol, uh, is your mom, is your mom Marion, right? And you'd be like, oh, I mean, my mom is Marion, right? That, and that, that might be hard data to get, right? You might not be able to get that data, but... If you were able to send everyone a message saying their first name and their mom's first name, you'd be like, oh, I mean, yeah, my mom is Carol or my mom is Marion, right? So um, we want to use these automations to our advantage, but we also want to try to make them as personalized as possible, as uh, unique as possible to that person so that they feel obligated to respond. And so something that they did in um, the direct mail days, right, or even now they have, like, there's machines that will handwrite your letter or they'll handwrite the, uh, what's it called, the envelope for you so that it looks like it's a real person, you know, but it's actually just a robot you doing it. So it takes less time. Um, all right, let's lay out how your cold outreach should look. So here's how it works. We have intro, offer, call to action. All right, uh, and sometimes we add hooks at the end. Um, so let's see this in action. Let's just do, yeah, here's one. All right, I've been trying to find your profile forever, LOL, just a thought I'd ask you something. Uh, if I said I can get you featured on Entrepreneur Magazine, would you be interested? So in the blue, we have the intro. I've been trying to find your profile forever. Just thought I'd uh, ask you something. And then we have the offer. I can get you an Entrepreneur Magazine. Then the call to action. Would you be interested? Cool. Shameless way to start a convo, LOL. But I can fill up your yoga studio to max capacity in 30 days. Open a chat. You don't have to pay me anything up front, LOL. So this is kind of the same. Blue is our intro. Our offer is in red, open a chat, uh, our call to action. And then this time we have a hook, which is something at the end of the message. Hooks can be at the end of the message or just a follow-up, right? Just saying, hey, you don't have to pay me anything up front. Uh, just to try to entice them to respond. So, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to get into this because <laughs> this is like, this is going to be so good. Uh, you're going to learn a lot from this, hopefully. Um, you will. All right. <laughs> intros. Um, you're going to, your intro is just an icebreaker icebreaker right so it's just a subject headline it's just uh gets people curious confused or laughing you know so everything about your offer or your outreach should be unique and so uh the best way to get someone's attention is to create something unique uh and so we want to use our intro as a unique subject headline or a unique first line in our message just so that they're like oh that's that's kind of funny or that's weird or that's um, that makes me curious you know so intro examples here we go here comes the rain we're going to go um, 
and so I have an offer for swipe file. So I want to thank my team, Shacker and Shacksham, for helping me out create this uh, because they helped me uh, put a lot of these together. So we just sat for hours this weekend just trying to come up with a whole bunch of different offers, um, a whole bunch of different hooks. There's so much stuff in here that you guys can use, uh, but we're going to start with the offers. I'm sorry, intros. And so you can pick and choose whatever you want out of here, or you can create your own. I really just gave you this as a guide and a framework that you can use to try something. So RE, did you see this, right? So you can use it as a subject headline. Um, and so some of these only apply for certain things. Some of these apply for uh, Facebook or LinkedIn or um, social channels or just email or just text, right? So RE, did you see this would only really apply for email, but um, a lot of these apply for almost anything. So I uh, tried to send you this last week, right? Oh, that's like, and so you see that and you're like, oh, I feel obligated to respond now, right? Because someone tried to send me this like last week and I, and I have to um, see what this person is trying to say. Uh, and then there's some of these are a lot pretty funny. So I'm with the FBI and I have a few questions. Uh, my offer is good. Just hear me out. I think I accidentally, oh, there we go. All right. If, uh, let's just do, no, there we go. Uh, let's see. Once upon a time, you responded to my DM testing one, two, three. I need to tell you something about your wife. I'm about to pitch you the most ununique offer. Gracias amigo. This I think says hello friend in, um, in Japanese, I believe I just, I just did a converter, right? So just like that, that's interesting, right? That's really unique, right? If you set, if you saw just like if someone sent you a message request on Facebook and it was just like Japanese, you're like, what in the world is this? And so you click onto it. Um, uh, knock, knock, who's there? This might sound stupid. Uh, shameless way to start a convo, which is what we just used. Um, I don't slide into the DMs as often, but uh, urgent. Don't respond to this email. Right? That's just something that's funny. Roses are red, violets are blue. This is amazing. I have an amazing offer that might work for you. Can I tell you a secret? Right. And so some of these things are like, oh, interesting. Curiosity is one of the big uh, triggers here, and I'll get into that in a little bit. So those are some offers, or I'm sorry, some intros. I keep saying offers. Sorry. You can use these swipes that I made for you, but the best thing is to come up with your own because it makes it more unique if you come up your, with your own because the more people that watch this video, the more people are going to use the scripts, the less effective they become. So if you choose your own style, uh, I would choose your own style if I were you, and I made these scripts to give you ideas. Now, you can just blatantly use the scripts, right, because I gave them, you know, they're for you. Um, but again, the best way, the best thing to do is do your own thing uh, because me and my team, we came up with these over the weekend where we just sat for hours and just came up with our own. And so um, this is just a result of some things that we've used in the past, some things we haven't, some things that we thought, okay, well, these uh, would just make people really curious and let's just try that. And so we created this out for you, but then again, we're just three dudes um, trying to come up with these different intros. And so you can do the same thing by coming up with your own and it would be more unique if you did it because you know your audience a little better. You might know their language or their style and all that stuff. And so something might resonate better uh, with them based on what you say rather than just something that you pulled off of a swipe file that I gave to you. And so uh, use them to your advantage. I would use them 100%. If you don't know what you're doing, Just you can use those and I made them for you. Uh, but the best thing that you could do is create your own. So anyways, offer, we're going to get into this. This is the biggest portion of this uh, video, which is um, the offer, right? Realistically, we want to, our offer to be short and easy to grasp. So easy to understand. Like we know exactly what the end result is when we hear the offer. So some examples are two day free shipping, one click purchasing, four hour work week, work week delivered in 30 minutes or less. These are some amazing offers that have uh, st stood the test of time over the couple, I mean, over the last couple de decades. Uh, 30 day, I mean, delivered in 30 minutes or it's free was Domino's uh, tagline that got them to where they are. And it's, uh, eventually they, had, they got sued because someone died <laughs> delivering a pizza <laughs> so fast. That's, that's not, that's not very funny. That's sad. Sorry. Um, but for our work week, like the, I, I understand what this is. I know what the end result is and it's really curious, really interesting. And it, it makes me feel like I, like it's almost a no brainer, you know? So, uh, people have pretty short attention spans. So we want our message to be short and to the point so that, uh, so the offer should display the value in as few words as possible, right? So four hour work week, one click purchasing, two day free shipping. Yeah. Speak their language. The more specific you can make the offer, the better. And so you, we want to speak directly to them because they're going to reply better for that. So that offer swipe file, we went through two, uh, I think I'll get into that in a minute, actually. Um, uh, we went through thousands yeah, right, right, of offers and a lot of them just said, blah, blah, blah. I help businesses grow. I help businesses uh, create a system to consistently get clients, right? 
and you know, that might sound interesting to you. And when you're starting out, especially when you're starting out, you want to be un like not very specific. You want to be a generalist. Like you want to help everybody. You think like, and I thought this way too, where everyone was like, you want to be specific. You want to have a niche and everything. But to me, I was like, well, what if I can help out everybody? Right? <laughs> like I, I want to. I don't want to. Um, but that's a scarcity mindset. So you don't want to be scarce. Like in, in your audience, there's probably plenty to go around. There's plenty of clients in your audience, probably, right? I don't know who your audience is, but I'm guessing there's plenty. All right, if you're talking real estate or insurance or, I don't know, like a crypto gaming things, right? There's probably thousands already in that audience and you only have a couple customers, right? So there's thousands more to go. So you want to make your offer specific to that person. Don't do... I help businesses, blah, 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 because you're going to be ununique and everybody else is doing that. And the whole goal with this is to be as unique as possible. So, um, no one's going to respond to that. You must be specific, uh, with the outreach that you're doing. So out of the 200 offers that we reviewed, only 180 of them were actually kind of specific, oh, kind of, right? So some of them weren't even that good, but they were specific enough that we grabbed them. Um, and so we just sat for hours just going through these offers, trying to figure out who's got a decent offer. Um, and this is good news for you because no one else is doing this work. And so if you just applied this strategy, and again, by the end of this video, you'll be able to snap your fingers and create an amazing offer. Um, but no one, else is, no one else is doing this, which is great because you, you can apply it and you can get so much farther ahead than them. All right. So again, speak their language. We don't, we, we want, we don't want to be specific by just calling out their audience uh, in our offer like this. So we don't want to just say something like, I help pest control companies get more leads. Right, we don't want to just say that because it's calling out to the avatar or the audience, which we'll get into in a minute, but um, it's just saying, well, we'll help you get more leads. And so that's a little better than I help businesses do blah, 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 but it's still not very good because it's just saying get more leads, which is very ununique. It's not speaking their language at all. And so to be more specific, speak their language. So you would say, I help pest control companies get 10 bed bug heat treatments without Facebook ads or home advisor. All right. So that's like, oh, okay. That's really interesting because... Um, I know the exact end result that I'm going to get out of this. I get 10 bed bug heat treatments, which is a lot different than just saying, I help you get more leads. And so I'm more compelled. If I'm a pest control company, I'm like, oh, that's, that, that actually makes sense to me. That contextualizes in my head because leads can mean anything. Uh, so, and without Facebook ads or a home advisor, that also speaks to language because I've talked to a lot of pest control companies and a lot of them say, I don't want to do home advisor because it sucks or Facebook ads. I've tried it before and it sucked. And so uh, we want to kind of, uh, we'll get into how to kind of frame that offer in a minute. Here we go. All right. Talk in terms of end results. I've kind of already talked about this, but no one cares about anything other than uh, what they're going to get out of your service. And so you want to be specific. So let's just say you sacrificed hamsters to a sun god uh, to get 10 bedbook key treatments. The client doesn't really care how it gets done. They just want to know what's in it for them or what they get out of it. So we've all probably heard talk in terms of benefits and not in features. Uh, but for a long time, I didn't really know what that meant. So I'm just going to explain it to you real quick. A gym sells you a dream, an outcome, uh, what you're going to get out of it. So I'm going to get shredded and healthy and fit. And so that's the benefit that you're getting. That's, that's the benefit, right? So there's benefits and features. The benefit is you're going to get shredded and fit and you feel healthy and you're going to look good and everyone's going to love you um, and all that stuff, right? That's the benefit. That's the end result you're going to get off. That's the payoff that you're going to get out of it. The features would be the equipment that they have. So we've got the Smith machine and we've got the... Uh, the kettlebells, I don't know, um, and or their gym hours or their different classes that they have and all that stuff. And so we don't really want to talk in terms of uh, you're going to get, I've got a system that has, I've got a gym that has a Smith machine and our hours are 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and all that. Like no one cares about that, right? They want to, what's the end result? What, what do I get out of it? You know, so always sell the end results. Never talk about what your service is, just what it does. All right, cool. Let's start crafting our offer. Whoop, whoop, whoop. All right. Everyone knows Alex Hermosi, $100 million offers. We probably all read the book, but uh, there are some things that I'm just going to reiterate some points because you probably forgot. Um, so here's some advice from everyone's favorite man. Make a Mac. So this is like the as a magic. Yeah. So M-A-G-I-C. I don't know why I didn't capitalize I and C, but um, the magic offer, that's his way of doing it. Uh, this is his framework and uh, I, I believe in it, but there's also, I'm going to give you some better frameworks of like literally just, you can fill it in with your offer and you'll be able to, you know, create something really easily. But, um, these are just some guidance points. So you don't have to have all these, but you just have to have like the more, the not really the more the merrier, honestly, like the shorter they make it, the better. Um, but if you add a few of these, I think at least two, you'll have a pretty good offer in there. So make a magnetic reason why this is, doesn't really apply to us, but, um, with cold outreach, 
but let's just say you're doing a Facebook ad and you're like, hey, we got this Black Friday sale. Uh, we're gonna sell this for $999 rather than $12,000 that it usually is because of blah, 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 and it's Black Friday, you know, whatever. And so that's the magnetic reason why it doesn't really apply to us. So we'll start with uh, announce the avatar, which is just saying, hey, I help pest control companies get this end result. I help basketball, basketball trainers get this end result. Um, and so we wanna announce who they are, give them a goal. So a specific number, I help basketball trainers get 10 new clients paying $1,000 per month per client so that they can scale their business and do what they love, which is playing basketball. I don't know. Um, so I'm announcing the avatar. I'm giving a specific number of what the end result is going to be. 10 bed book heat treatments, 20 roofing jobs, you know, so indicate an interval. So a specific time frame. people value shorter time frames. So do anything to cut the time in half um, so that they can get the end result quicker and try to do it under a month. So what I'll usually say is, hey, I can, I can bring you 10 bed book heat treatments this month if you're interested, something like that, you know, so try to make it as short as possible. I can get you six pack abs in two days. Like, ooh, okay, that's actually pretty interesting. Um, and then we can complete with a t container word. So system, YouTube ads, voice notes. I can get you six pack abs in two days using this new jelly on your belly. <laughs> new jelly on your belly. Um, the jelly belly. Uh, okay, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. It is late, guys. 924 on a Sunday. Um, offer frameworks. Let's get into that. All right, so I gave you some... Actually, this is... Uh, so we have offer frameworks and swipe files. So this, I'm going to put this in the description as well. So this is what you're gonna to use to just craft your own offer. So you can use some of the things that he said in there, which is um, announcing the avatar and all that stuff uh, through these offers right here. So you can just, you can grab it and pick and choose what you wanna do and put your little things in there. So I help uh, basketball trainers get desired result, which is let's say 10, 10 students, 10 full-time students at $1,000 a month without challenge or fear. So without having to use uh, Facebook outreach or without having to use Facebook ads or Google ads or anything like that. And so you want to, you want to know what the audience wants, obviously. So you want to talk to your audience and know what they want because doing this without knowing that is kind of hard because I wouldn't know that because I, I used to do bed bug heat or I used to help pest control companies get 10 bed bug heat treatments without relying on uh, word of mouth. And the way that I came up with that offer, I just called a whole bunch of pest control companies and asked them what they wanted. They all said, uh, we hate home advisor. Um, we want more bed bug heat treatments because they pay the most money and they're the easiest to do. And uh, that's basically it. We don't want to rely on word of mouth because um, you know we haven't, had a, we haven't found a consistent way of getting clients. And so that was their problems. And so that's how I came up with my offer. And so the challenge or fear is relying on word of mouth or using HomeAdvisor. Um, and so I'm going to help you get your end result without that challenge or fear. So there's some examples in here. I got this from Mitch Wiggins. Shout out to Mitch Wiggins. Uh, he gave me a lot of these. I, I created some on my own as well, like this next one. Uh, but a lot of these are from him, so go check them out. All right, uh, next thing, how to get desired result through system. Now, this is undervalued. I, I couldn't come up with a lot of examples, but there, not a lot of people are doing this, and I think it works. With, I do this sometimes. I'll do like, hey, I can, get, I can bring you 40 appointments this month through my one-click appointment system. You know, like, one-click appointment system. I just got that from Jeff Bezos, one-click purchasing. And uh, so I saw this on Twitter, how to print women's addresses through Tinder voice notes. And I was, that was very intriguing to me because I was like, I've never, one, I, I never really used Tinder, so I didn't, I didn't know the lingo of women's addresses. I'm like, hmm, I'm guessing he, this guy knows his audience and he knows that that's the end result that the guys want, right? How to print women's addresses because I'm guessing the address means you can go to their house and you can, you know. Because I'm sure there's a lot of conversations that happen on Twitter, but they don't actually lead into anything. So we want to get to the end result, which the end result is the woman's address. So you can go on a date or whatever. So that was pretty interesting. T Tinder voice notes. That's the system that they're using. It's like, hmm, that's even more interesting because that's really unique because I've never heard anybody doing it through Tinder voice notes. You know, but what do I know? Um, how to get 10 roofing jobs through Amazon ads, right? And so that's that's really unique, right? Because how do you get roofing jobs through Amazon ads? Um, and I just created this one on the spot. Like I... You know, I just wanted to give an example where it's something if using this unique system that no one else is really using. And so it, it makes it sound a lot more compelling that way. Get 10 bed bug heat treatments through doctor notes. And you're like, what in the world? How would you do that? Right. And that's, again, this is just one I created on my own. Um, but I think this is undervalued. I think I, I, would, I would test a lot of these things. And I'm going to tell you later, you want to create a family of offers. But um, just try to create a whole bunch of different ones using all these different frameworks to try to see what works best for you. But try something with this one. I think no one is really using this one as much as they should. All right, how to get desired result in time. So I can bring you 10 bed book treatments in 30 days. It's kind of the same one as this one, except we're just adding time to it uh, or 
I, what I recommend, honestly, is you to desire a result in time without challenge or fear. I can help you get 10 bedbook achievements in 30 days without relying on word of mouth. So, cool. And so you can mix, mix and match these and put them together. This one, it doesn't really apply to um, for B2B, but it can be used for B2C. It can apply to B2B. Uh, but I help you get desired results so you can, you know, whatever. So I help you lose. So I have a, a client and hers is like, I help women uh, get fit so that they can look good naked. I'm like, oh, that's actually uh, really good and it relates to them. Um, and these are just a lot of, I don't know why there's so many uh, <laughs> weight loss examples. How to get high paying clients so you can buy the car of your dreams. How to get high paying clients so you can become a millionaire. Um, so you can buy a private jet. Just, I don't know. So if you know your audience, you know a selfish desire that they have or they're like, they just want this thing. Some of my clients, they'll do uh, I help blah, blah, blah. I help construction companies um, work less hours so they can spend more time with their family. So that's their that's the, the selfish desire that they want, which is I want to be able to spend more time with their, my family. Um, and so you want to kind of play into that or you can play into that. All right, or this one system will give you a desired result. This one system uh, will make you a desired result in time. Uh, this one says, and see, so it's kind of the same as this, right? Or system, right? Um, but just backwards without challenge or fear. I have a one click appointment system that can bring you 40 appointments a month without uh, relying on cold outreach, right? So that's this one system, blah, 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 right? Cool. How to instantly get desired results. So that's the time instantly. Um, yeah, whatever. So those are a lot of different options that you can use. You can choose these, you can use these to create your own offers. I would create a whole bunch of different ones if I were you. Uh, just to kind of mix and match. So there's your offer framework. All right. Um, also, when creating your offer, one other thing I'm going to show you is I have offer swipe files. So there's intro swipe files and offer swipe files. If you don't know what to offer, let's just say you're just starting out and you have no clue what you want to do. This is actually a really good way of uh, just finding out maybe what you want to do. Because I, so what I did is I'm a member of this school group, school, S K O L, oops. And um, what I did is we scraped the entire school group of, it was like 8,000 members. A lot of them have, hey, I help people, this audience do this by this, right? Um, I help courses code, blah, 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 you know? And so I scraped all these and we, we went through each and every one of them to see which ones had good offers. Each, each and every one of them that said, I help or I teach. And so we went through all those and came up with the best offers that we found. Uh, some of them aren't that great. Some of them don't follow this framework, but... A lot of them are just interesting enough that it caught our attention, so we put them in here. And so we help. I help basketball players increase their shooting percentage by 60% in 30 days without paying trainers uh, as shooting machines or spending 90 hours in the gym. That's actually a really good offer, right, if I was a basketball player. I help guitarists become confident players by making jazz guitar a walk in the park. That's actually really cool. Um, so these are just really interesting. Like I would read through all these because maybe if you're just starting out and you don't know – what really helped me starting out was just seeing what other people were doing. Not because I wanted to steal their offer, was, but it was like I could understand a little more um, how I could do it or how I could go about things. And so if you say you're passionate about basketball and you like helping basketball kids, that's something that you can just use that offer or help kids get that end result you know, without this pain. So that was really good, actually. So I help people get – help basketball players get this end result, 60% really good, uh, without this pain. You know, Anyways, I help financial conscious people to secure their retirement future by sourcing – uh, protected performance contracts. I don't know what that is. Um, so that's one. That one's okay. I help plumbers, HVC, electricians uh, to attract 100, 200 prospects um, for their high value service per month on average. That one's like okay because one we're targeting like three or four different people, and so you're like mm, I don't know if you know I don't know if it really speaks directly to me. And then on top of that, high value prospects. I would say I help plumbers get more. Uh, hot water heater repairs, right? That would be a lot more specific. Um, I help wedding filmmakers flood their calendars with high ticket bookings or high ticket weddings. That's an amazing offer. So you can go through this and just kind of see all these different offers and see what you, you want to do um, if you're just starting out or you can just get a lot of ideas of how some of the container words that people are using, like what, what kind of system they're saying, like Tinder voice notes, you know, it's just really interesting. Or uh, maybe how they're framing it, like the help you increase your uh, percentages on shooting. Like that's really interesting. So, uh, and then also I have, this is the entire school that I scraped. And so I'm just going to call this offers. Um, and so these are the 8,000 people that were in that school group and their names and like all that stuff. And so if you want, you can go through here and there's some of them that we, you can click here and look up. Um, 
I help. Now you might have to create your own version of this because I don't think you'll be able to do it if you um, on my sheet, so you'll have to create your own copy. But um, we can click clear here. So clear all these and just look up I help. If it'll come up, there we go. And just click select all and then go okay. And then it's gonna show you all the ones that say I help, which is 1400, right? And then, we, and then you can do another one where it just says I teach, right? Um, clear, or I teach, right? And then we can select all those and we can also do how to. So I teach blank how to. And so um, we can look at all these just to see what other other people saying. And so we went through a lot of these. Some of them uh, we didn't go through. So there's 8,000 total. We went through like 2,000 of them. All of them that say I teach and I help. So there might be some other container words or like words that how to get or just the word get. So you can look at all the ones that say the word get. Um, I teach people how to become coaches through my live NLP certification trainings. All right. So you can look through these if you want to and just get some more ideas. But these were the 180 best ones that we found. So I know I kind of went on a rant on there. So sorry about that. Here we go. <laughs> when creating your offer, you want to think of um, this. You want to make it one of a kind so that no one competes with you. Right? No one can compare to you because if you don't, you're just a commodity. Like, You'll get a much higher reply rate if you create an offer that no one else has ever heard before. Um, it could be the same end result but just a different system or less risk, which leads to my next point, which is uh, remove the risk as much as possible. If you were to remove the risk, it just makes it so much easier to say yes. Um, it makes it easier for the client to make a decision. Uh, you make it easy to you can easily increase reply rate just by adding with without any paid ads, or you only pay per lead or close, um, or uh, or just adding to your offer a 31 delayed payment, 31 day delayed payment. So you don't have to pay me uh, for 31 days, and you would only pay me if you think it was worth it. You know, something like that. Um, and, and so when you hear something like that, you're like, oh my gosh, that's actually really good. To, or you add a guarantee. It just makes it super easy to say yes, right, to that because now I know what the end result is, and if I don't get it, then I, I, there's no risk to me, right? And you might be scared to write really good offers, but I promise that you will stand out if you write these good offers because if you don't, you just become a commodity like everybody else. Um, a really good exercise is to think of if I had a, a magic wand and you could say the best offer in the world or you could deliver the best offer in the world to your audience, what would it be? Um, so that's so if I said, all right, if I could give someone 120 appointments automatically boop, with a magic wand without spending any money, and without um, doing any outreach or just no work at all, right? Just boom, 120 appointments. What, like, how would I frame that offer, you know? Um, another thing to say is if you were a scammer and the government wouldn't come after you and there was no repercussions, what could you say or um, what, what would your offer be to where it sounds so good to be true? You know, so it's like, hey, I've, <laughs> I've got... Um, I literally have 30 people that want to buy from you right now, like 30 people. And all you got to do is you just have to take these calls. I mean, I, I just can't take them. Can you take them? You know, that's something that's like, oh, well, I mean, that's not, that's not really a, <laughs> I don't think the government would be against that. But how would we, if I were to scam, and obviously we're not scamming people, but sometimes I, I like to think of like, like a hacker a lot or like scammers a lot, because a lot of times they, they have to be on the cutting edge. They have to think about um, what what's the best way to get somebody's attention? How do I... How do I frame this thing so that it actually gets someone to click or actually gets someone to send me money? You know, so um, even though it's unethical and all that stuff, but it just really helps you uh, understand like how how do we how do we get these people's attention? Because that's the whole thing about this is we're just trying to get people's attention. Um, one of the biggest triggers in copy is curiosity in teasers. So I've got a system that can that gives me ten appointments per week for free, and it literally only takes me two minutes a week to do it. So. Um, that was just curiosity. So now I'm sure you're curious. We're like, how do you get 10 appointments a week only working two minutes a week doing it and it's free? Um, and I'll, at the end of, end of the video, I'll tell you how to do this. Uh, and now there's your teaser, right? <laughs> so this is just fake. I mean, I do have ways to do that, but um, that's just the curiosity, which is I've got a way to do this uh, really easily. And then the teaser is like, I got, I'll show you at the end of the video. Um, so these are really powerful triggers and makes people really curious, right? Because then, because curiosity makes you want to take action. You ever see a link that says, don't click this link, right? And you're like, mm -hmm, I, I feel like I have to click the link or don't look this up. Or, or on Twitter, it was like, don't look up um, the 
I forget the darkest place in the universe or the uh, the coldest place in the universe, and it was like it looked like an Among Us character if you look it up on Google. It was something really stupid, but um, but it made me look it up, right? Because I was like, hmm, interesting. They say don't look this up. Um, so because it adds just curiosity. So the best way to get someone to respond to your offer is by adding curiosity, uh, so that they just feel like they have to respond. And so I have a hack that can instantly just add curiosity to your offer. And that in itself is curiosity, right? <laughs> um, so this hack is just play opposite day. So the best way to get someone's attention is just by saying something abnormal. There's consensus and non-consensus. The consensus is something that's normal. This is what the way that things should be. Non-consensus is this is abnormal. This is not like this is just um, left field, right? This is not something that I thought of. Um, and so we just want to do the opposite of from what's normal. So. I've got a system that can get brain that gives me 10 appointments per week for free. And it literally only takes me two minutes to do the way that I made this offer at normal is saying it's free, right? Which the, the normal is appointments are hard to get and they cost a lot of money and it takes a lot of time. And so if I say it's free and it takes me two minutes that instantly, right? We instantly separate ourselves from everybody else by using, by taking what the normal is and making it abnormal, right? So it's normal to get to work hard and to, Everybody says that, right? Everyone's like, you got to work hard and you got to try hard and you got to spend a lot of money to, you, in order to play the money game, you got to have money. But I said, look, you don't need money. You can do it for free. And it takes literally two minutes and you get this end result. They're like, well, how do you do that, right? You're instantly curious. And so um, consensus is getting appointments is hard, it takes time, expensive. So I flipped that on its head with this headline. And so um, make something hard into something easy make something expensive into something cheap make something that takes time into something that's instant and so like if you said i can get you a six-pack abs in two seconds right you're like oh like out right jelly belly <laughs> um and i gave some examples like youtubers use this a lot uh and I, all these examples are price related which i didn't really realize that but a twenty-one thousand dollars first class airline seat this was uh casey and i said's most popular video this was a recent video that uh mr beast posted one week versus, I mean, sorry, $1 versus $1 million hotel room, right? Whoa, because hotel rooms are usually $150 a night, $100 a night, whatever it is. So a dollar hotel room, that's like, that's non-consensus. That's abnormal. A million dollar hotel room, that's abnormal. I sold my house for a dollar, that's abnormal. Not $12, you know, McDonald's burger. And so even then, it's not even that crazy, like $12 burger, which is um, the price of usually a regular burger at like, b-dubs or red robins or something like that but it's mcdonald's right so the consensus is mcdonald's burgers are a dollar or two dollars and this is twelve dollars that's crazy um yeah so an easy way to create an amazing offer is just flip something on its head right flip, make it to where it's like uh, i get this end result without this pain right and the pain is what everybody has to go through and i can make it easier free or fast or um or expensive or you know just you know, hopefully hopefully get the picture right um call to actions and hooks so these are, uh, call to actions hooked are pretty easy, so there's not gonna be a ton to this, but there's some uh, important things that a lot of people miss. And so on social channels, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, you want it to end with more subtlety. And on email, SMS, Google Calendar invites, you want to be more direct with your call to action. The reason is people on social channels are willing to hold a conversation more. They see your profile, they know what, who you are and what you do, and you can get your foot in the door with a small ask. And so I like to, I call it a small ask, which is just something that causes very little commitment. You want to make it as easy as possible for them to say yes. And so sub call to actions for social channels is just framing the offer as if it's a question. So if I, if I said I can get you end result, would you be interested? If I could said I can get you um, a 60%, you know, increase your shooting range or your shooting percentage by 6% in 30 days, would you be interested? Um, if I could, you know, or just adding, would you be interested to the end or if you're interested? So a lot of times I'll say, I, I can bring you 120 points this month if you're interested. If you're interested. They're like, oh yeah, actually I am. Um, or you open a chat. Can I send over a quick loom? Right. And so these are just really easy ways to just, I can say yes. There's no, there's no commitment on a time. There's no uh, call that I have to get on. I don't have to spend any money. There's nothing like that. Right. Um, it's just easy for people to say yes to these. And they, then you can kind of drag on the conversation or hold the conversation back and forth. On email, SMS, and Google Calendar invites, people don't know who you are. And so there's not, and there's also not a lot of communication back and forth. It's a little harder to do the communication back and forth. So we want to get uh, off those platforms as quickly as possible and move over into a call. So something you would say for email, SMS, Google Calendar is, are you free to test sometime this week? Can I send over my calendar link? 
you can book here for free. So on Google Calendar, I'll do, you know, this is my offer, trying to make it as compelling as possible. At the end, I'll say, look, if, you, if I'll literally pay you $3,000 if it doesn't work. Um, and that's a hook, and we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but, and then uh, if you want, you can just book a call here. Because on the Google Calendar, their only option is to click the email button to email me, and no one ever does that. And so I just say, hey, if you want, you can book a call with me here. So communication on Google Calendar advice is really tough. Um, on email, it's also really tough because no one, no one ha- who, who do you know that just has a conversation back and forth on email? Like, hey, how's your day? It's really good. How's your, no one does that. Um, and then SMS people, you know, you would assume, you know, everybody has conversations back and forth every day on SMS. But the thing is, all you are to them is a string of numbers. All, all, you, all they see is a string of numbers. So they, they kind of assume that you're a scam. And so it's really hard to get somebody um, to convert on SMS. They're not going to just hold a conversation with a stranger. And so they can't see you. They don't know who you are. And so it's harder to do that. So what you want to do is you want to lead over to the call as quickly as possible. So I'll just say you're free to chat sometime this week. So um, I added CTAs and call to actions uh, to the offer framework. How do I do this? There we go. Um, so if you scroll down here, you have all those call to actions that I just added to here. Also some things that you can think about when creating your offer, which is basically what I just told you. Uh, adding curiosity. How I make $500 per day sending government letters. Like this is actually a friend of mine, Mark. He was saying that he's doing that. And I was like, oh, that's actually really interesting. Um, I don't think it's to the government, but it's just to some company. And they have to, in order to be compliant, they have to receive these letters. You get $5 per letter. It's just, it was really weird. But he's making $500 per day just sending letters. I was like, oh, that's, that's cool. Um, I accidentally found a superfood that cures male, male pattern baldness. I'm not sure if I want to tell you what it is. That's curiosity. And I just made a whole bunch of random examples here. Um, and then again, not consensus. Uh, I can help you get 40 appointments, no cold outreach, no VAs, no paid ads. That's uh, an offer that Mitch Wiggins does. And doctor, I drank, I haven't drinking water in over 20 years. Right? And you're like, to that you're like, okay, well doctor, <laughs> they recommend you drink eight glasses a day. And so if you have a doctor saying that they haven't drank water in 20 years, that's not consensus. That's a little weird. Uh, how I got 40 matches on Tinder in one day with my one line bio. Like, oh, that's actually really interesting. And th- these are just ones I made up. Um, anyways. So I added the call to actions to those, uh, to this framework, this document here, also just um, some, some, something to think about, right? Just the little points that I've made throughout this video in here so you can, when you're creating your offers, you can just go through this, understand what to do, and then create your offers. And uh, yeah, cool. Also, okay, we're gonna get into next up. Um, hooks, right, hooks. It's something that you can add to the end of your message or just use as a follow-up. So, uh, Earlier we did one where it was like you literally don't have to you don't have to pay anything up front. LOL. All right, that was the, the thing that was in yellow. And then another one, one that I'll do is I'll just say if it doesn't work for you, I'll literally pay you three thousand dollars, and I'll add that to the end of my email. No one's really taking me up on that. No one's really like asked me look how does that work. Um, and so it's it's worked pretty well for me because people book a call and they're intrigued, uh, but they really never really bring it up bring it up on the call, which is funny. So hook <laughs> hook. <laughs> Hook swipe, <laughs> Mike Tyson. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go over to the hook swipes. And um, can I call you tomorrow? Right. So imagine getting that as a follow-up message. So someone says, um, "This one's that's really good, actually. I just came up with that one before I <laughs> made this video." But uh, there's 50 of these. There's 50 intros, there's 50 hooks, and then 180 offers. And uh, so if someone said, you know. Uh, I can get you end result, blah, 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 blah. You're free to chat sometime this week. And then they don't respond after three hours. And then you just say, can I call you tomorrow? Or I'll just call you tomorrow. Right. And then like, then they feel like they have to respond. Right. Uh, well, I mean, I'm not really interested or so, you know, at least you'll, you'll get a response or they'll say, yeah, actually I'm interested. Uh, can we do, you know, 9am tomorrow or I can't do tomorrow. Actually, can we do Wednesday? And so I think those are really good. I bolded the ones that I really liked. A lot of these are really good. Um, like, <laughs> but a lot of them are funny. And so sometimes I kind of bolded the ones that are um, a little less direct, a little less um, left field, and a little less funny. And so these ones you can probably more, you can use a little more, but I would use some of the funny ones because you'll probably get better results. Um, so if you reply, I'll give you pizza rolls. If you, I'll literally send you $100 if you reply. Um, if you feel your waste, I feel, if you feel I wasted on your, oh God. <laughs> if you feel I wasted your time on the call, I'll send you $100 on Apple Pay, no questions asked. Why is talking so hard, dude? Ah. Um, do you know anyone else that's looking for end result? So if you said, hey, I can help you increase your shooting rate with your basketball, and then they don't respond and say, do you know anybody else that really that wants this or needs this? Uh, what's the best way to reach you? Can I just follow up next week or tomorrow? 
uh, you are you from this city? Can I tell you a secret? Right. <laughs> um, I got to put food on the table, and unfortunately, this uh, some way or I don't you know. I saw you read this. LOL. Uh, reply with no if you're not interested. LOL. Um, let's not make this weird. I got this one to one. Uh, take the blue pill. You don't respond, and life goes back to normal. Take the red pill, and I'll show you just how far company name goes or can go. Uh, cool. Cool. All right. Last thing, you want to create a family of offers and messages. So create multiple different frameworks, multiple different messages, because um, you're going to pick and choose and see what works best for you. And you can also split test all of them just because there's a thing called controls, right? So you want to create a whole bunch of different offers, see the one that you think is going to work best, and then start with that and start pitching that offer. And then that'll be your control. Control is this is what works for us and we know it works and it works consistently. And we're going to try variations of the control. So we're going to try we're going to try the same thing but with a different call to action or we're going to try a completely separate thing. And we're going to see how it compares to the control. So does this call to action convert better? Do we get more replies if we're doing this call to action? Does it work better if we're saying it as if we were a girl rather than a guy? Does it work better if it's coming from a girl profile rather than a guy profile? Is this work better if I say a percentage rather than a rather than um, uh, a fixed number, you know, increase your increase your bed bug heat treatments by 30% rather than 10 bed bug heat treatments. Like just changing the offer a little bit uh, at a time or just little variations of the same thing or just creating a whole different separate thing. And you have your control and you have those other ones. And if those other ones, right, if you have another one and using a percentage works better or using a girl name versus a boy name, if that works better, then that becomes a new control, right? That becomes something that also works really well. And so we start using that one as our main one and that becomes our control. And then we try to find other variations based on the main control. And so we want to create a variation, a family of these offers because you're going to get so much better results if you create a family. I was watching, um, and I said this in another video, but Jay Abraham, he does a, uh, he'll do, do these live seminars. And a lot of the, the, one of the stories he tells a lot is he had, uh, he was working with a furniture company and Jay Abraham is like the, he is the highest paid consultant on the planet, I believe. He gets paid like $100,000 per day to come to your business and tell you what's wrong with it. And so what they did was he was working with this furniture company, and they were t testing 38 different ways of how to say hello to somebody as soon as they walk in the door. And so a lot of them didn't work, but they had one that worked 80% better. So they were got 80% better close rates by the one that they found, right? So they tested 38 of them, and one of them worked 80% better, and so they just started using that one and that new one became the main thing that they said every time someone walked into the store and so this new one wasn't hey how are you or how's your day going or what brought you into the store today it was what ad brought you into the store today right so if i said hey what ad brought you into the store today they're gonna be like oh i saw the couch for 199 or i saw you know the the hot tub for 12.99 and you're like oh okay let's look over that and so you can't you, you don't just walk into a furniture store you came for a specific reason and purpose and i want to see what the purpose is increased closing rate by 80 percent so Test a family of offers. Cool. Um, yeah, let's basically say this. Just split test, find out what works, works for you. So anyways, that is literally everything that I know about creating an offer. Hopefully this helps you out a ton. One other thing is you can literally just take from this and create your offer really quickly, right? So look, we'll do this. All right. Uh, boom. I'm just going to go over here. I tried to send you this message last week. We'll go to an offer. All right. I can, I can send you a thousand new podcast listeners in the next 30 days. You free to chat sometime next week. All right, boom. There's your offer. That's, that's literally your cold outreach message. And we made that in 10 seconds. And then we have a follow-up message, right? Which is, um, let's look at a hook. Can I call you tomorrow? Boom. Can I call tomorrow? And then the third outreach message. Third time's a charm. I'm a real human. Human, lol. Let me know if you're interested or I'll just keep following up. Right? How are you not going to respond to that? You know? Um, so that's literally like we just created an offer in 10 seconds or let's say a minute, right? It took us one minute to create an offer, which is basically instantaneous. Doesn't take us a lot of time, and all we gotta do that is just we just do that five times. Right? And we have a family of offers. We're gonna pick one that we think works best for us. We're gonna go out with that, test all, all the different ones, see which one works best, make a control, and then try, keep trying, keep testing, keep testing. Because people will steal your offer. People will abuse that offer. People will 
catch on to what you're doing and then they're going to start doing it and they're going to offer the same thing. And so a big thing with this and all this is productive paranoia. So this, I, got, I don't know what book I got this from, but I believe it was um, Good to Great, something like that, Good to Great or Great by Choice, I don't know, some, I, don't know. I think a Jim Collins book. But there is a thing called productive paranoia, which is basically you want to be, you don't want to be set on, all right, we're the best company there is and no one competes with us and that's it. We're just going to, we're going to stay on top forever. There's a problem there because eventually someone's going to innovate. So eventually someone's going to do better than you. And so when someone starts doing better than you, they create a new offer that's better. And then you got stuck doing this one thing, right? And so the people that used the yellow pages and it worked consistently for them, they had an ad that worked for them. Call this number right now if you want, blah, 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 blah. Yellow pages died. And if they're stuck saying, look, this is what's working. We're going to stay here and uh, we're going to keep doing this. That didn't work for them, right? Because now they're dead or now their company is dead because all they did was yellow pages. And so if you had productive paranoia, you would have saw the internet age coming about and you would have caught onto the internet pretty early. And you would have, you probably, you get so much farther ahead if you're paranoid, right? So if you're paranoid on what's the next big thing, right? Oh, I need to constantly be changing and updating and doing something. Like I already made this video, right? I already made this video, but I, I'm making a whole new version of the video because I know I wanted to make this video a lot better. And I know you're going to get a lot better results through me making this video. And so I'm practicing productive paranoia by just trying to make my product as good as possible for your end result because somebody else is going to try to come up against me, right? I've already got people that they're stealing all my offers. They're stealing my outreach messages and uh, they're trying to be the new me, right? But I got to be productive. I got to be paranoid and try to find new ways of doing everything. I got to study different people. I got to study. So be paranoid because it's going to help you out in the long run because you're going to come up with new strategies, uh, new offers, new way of pitching things, new way of, new ways of positioning your business in a way that no one else is actually positioning it that way. And so do that. Hopefully it helps you guys out. I love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, and I'll talk to you soon. This is going to be a great video. You're going to love this one. This is a banger and uh, please stay till the end because there is so much to learn from here. So let's just get started. So we're going to cover how to find your prospects, uh, how to reach out to them, how to stand out from the competition and then basic scraping and lead tactics if you're just getting started. So here we go. First question when we're trying to do cold outreach that we want to ask ourselves is where does our audience hang out? Duh. Right. So before the internet, there was, um, <laughs> before the internet, when your parents would play with rocks, uh, and we would walk up hills both ways to school, um, they had trade magazines. This was just a magazine about your niche. So they had carpet cleaning magazines, insurance, real estate, plumbing magazines, etc. So whatever industry that you're in, there, there was a magazine for you on like the new updates on carpet cleaning and what you need to know and just all that stuff, right? And so this was the only way you could really find your audience. So marketers would run ads in these magazines to get clients. And so you had two options back then. If you were targeting B2B, you had, uh, you had cold calling. And then you had uh, these trade magazines, so you could, you know, reach your audience by putting a full page ad or an ad somewhere in the trade magazine, or you could buy the list from the person that sold the trade magazines, you buy the list of all the addresses, and you can do direct mail to them. So those were your three options in terms of um, actually getting clients. And so today it's a lot different, uh, and we have, so we need to think about what's today's trade magazines or what's today's addresses. I mean, obviously we all still have addresses, but what does our audience watch or read or listen to? i to move my big head here. I'm sorry. Um, today is Facebook groups, YouTube channels, podcasts, forums. And so we need to find the channels that our audience naturally uses so we can leverage them to direct message to them. Uh, there are Facebook groups that are around real estate agents, but there's also plenty of YouTube channels. But we can't send messages on YouTube. And so what you could do on YouTube if you wanted to is you could do, uh, you could sponsor the person that was making those YouTube videos that targets your audience, you know. So, uh, you also want to use channels that make our audience easily identify identifiable. So as an example, we want to, if I go on LinkedIn and I do a quick search here on, let's just do, uh, Jim, let's just use Jim, all right? We can do Jim and we'll do, uh, people search and we will do make my head bigger and we can do all filters. And so on LinkedIn, it's easy to identify these people because we can just do owner or founder or CEO, right? Show results. And now we have gym owners, founders, CEOs right here, 71,000 of them. 
And so that's easily identifiable. But on Instagram, if I wanted to find gym owners, right, and I just look at hashtag gym, and I do a search on here, I just look, uh, hashtag, let's just do hashtag, hashtag, oops, hashtag, gym. Boom, 236 million posts, holy cow. And it's probably just a whole bunch of mirror selfies as, as expected, right? Just a whole bunch of mirror selfies. People are like, ooh, yeah, look at me. All right, so I'm not gonna get any gym owners through this, you know? Uh, if I do hashtag gym, so it's kind of harder to find the audience on here. So it's not as easily as identifiable. But if I did real estate agents, all right. So if I did uh, re agents, I don't know what this has to do with gyms. Um, <laughs> hashtag real or e agents. Boom. We can get a ton of real estate agents and what they're trying to post, right? So hey, this is. What we're doing, what we're doing, right? This is our new home that we're selling, or like they just all, all these marketing posts, and it's great because we can easily find them. And so we have uh, this person's smart, this person's real estate company, that person's real estate. So uh, easily identifiable is a key when it comes to doing cold outreach here. And so we want to find, you know, for Facebook, there's plenty of Facebook groups around a whole bunch of different audiences. So you can find, let's say, soccer moms or people that um, there's there's a group in my like Beaver Creek moms, right? Which is just like a sub city of my city that I'm in Dayton and, or like a suburb. It's just interesting, right? So it's just a, uh, a very specific niche. So Facebook's really good for that. Um, but doing that on LinkedIn, where it's hard to find moms in Beaver Creek on LinkedIn, but, and it's also hard to do it on, uh, on Instagram. So we have to think about, uh, what's, what makes this channel easily identifiable. And then also what makes it to where I can reach out to them. Okay. So you know where your audience is and where they hang out now uh, and how to easily identify them. So now it's time to start doing outreach. And if you want to kind of learn how to do outreach, all you need to do is craft your message and then automate your messages. So you want to watch my instantly create an amazing uh, outreach message video. So in here I just said offer video, but it's instantly create an amazing outreach message video. And that is uh, on YouTube and it's the first video on the course. And then if you want to do outreach on a specific channel so you know that your audience is on Facebook or you know your audience is on LinkedIn or you know your audience is on Reddit or something, um, then you can watch my corresponding videos on how to do those. So how to do Facebook, how to do LinkedIn, how to do whatever. I don't have a Reddit video, but let's just say your audience is on Reddit. You can do Reddit outreach. And there's ways to automate Reddit outreach. And uh, you know, anyways. So when you're doing your outreach, I just want to tell you a secret on how to get, uh, how to instantly get a better reply, reply rate, better than what everybody else is getting. So it's super easy. All you gotta do is add theater to your outreach. And so by that, I mean, people really love drama. People really love just wacky ideas, right? Abnormal things. Because the only thing that you've ever talked about is no abnormal things. So you ever have a conversation with somebody where like, how did your day go? And you're like, oh, I, I ate a chicken bacon ranch sandwich. And that's not even a sandwich, is it? <laughs> a pizza, right? Chicken bacon ranch pizza. Um, I hopped on the bus, uh, I went to work, I came home, and you know, and so nothing about that is abnormal. But if I said, uh, some guy got shot on my street, I'd be like, whoa, okay, that's, that's pretty abnormal. Like, if someone asked me how my day is, I'm going to go straight to what was actually interesting about my day, which is something that was abnormal about my day, and uh, that is more compelling to me. That makes me, uh, I don't know, it entices emotion in me, right? Entices emotion. I don't even know if I'm, what I'm saying is right, but you understand, right? doing something abnormal to your outreach message. So just do something abnormal because you'll get a ton more replies if you do it differently than what everybody else is doing. And so the way you can do it abnormally um, is you can, oh, this, it'll instantly help you stand out, blah, 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 right? But um, something that Gary Halbert said is they don't remember what you said in your promotion. They remember the look of your promotion. And so if you make it look a different way, then they're going to remember it more often, right? And I have some really good, dude, I, there's, there's such, I'm going to show you guys some, dude, like, your mind is about to be blown. All right, right here, okay? Some examples, make your message look like this. You know, people have made this as, like, a joke, right? Or you see these memes. So there's, like, uppercasing, lowercasing, every other letter. Just do that with your message. Or doing it where it has the, the emojis, right? So there are emojis as the text. That's an amazing idea, dude. If you, did, if you did that on Facebook outreach or on LinkedIn outreach, no one's doing that, right? And it looks so, or this, right? making your message upside down so they have to turn their phone upside down to read what your message is. Um, and you can send a video. I've done that one before. It worked extremely well. And I would get on calls and I'm like, how did you do that, right? How did you send me a video or how did you, because I think it was customized to them. Um, 
where they say like, how much time did you spend on that? But I automated a way to send videos through Facebook. And that's a separate video I can make. I, I was going to make a video about it, but it was kind of complicated, so I didn't do it. Um, but that's something else you can do. Send a video or send a meme with their name in the meme. So like, I'll show you an example. Let's just do escape here. Oops. Boop. There we go. Boom. So you can say, um, there's a whole bunch of examples here. Uh, res or, no, sorry. You can say respond to my DM or draw 25 and then you can put their name. So, all right. And that would be amazing, right? If you, and then you could copy that image and send that to them and you do that to everyone that you send a message to, right? That would make you stand out uh, from the crowd because no one else is doing that. Or um, you can use these websites for the fonts that I did here. So like this website allows you to easily create these fonts. Uh, it is called Pill, Pilly App, P-I-L-I app.com. And so you can say, um, I, I need to tell you a secret. All right, and so you have all these different options here. And there's some other websites. So you just look up IG fonts and a whole bunch of different ones will come up. And so you can do, I need to tell you a secret and it'll copy it. Or you can do this one, or you can do this one upside down, right? So there's all these different types. I'll use this one. I use this one in one of my subject headlines. So you probably got an email from me that looks like that. And it has like a 90% open rate. And everyone's like, why does it look like this? I'm like, because it has a 90% open rate and it gets everybody interested in it because it's compelling. It's unique. Nobody else is doing it. Cool. Next up. All right. So you can reach out on different channels that are, aren't normal for that audience. So everybody reaches out on LinkedIn. Everybody reaches out on email and I still recommend using those and they they work, but they're slowly dying. And if you reached out on Facebook, right? Nobody else. Is, I mean, like I just got off the call with a guy who was like, I never really thought about Facebook. And so I was like, yeah, just do it. <laughs> um, or Instagram. Like I've never really thought about doing outreach on Instagram because no one's thinking about that. That's the thing. It's abnormal. And if you do it and you do it in an abnormal way where you're reaching out on that channel in a unique way, it's like, it's a double whammy, right? You're going to get an incredible reply rate with that. Uh, so Google calendar invites, we've been doing that. It's working super well. I get a ton of close deal through Google calendar invites. That's another strategy. I have a video on it, but it's outdated on YouTube. So if you're in the course and you paid for the course, you'll have access to the new version where you can send unlimited Google calendar invites and, uh, you can, uh, you, and it's basically unlimited leads that you can get. So I get like 10 calls a week for, through that. It takes only a little bit to set it up. Anyways, um, just using these abnormal ways of reaching out and people love it, right? People, they, it's theater, right? It's unique. It's abnormal. And they, get, they can tell their friends about it because it's just something that's interesting. All right, cool. Do it. Trust me. No one else is doing this. All right. So list building, last portion. Uh, the most important part about your cold outreach is your list. So we have like a Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and you can build your list through those. So like Instagram, you can do through a Facebook or a, you know, hashtag search, or you can scrape from an audience uh, that follows a certain person. So let's just say you're targeting everyone that follows uh, Joel Kaplan or Sam Ovens or Alex Ramosi or something like that. Then you can scrape all the followers of that person. Or let's just say there's Dean Graziosi, right? The, the real estate guy. You can scrape all the people that follow Dean Graziosi. Just different uh, ways that you can scrape on there. Or you can have a Facebook group and that would be your list. Your list would be the Facebook group. And so it's one of the most important parts and you want to have the highest quality list that you can get uh, because so your list is just data points. So it can be first name, last name, email, phone number, uh, Instagram profile, LinkedIn profile, Facebook profile, all that stuff. Or you can just get it from, let's say, a, a Reddit forum or an Instagram hashtag, you know, so just data points of your prospects. And if your list is no good, then anything else, nothing else matters. So if you have a list of, you're trying to pitch an offer to lawyers and you're reaching out to single moms that have a dog, it's not going to matter because none of those people are lawyers. I mean, maybe they could be, but most of them probably aren't lawyers. It's just a different subset or just an unqualified niche and you're pitching an offer that doesn't matter. So it's like uh, your list is the most important part of this. So we want to find a way to consistently get a quality list, um, which I, what I just said, right? <laughs> we need to find a consistent way of getting qualified list. Um, here's some common themes that I found in terms of list building. When you're targeting local businesses, like any business that relies on their phone and that's smaller, maybe a two man band or one man band, um, you want to scrape from Ninja Leads and or Lead Rocks plus LinkedIn. So Ninja Leads is something I use a lot. Uh, you can do a local business search and you do local USA business, you search like dentist, I, I want to do this, let's just say roofing company or HVAC or plumber, all right, Th those type of businesses where it's just one person or a couple people and uh, they rely on their phone to take on the calls and all that stuff. And so it's easy to find their phone numbers 
in their emails, and so or real estate agents, stuff like that. Um, those are the businesses I would use Ninja Leads for. You can also do lead rocks on LinkedIn for those businesses. Uh, the thing is, is that sometimes, like a a a real estate agent is probably going to be on LinkedIn, but not all plumbers are probably going to be on LinkedIn. They probably made a simple website, and you can find them on Google Maps, but you can't find them on LinkedIn. And so uh, that's why you can find kind of different audiences using different tools. And so if you're targeting the professional niche, like people that have gatekeepers or just bigger corporation or online brands, I would scrape through just LinkedIn and LeadRocks. Um, now, uh, that's kind of the, my go-to right now is just using LinkedIn and LeadRocks. And you can scrape basically anybody through a LinkedIn search because you can do all these different filters. You can do CEO, owner, founder of this keyword, which is like Jim, like we just did, you know. Uh, Ecom, if you're doing physical products or online stores, you want to do and or online stores. Apollo, and then enrich through LeadRocks to get the phone number. So if you want to do phone number average or like cold calling or voicemail drops for SMS, you can do um, enriching through LeadRocks, but you want to scrape through Apollo. You can also use built with. Um, that is another tool that you can do script, but I think it's more expensive and I don't think it's really worth it. Um, Apollo, I honestly don't really like Apollo other than just using it for e-com. That's like the only purpose I use it for. But yeah, and then a problem with lead rocks is if you're scraping from there, I get pretty good lead lists. If you're doing the emails, they're pretty accurate. You would still want to clean them, so you want to verify the emails. Uh, but the phone numbers are about 80% accurate or 75 80% accurate. And uh, that works really well, but the only thing is that you can only do it from a normal LinkedIn search. So by that, you can't do like a sales navigator search. And the thing about using a normal LinkedIn search is that if you don't have a lot of connections on LinkedIn, you can't really see a lot of people. And so if you don't have a lot of connections, this isn't going to work. So your other alternative is to, um, yeah, you need to have connections. Uh, sorry, yeah, you need to use sales navigator. So your other option is to use sales navigator, but you can't do that through LeadRock. So your options are to use like SalesQL or use Artemis. Those are other tools that I recommend. Um, I'd probably recommend SalesQL for scraping what's it called, Sales Navigator, rather than doing Use Artemis. Use Artemis works, it's just not that great in terms of the Sales Navigator search function. It's kind of annoying, I don't really, they, they have a lot of features, Use Artemis, but a lot of them just don't work, and so it's just, you know, it's worthless. So anyways, that is basically it. And so um, recap, find where they're hanging out, craft an amazing offer uh, using my offer video or your cold outreach video, and then make, create a unique way of reaching out to them uh, and so you can use a different channel or use different fonts, make a video, make a meme, something that's different from what everybody else is doing and you will stand out from the crowd and then make sure you got the right list. So anyways, hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you soon. Okay, so should we build rapport? I've been uh, debating this for a while. I've tried and tested a few things and um, I've gotten messages like this, right? Someone saying, you ever thought about saying hello? So, and I've gotten several messages like this, you know, I come out with a straight offer, like this is what I do. And someone says, you know, who are you? Like, why, why are you messaging me? You ever, did you even look at my website? Did you even look at my profile? Stuff like that. And, um, you know, what should you do, right? So I'm gonna explain to you what you should be doing, how you should be doing it. Uh, and obviously you can have your own opinion, but this is my opinion. And uh, this is what I found to work the best for me, okay? So I believe there are two schools of thought. There are uh, relationship building, aka building rapport, aka beating around the bush. So this is kind of what relationship building looks like. Uh, happy Friday, how's business going? Okay, that's what relationship building, or what people say you should be doing. Right? And I hear, I hear the massive gurus, like massive gurus, saying, "Hey, you need to be building rapport. Don't uh, go off with the sales pitch. You know all this stuff." But then there's direct messaging, which is, um, I can bring you 30 qualified sales appointments this month if you're interested, right? And that's what I use, stuff like that. So which one works better? Okay, and so, you know, I get responses like this, but I also get responses like this, which is, I think this is the best text I've ever seen directed at myself. Um, you know, I sent this and this guy, he wasn't even interested, but he said, uh, but your opener is blank perfect, don't change it. I can't tell you how many uh, one pages I get for this stuff. This guy's saying, nice pitch, what's your organization? Later on saying, I like the marketing advantage you put uh, that your text puts forward uh, your specific doubling down on communication. Can we chat later this week? You know, and I get results from just doing this direct uh, messaging framework. Okay, so you know, uh, I was doing a two what are they, what it's called roofing companies. I was doing I was targeting roofing companies. I was getting a ton of calls in that area. Uh, same over here. This is for like videographers. 
Uh, this guy's saying this was a perfect lead. This guy, this guy's not even a client of mine. He just said like he used a script that I had in one of my videos uh, previously or one of my posts previously, and he said that he's getting a 12% response rate when the market average is 1% or lower, right? I know people that are doing a uh, response rate of one out of every 1,000, right? They're getting a response one out of one out of every 1,000 emails that they're sending. They're getting one response, okay? Um, this guy's saying the same thing, right? The responses are flying in, all this stuff, right? This guy, we got him 15 calls in the first two days of using this method. So um, I just want you to be aware of that, of uh, results that I'm getting from this method, okay? So here's what I learned. Uh, throughout this whole process of doing like appointment setting and lead generation through outbound outreach. So um, when you're beating around the bush, it's hard to know what a good reply is. So one is I just noticed you get very a lot fewer replies when you're beating around the bush. So the response rate isn't as high. And two, um, I noticed that when someone does reply, it's hard to know what a good reply is. So if someone says, yeah, um, I had a great day. Okay, cool. That's awesome. You know, that sounds like a good reply, but they're not replying to my offer. They're just saying that they had a great day. That's what, you know, uh, or if I said, how are your kids doing? Oh, they're great. Cool. Like that doesn't mean I'm selling them anything. So it's hard to know the numbers around, um, if someone's actually interested in your offer or not, right? You can, you can tell how many people booked a call and how many people replied, but when, you know, it's each conversation is going to go a different direction because everyone had a different day. You know, everyone, uh, is responding differently. Everyone's saying they have different problems or however your framework works. Um, and so when you're beating around the bush, when you're trying to build rapport saying, how's your day? Like, what is a good reply? What is, is someone really interested in what you have to offer? Uh, and I'll get more into that in a minute. So, um, it is much easier to book a call when they respond positively to a direct offer. So there's a, I'm going to tell a story by Jay Abraham. He is the top marketing executive in the world. So he, um, goes around and consults with the biggest companies in the world uh, and does marketing for them or, you know, helps them come up with a different marketing strategy. And one thing he does is he just likes to test a whole bunch of different things. And so for one company, it was a furniture company and they were just, or like a furniture store. They're trying to test what uh, is the best way to open a conversation with people when they come into the store. And so they changed the opener instead of saying, Hey, how are you? Or how's your day going? They changed it to what ad brought you in today? So if I go out and say, hey, what ad brought you in today? And they say, oh, I saw the chair for $199, right? That recliner that has the buttons. Um, you know, okay, great. Let's go to that chair. All right, so we skip past all the bull crap. Skip past all of that. And we go straight to what we're here for. And they say, yeah, I want this. And their close rate went up by 80%. And, you know, that's a significant change from this one change, right? Just saying one thing different. Isn't that crazy? Like, you're just saying... You know, all of the people are coming, it's the same people coming to the store. The advertising didn't change. The fact that they were sending, doing, um, you know, uh, commercials, whatever, that didn't change. It was just the, what they were saying as soon as they walked into the store. Hey, what brought you in today? Um, what advertising brought you in? And uh, that increased their closing rate by 80%. So um, we have to understand advertising at a basic level in order to understand why this approach works. So all advertising. I'm going to, there's, I don't know if you can see this, but this little, uh, that's a sign. That's a form of advertising. This light is a form of advertising. That car, this lady has a hat on. That's a form of advertising. This sign right here, this tire, all of it is a form of advertising. So what it is, is stimulus. So your job is to create some sort of stimulus, right? This is, you know, something that I receive usually through your eyes, right? Or through your ears. Um, or, you know, you can smell, you know, if you go to Disney World, they literally have, machines that push out a smell so that, you know, you smell it and you're like, mm, I'm hungry. And then you want to go buy something to eat, right? That is a stimulus. Um, when I look at the sign and I know what it is and I, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, let me go there. It's a gas station or, um, this sign, or, um, uh, just looking at a hat and I say, oh, that's a nice hat, right? Under armor. Um, you know what it is. And that is a form of stimulus. So that's what all advertising is. Um, and the goal is to get someone to respond to what you have to offer. So it's not just to advertise or put yourself out there or build a brand um it's to, to get them to respond so how do we get them to respond how do we get them to want what we have to offer uh, so that we can sell them later so um building rapport isn't advertising it's selling so there's two different uh tactics right so there's advertising which comes first was like hey let me get you to respond to my offer 
and then we sell later. And when we're selling, that's when we're building rapport and we're saying, um, hey, how are you? I want to get to know you better. Also, me making this video is a form of building rapport because you know, I am brand building. I'm giving you value. You're perceiving me as some sort of an expert in this field because I'm talking about this thing. Uh, I, so I get on calls and people, you know, I have a nurture sequence when people book a call with me. And so they're going to get emails from me saying, hey, this is what we do. This is how it works. And uh, I get on calls and people say, oh, I checked out your YouTube channel. I saw that you were doing this. I saw this. I think what you're doing with your journey was really cool. And um, that's a form of building rapport. And so that is a form of selling because when you're when you have uh, testimonials or when you're getting on a call with someone, that is building rapport. Um, and it doesn't work in terms of advertising. It's not going to – building rapport isn't going to get people to sell, okay, or isn't going to get people to respond to an offer. So um, let me show you what I mean. Uh, let's look at what rapport building looks like in advertising. So if you try to use rapport building in advertising, this is what it looks like. So if you come to me and you say, hey, how's your day going? This is how it looks, okay? Hey, how's it going? All right? We have this traffic, that's what we call it in the um, marketing space, traffic. And you got a big billboard and just says, hey, how's it going? Even if you added a phone number right here, added a phone number, or there was no way to contact you. Imagine how many people are going to respond to this. No one is responding to this, okay? Um, no one cares. <laughs> you know, it's like, imagine you getting up an email, same with an email, right? If you just get an email from a random person saying, hey, how's it going? I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. Um usually if I would respond, I would say, do I know you? And if I said, do I know you or who is this or it's good, how do we get that into a selling phase, right? It's harder to get that into someone where I say, oh, I found your company. Um, how's your kids doing? And then uh, are you having your problems right now? Um, you know, and you're just trying to lead into a sale and it just it won't work. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So this is a form of direct messaging or direct advertising. And I love this because... We've all been in, if you live in America, right, you've been on a car ride and, you know, you're driving three hours and your legs are tired or like your legs are stiff and everything and your body's stiff. You want to get out. And then you see a sign like this, right? They put these all over the country and you see a sign that says chicken and dumplings, next exit, then right. And you're like, oh, there is a Cracker Barrel, the next exit. Mom, can we go out and get Cracker Barrel? And uh, if you live in America, you've experienced this, right? You've probably had this happen to you. Um, and all the other, like, do you remember any other billboard, right? Do you remember like the last billboard that you saw? Do you remember it? No. Um, you only remember the ones that have a direct message. Okay. Here's another example. Everyone can donate plasma, make $400. I seen something like this on uh, my street the other day or down the street. And I was like, Oh, Hey, that's a pretty good offer, right? Like someone saying, Hey, I can, uh, if you donate plasma, you get $400. Oh, cool. Um, I don't remember any other billboard, right? <laughs> And then this one, we buy, uh, we buy houses fast cash. So like in this example, we've all seen this sign. I'm sure you've seen it and you remember it because it is simple, straight to the point, And uh, we know what it's for, right? Imagine this saying, Hey, how are you doing? And then it just had the phone number. Nothing would happen. Um, and imagine you did it like this, right? Hey, how are you doing? Phone number. And then you were trying to buy houses, right? Let's say what your end result was trying to buy houses. And you had an advertisement like this and then someone, let's say someone, you know, you're not going to get very many responses. Like no one's going to respond to this, but let's just say you do, you're spending a ton of money on a ton of different billboards and some people are responding, right? Some people are just calling just because they said, why not? Right. It's just a weird offer. Um, and so they say, Hey, I'm doing good. And they say, okay, great. You know, you're just trying to chat. And then you say, you're trying to lead into that conversation of, are you willing to sell your house? Right. And you started off with, Hey, how's it going? <laughs> and then you're trying to get them to sell their house. Um, and then they say, oh, I'm a renter. Okay, well, I guess, I mean, okay, cool. I guess that's the end of the conversation. See ya. Um, I guess I just wanted you to understand how much it doesn't work when you're just trying to say, hey, how's it going? When you're doing it in terms of advertising. So um, our advertising needs to be quick, simple, and result-oriented. So this, we buy houses, fast cash. We know exactly what this is about. Um you know, donate plasma, make $400. We know exactly what the end result is. Uh, checkers and dumplings. If you've ever been to Cracker Barrel, you know exactly what that means. Uh, and we know that it's next exit, then right. This is result oriented. Uh, and this gets results, right? What's in it for me? So I know that this, uh, what's in it for me is I get food, I get money, I get money. Okay. 
What about long form copy? So I know there's a lot of people that um, they <laughs> swear by long form copy. They think that it's is the only thing that works, right? You know, people like David Ogilvy and um, all these other people that uh, <laughs> you know created this uh, salesmanship in print, and uh, they live by long form copy, and nothing else works, right? They say like it just works so much better. Here's the thing about long form copy: is um, we have to be mindful of people's attention spans. So when you're creating long form copy, as you know, if you've ever created a long form copy, which I did, I did Facebook advertising and I did long form copy and I was able to reduce cost per lead by um, 50%, you know, when I was working for this company doing that. Um, but we have to be specific in the title, right? So imagine the subject headline, we have to get their attention, right? So we have to be mindful of their attention spans and they will not invest their time unless they think it is worth it. So. If I had a subject line saying, hey, how are you today? No one's probably going to invest their time into that. Or, you know, sign up for this credit card and get 5% back, right? We all see those offers. No one really cares. They're not going to respond to that. But if I said, um, your husband is in the mafia, right? Your husband Jim's in the mafia. And someone's going to be like, oh, okay. And then they click on it. And then you have this long story about how you found your husband and how he um, told you that he was in the mafia, right? They're going to invest their time into that because they think it's worth it. They think it's worth learning. Or, Jim, your mother died, right? Oh, okay, I should probably see this. I need to click on this because this is important to me. It's worth my time. So um, we have to be mindful of that. And uh, so, you know, if I say I booked 200 appointments in the last 10 days, here is how I did it. You know, and if you're trying to learn how to build up or book appointments, then you're going to want to respond to that. You're going to want to read into that. Now, in terms of direct outreach, in terms of like uh, sending a DM, sending, um, you know, Facebook messages, emails, texts, I do not recommend doing a long form copy because I'll show you how it looks. It looks like this. So I got a response from someone the other day saying, did you even look at my website? I looked at the other website and this is what it said. This is their philosophy. Uh, we practice the philosophy of independence. We believe that all things are connected and blah, 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 blah. Right? Who cares? <laughs> and imagine you're driving down the highway and you see this. No one is going to read this. No one cares. Okay. And like I said, my, all the way back here. Sorry. Go all the way back here. I can't tell you how many one pages I get for this stuff. This is what it looks like, right? That billboard is what it looks like when you send uh, a long piece of copy about what you do and how you do it and all this stuff. No one cares, okay? Just remember what it looks like in terms of advertising. Uh, we're not building rapport. This is advertising. It's different. So uh, what about Jeff Bezos? Like what does the richest man on the planet do? Or, you know, Elon Musk is now I think the richest. But, um, you know, biggest company in the world, Amazon. How does he approached this. So I'm going to show you this video if I can, uh, or snap. I just, all right, here we go. This is Jeff Bezos talking about, um, an advertisement. This, uh, I'll just play one of these and you will remember it. This is a commercial that's played on the Super Bowl in the year 2000. You said you had a large selection of invitations. What we do. Then why does she have my invitation? <laughs> what may be a little thing to sell? You are mine, little man. A really big deal to you. Is that your wife? Well, that's another 15 minutes. After all, it's your special day. Allbeginning.com. Life's an event. Announce it to the world. It's very difficult to figure out what that ad is for. Um, the uh, but they they spent three and a half million dollars uh, in in the 2000 Super Bowl to air that ad, even though at the time they only had a million dollars in annual revenue. Okay, so that is Jeff Bezos' take on advertising. Um, you know, this, I have no clue what that, uh, <laughs> what that commercial is about. And yet, um, you know, they spent $3 million just to build a brand. I don't know, whatever they're trying to do with that ad. Um, and so Jeff Bezos understands this, and he's a master at direct messaging or direct advertising, making sure that people understand what it is, what the end result is, and, uh, wanting, and getting them to respond to that offer. So one of their first ways of doing this was one-click purchasing. So Jeff Bezos went to the development team and said, hey, we want to do one-click purchasing. We need this. And they said, it's not possible to do that. And he said, make it possible. And so they were able to do it. It differentiated them from the rest of the competition. And so people flocked to Amazon because of this offer. Also, they did two-day free shipping. 70% of Americans are Prime members because of this offer right? Two day free shipping. I know exactly what it's about. I know exactly what it entails. I know the end result. Um, and it, it's what's in it for me. I get, you know, my uh, shipment faster and it's free, right? Crazy offer. Okay. 
So, a final thought. No one cares um, about your philosophy, okay? No one cares. Let me just try to... Um, if I go here, no one cares, right? No one cares to start a conversation. And the reason why is because, is it worth my time? Like I said in the uh, long-form copy, right? Is it worth my time? Should I invest my time in this? And when someone comes to me and says, hey, how's it going? Especially on like a Facebook message, I know that they're probably just going to try to sell me something. And so just get to the point, dude. Like if I'm interested, I'll let you know that I'm interested. If I'm not interested, I don't care. Um, I don't want to start a conversation and tell you about all my problems and pains and all this stuff because I know what you're trying to do. I know you're just trying to sell me. So no one cares about this building rapport. No one cares about your philosophy, right? No one cares about your one pager, about what you're doing, what you're trying to do and all this stuff. No one cares. So... That's why this works, and that's why this works, and that's why this works. Um, that's why two-day shipping, you know, we have to think about what the end result is, what's in it for them, and why would they even want to respond, okay? And again, these are the results I'm getting from this method, okay? These are real people, real screenshots, right? Everything is real. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any data, right? If you have anything that is contrary to this, like this is what you found, you have data, you say, this is what's working better for me. I want to hear your opinion. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Hey everyone. So today I'm going to go over how to book sales calls through your DMs. I've been getting a lot of messages from people that are having trouble getting uh, a reply to go into a booked call. So they're sending their cold messages out someone saying, yes, I'm interested. And then what do we do going from there? How do we get that into a call? So I'm going to show you my framework that I use. It's kind of like a script, but I don't like calling them scripts. Uh, but it's a framework of just what exactly we need to say in order to just get that person onto a booked call with us. It's really simple. It's usually only like two or three steps. Um, and you can get someone onto a booked call. So I'm just going to show you exactly what it is. Um, and for me, I was able to go from two or three sales calls a week, about 10 sales calls a month, to over 200 sales calls a month for me and my clients uh, just using this method. And here is uh, just six examples of me booking a call just this week. And as you can see, most of my calls come from Facebook, as you can see, Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Um, and so I do a lot of Facebook outbound. I only had one here that was like a Facebook inbound. And so, uh, and most of them are closed. So using this method, most of them showed up, they were qualified, so this is like showed up uh, qualified, interested, and then closed. And then this one is unqualified and no show. Um, so most of them closed like 65% of my calls from Facebook close. And then most of them show up. Most of them are interested. Most of them are qualified. So uh, I'm going to show you exactly how I do this. So let's just get started. All right. This is what I like to call aced and it is always be human and act normal. So I act like I'm 21 years old because I am 21. I don't try to look uh, professional. So a lot of people, especially when you're getting started, you think marketing as you think of marketing as like trying to be brand worthy or uh, trying to look professional. And uh, that's it's just weird because no one truly acts that way, you know. So it's like no one uses. You know how people like talk in emails, like uh, let me know coming this coming Saturday if you are interested in this thing. Uh, thank you, Carson Fox. Right? No one talks like that. It's just the formality that we've created, and. Um, so when it comes to emails or anything that I do, I always just try to act as human as I possibly can. And I use, I use, to th I use it to think as if, um, as if I'm talking to a friend, okay? So how would I talk to a friend? That's exactly how I want to talk to this person. So I don't want to, um, I say LOL, I say cool. Um, you know, I spell things wrong on purpose. You know, I use you are your in that way. Just things like that. So just always be human. Um, this is not necessarily an important part of the framework. Like you might not book more calls because you're more human, but it just, it's, it helps. Okay. Um, control the conversation. So a lot of times whenever you're saying something to them, you want to ask, be asking a question to where they can just respond to it. They don't need to be carrying the conversation. You need to always be carrying the conversation. So, uh, you say, you know, this is my offer. Are you interested? They say, yes, I'm interested. Okay, great. This is how it works. And we'll go into the messages that you'll send. But then you want to ask a question, like a qualifying question. They say, you know, here's my qualification. Okay, great. What about this qualifying question? Here's my qualification. Okay, great. Are you free for a call? Something like that. You know, so you always kind of want to be in control of the conversation in that regard. So um, next is every combo is different and scripts don't work. So I call it a framework because um, now I do a lot of copy and pasting. Like sometimes I'll send the exact same message to multiple people like every single day. But um, most conversations 
they kind of pan out in a different way. So um, I, you want to keep that in mind that uh, most of these conversations are just, um, I don't know, they're going to be different. Okay, so uh, you don't want to just think of, don't think of it as, because the reason people use scripts, they're like, okay, this is going to happen, then that's going to happen, then that's going to happen. And then if someone does something outside of the script, then, oh no, like, uh, what do I do now? You know, I was uh, sticking to the script, and so you have to be a free thinker here. Uh, so, anyways, don't feed into negativity is the last one, and by that I mean some people will just uh, cuss you out, or just, you know, when you're doing outbound, you'll just get a lot of weird negativity. Uh, people that are just having a rough day, and you don't really need to feed into it. You don't need to let it affect you. Um, I just want to make that clear because sometimes I would feed into it. Not that I would like feel bad because someone you know cussed me out because obviously they're just taking blind shots. But uh, sometimes I would feed in it into it in a way where I would just I would also say a joke back or I would um, say a, a mean comment back to them. Not like the worst it would be would be like yes ma'am and it would be a dude and they would just get even more mad. Um, which <laughs> I use that as in a way of like hey it's just me being human. But um, honestly, it's just not worth your time. It's not worth their time. So there's no reason to even leave it uh, and keep it going. So if they're, if they're being negative, there's no, you know, we're just trying to be positive about here. So anyways, what do we do after the first response? So I'm not going to get much into the, the actual message that you're sending out because I have separate videos on that. And each message for each channel is kind of different. So if you want to watch those videos, they'll be somewhere. Uh, I'll try to put them in the link in the description. But um, also... I've got a course on how I do all this stuff, and I'll put it in the link in the description. So if you want to know how to book 40 sales calls a month on autopilot, link will be in the description. It's free. Um, so anyways, what do you do in the first response? After we send our initial message, right, which you should have watched those videos on how to craft your offer, and depending on the channel that you're on, someone will say, yes, I'm interested. Okay, so what do we do from here? Well, we will get usually one of three responses. Whenever someone responds to our initial message, it's usually one of these three. No, who are you, and then sure, Okay. Something along those lines. So how do we respond to each of these? So if someone says no, if they're saying no within the first message, we just usually don't engage with, engage whatsoever. Um, I'll give you some strategies a little later on uh, what to do if people are saying that they're not interested. But um, as of right now, there's just no reason to keep it going. Either, either they're saying no or you know they're saying, you know screw you, I don't want to talk to you. So um, <laughs> we don't want to respond to that in any ways. So we just need to move on. Okay, so if, if it's no, it's a no. And then who are you? So in this case, we're always usually going to say something like, uh, this is who I am, this is my company, and then this is what we do. So um, that's kind of the response when they ask who are you or who's your company or what do you do. And then if they say sure, um, you know, when they say who are you and sure, it's a, we usually say about the same message. The only difference is that when they're saying who are you, you just kind of explain who you are and then you go into this next phase. So uh, sure. So you just explain what you do and then you ask for full qualifying questions. So uh, if I say, you know, hey, I can help you get more power washing jobs. Actually, I'll show you an example. Here we go. Hey, I just want to see if you're interested in getting 10 new power washing jobs this month. They say, sure. Okay, great. I help power washing companies get consistent deals through direct mail. We target the affluent neighborhoods in your city, and we always get the high, uh, so you're always getting the highest quality of paying, paying leads. Sorry. Um, where are you located? So if I go back here. We're explaining what we do, and then we're asking the qualifying question. So you're just kind of going a little more detail about what you do. Uh, you know, in the, the initial message, it's kind of just the end result. You know, do you want 10 new leads? And then the second message is just a little more in detail of um, the method that you're using or, you know, whatever you're offering. And so then, um, you know, we're always going to be in control of the conversation. And the way that we do that is just by asking a question at the end. So, you know, where are you located? And so then the second response, what do we say then? So usually the second response is one of three things. It is either, I'm not interested, what's the price, or an answer to your question. So what do we do uh, in these occasions? We have, I'm not interested. So you either just don't reply, or you can say, all good, I just saw your blank and I thought this, or yeah, I just looked at your website and I saw this. You know, you can go into um, trying to turn that no into a yes, because they did say that they were interested at first, right? So they said, Yes, I'm interested. And then you say your spiel, and they say, no, I'm not interested. And so they were prob they're probably still interested. They just might not be. Um, the people's default is no, you know. So you can turn that no into a yes, and it feels great when you turn a no into a yes because you say, hey, I just saw your website, and I noticed there's all these problems with the website, so I wanted to see if you're interested in this because um, you're missing out on a lot of sales. I noticed you're getting this much traffic, and these are the problems with your website, you know, whatever it is. So if you're selling funnels, that could be one thing that you're doing. Or, um, you know, you can notice a problem about what their current system is and you can say 
I thought you could do this. So we can turn that no into a yes right there. But for the most part, I just don't reply. Um, so if they're not interested, they're not interested. No need to waste our time. And then the next one is what's the price? Now, whenever someone asks the price, I usually give it to them. Now, my methods don't have to be gospel for you. I have plenty of people telling me that you never want to say the price. You always want to wait until the very last minute of the sales call and then you say the price and then they just say yes or no. And then if they say no, we handle the objections, whatever. I don't really do that because what if they don't have a budget? I did you know, all this work to get them onto a call. I did an hours long worth of call. And then at the very end, I say, the price is this. And then they say, I don't have the money. Great, great. Well, I could have just told you the price in the DMs. If you could afford it or not, you would have told me and we could have gone from there. You know, it's would have made things a lot easier for me. And I have enough volume now to where I don't really care about, um, you know, getting as many people onto the phone as possible to build more rapport. You know, I don't really care about that. So what I do is I say the price, I say the end result that they're going to get with some of the benefits, uh, and then I say the guarantee. So, hey, it's going to cost 3 k to build out this website for you. Uh, what you're going to get is a high-quality website that with seven different psychological triggers that get people to actually, um, you know, book your power washing service. And, you know, with that, I guarantee that you're going to have uh, at least a 10% increase in your conversions on your website. And so that is what I would say if you, if someone asks for the price and then you say, are you free for a call this week? Okay. And that's it. Um, then the other option is they answer your question. So if they answer the question like, okay, where are you located? And they say, I'm located in the Columbus market. Well, all you gotta do is either ask more qualifying questions, uh, or if you're already done asking your qualifying questions, so let's say you had one qualifying question or, um, you had five, you know, if you had five qualifying questions, they answer that one, then you ask another one. They answer that one, you answer, ask another one. You know, and you just keep asking your qualifying questions. Once they've answered all your questions, you can give advice and then ask for the call. And we want to make this as easy, easy as possible for them. So when we ask for something, we want to make it a small ask. It was funny. I was listening to a podcast the other day about um, Adam and Eve in the garden. And uh, the serpent was making it to where he made it like made it very subtle. Like, you don't have to eat the apple. What if you just touched it? Like, is that so bad just to touch it? Um, and obviously we're not trying to manipulate people. We're not trying to make people eat the apple, <laughs> but, um, it, it, it is funny how, uh, the serpent, right? The devil is so good at these sales tactics. So we kind of just make it as small as possible for them to say yes to that thing. So usually it's like, are you free to chat this week? Um, or are you interested? Whatever. So usually my initial message is, just, are you interested? Because, um, I'm not asking for a call. I'm not asking for the sale. I'm just saying, trying to make it as small as possible. Just say, are you interested? So anyways, we give advice and then we ask for the call. So usually in this, actually, I'll show you an example. Um, I have an example up here, you know, so we were going back and forth with this guy, Sammy, really cool dude. And, uh, he was talking about, you know, he wants to target record labels and he gets like the best deals out of those. So I said, so record labels is a big one for you. I think LinkedIn SMS and email would work for that target or for targeting that audience. Uh, you'll get a lot of conversations going. Yeah. And then boom, I sent the booking link. So, that is uh, an example. And he did book for this week. Where are we at? Second responses. Boom. All right. So um, we can give some advice about, you know, what we think. So let's just say we're, do, you know, doing power washing and, you know, we're doing direct mail for power washers. And I said, okay, great. You're in the Dayton market. Uh, what you could do is you can target Kettering and Centerville. Those are the most affluent neighborhoods in your city. There's about 20,000 homes in that area. And uh, of those 20,000, we should be able to get a 10% response rate or a call rate. And out of those 10%, maybe 50 of them book uh, a power washing job with you. And, uh, you know, are you free for a call this week to chat about that? You know, that's, that's an amazing thing because uh, you have a game plan for me, right? You just told me the game plan, which is um, and obviously you made it broad enough to where I don't really know all the nitty gritty details, but I know that you have a plan for actually getting these people on the phone with me uh, in terms of the power washing gig, right? So that is uh, really powerful, all right? Now we have other scenarios that happen here and the other scenarios are someone asking for testimonials. If someone asks for te testimonials, uh, just send, send them the testimonials and the more that you send the merrier. Now, if you don't have testimonials, um, I would sort of fake it till you make it. You can say, yeah, I've got one client that does this. Now you never want to lie, right? Don't lie. But, um, uh, let's say you're using a white label to fulfill on your clients. Then you can just say, look, this, um, my partner was able to get this, that, and that, and the other. And you can just send the white labels, testimonials, you know, whatever you need to do. Um, but I, it's kind of rare that I get people asking for the testimonials 
but you know sometimes they do and when you do you just want to send as many as you can right so usually i'll send like six testimonials uh, i was listening to dan kennedy the other day and he said if you have 500 testimonials you want to put them somewhere and show all 500 testimonials you don't just want to put 20 right or the top 20 just put all 500 because it looks a lot better if you have 500. sam mubbins used to do a thing where he had 2,000 video testimonials, I think something like that, or 1,000 video testimonials. And the reason he had 1,000 video testimonials is because um, he basically told all the people that were in one group, like people that purchased his program, if you give me a video testimonial, I'll give you this other program for free. And so they all made testimonials, and then he had this huge amount of social proof of you know, 2,000 or 1,000 video testimonials. So um, use your testimonials to your advantage. And uh, you can put them somewhere. Obviously, you don't want to send someone a thousand testimonials, but you can put them on a web page, right? A sales page. Some people just want a website of like, hey, do you have a website? Like a lot of times I get that. If you're doing this, you always want to make it congruent with whatever the offer is that you sent out. So if you ever ran a pay-per-click campaign on Google, usually the rule of thumb is, or what people teach, is that you want to you know, say an offer in the ad. So let's just say the ad is 40 uh, power washing jobs per month. Okay, that is the, um, if I look at power washing leads, and that is the first thing that pops up. 40 power washing jobs per month, and I click on it, and then it says uh, how to pet a baby kitten. It's something completely different other than the offer that you just set. Then a lot of people are going to bounce off the website because they there was these incongruencies, right? So you said one thing, and then you displayed another. So if you have a website, or if someone says, do you have a website, and you send them the link, it needs to be very similar to whatever you said in the initial message. So if it was, I can get you 40 power washing jobs this month, then the website needs to say, I can get you 40 power washing jobs this month with a video explanation, you know, video of what you do and then a booking link and then maybe some testimonials of like, hey, this person was able to get 40 power washing jobs per month, right? Just um, congruency, right? So I want it to be the same as whatever I said in the initial message. We want it to be congruent in that way. So... Um, also, we don't want to send a basic homepage. We don't just want to send like, you know, if you go to any random website that has a homepage, it's just like you have all the bars at the top of like pricing and a contact us and all this stuff. You don't want to send that. You want to send the sales page. Uh, hey, this is what, you know, uh, basically like a funnel and uh, have congruency in the title, all that stuff, right? And then also, um, I like to use dynamic landing pages. So I, I don't know, you know, I haven't tested extensively whether or not just asking them what time they're available versus just sending the link what works best. As you can see here, I kind of said, are you free to chat early this week or early next week? And then I just send the link. Um, some people just don't send the link. Some people just ask in the chat. I send a link and I send a dynamic landing page and a dynamic landing page is something that looks like this. Hey, Sammy, uh, can you click here to book? And then it says Sammy book here. And then the link actually has his name in it, Sammy right there. And I'm going to click it. It's going to make me do this. I click that or not. Click that. And as you can see, the link also has his name. So now this is what I use. Now, I haven't studied this extensively. What I have heard though, is that these links give you a twice as much uh, click-through rate. So they apparently work. <laughs> they have worked a lot, pretty well for me. Again, I haven't tested it. I haven't sent just a random link versus this link, but I'm pretty sure they work a little better. Uh, because it looks a lot cooler if my name is in the, the link. So I like to use dynamic landing pages. This one is called UClick. It is $40 on AppSumo. It's a pretty good deal. Um, there's a whole bunch of other ones that you can use. They're pretty cheap, uh, but I pay for this $40 one time and I get like 6,000 credits per month. I use like 100. Uh, so anyways, that is that. It's pretty cool and uh, I would recommend using that. So um, you can use... you. I, you can test it yourself either way. You can just say, hey, are you free for a call this week? And then they give you time. The problem with it for me is that I usually am booked out a couple day, you know, the first couple days of the week are usually already booked out. So I don't want to just, if I say, are you free early this week? And they, they say, um, yeah, I'm free Monday at 10 a.m. I'm like, well, I'm already booked Monday at 10 a.m. So that doesn't work for me. Uh, so usually I just like to send, are you free with the link so that they can just click and schedule themselves. Now there is a thing called, uh, you know, we want to make it as easy as possible for them to say yes. And so, you know, the problem with sending a link is that they have to click the link and they have to do all this stuff. But honestly, I'm to a point where it doesn't matter. Like if someone doesn't book, they don't book. And I have plenty of other people that are booking. 
So, um, and for the most part, they, if I've gotten this far in the conversation, usually they're booking. I usually don't have a problem with people um, booking a call if they're, if they're willing to hold a conversation with me, right? So if they're willing to say yes to the initial message, obviously they're interested. And that's what's great about this method rather than building rapport because building rapport just means we're going back and forth trying to have a conversation and they're really not even saying yes to my offer. They're just trying to be nice to me, you know? Anyways, that's it. Um, let's book some calls. I spelled some here wrong um, because why not? <laughs> that was a mistake on my part, actually. So anyways, hopefully this helped you. I've just been getting a lot of requests of people. You know, they want to turn a positive reply into a booked call. So I'm going to go over it one more time. You send your initial message. They respond positively. You say, okay, great. This is how it works. This is what we do. Qualifying question. They answer the qualifying question. Okay, great. Here's some advice. Are you free for a call? And that's it. It's really that simple. Really, it takes only three messages from you to get to a booked call. Sometimes it takes even less. Some people will just say, yes, I'm interested. Okay, great. Here's your link. And that's it. So uh, thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in the free course, it is in the link in the description below. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, what's up everybody? Today, I just wanted to go over how to actually start an agency. So if you're starting from ground zero, you have no, do, no idea what to do from here. I'm going to show you exactly what I would do if I was just starting out. So if I was starting out, and again, this video is for anyone that is literally just starting out. You have no clients, you have no clue what to do. You're just trying to think about what's the first thing to do. So here's what I do. If I was starting from ground zero, had nothing and had my knowledge and I just had to restart from nothing again. Why am I saying the same thing? All right. Uh, so I would start a B2B agency. So a B2B agency is a little different from a regular marketing agency. A B2B agency is basically you help B2B companies. So that's businesses that target other businesses. Now I want you to understand this because you as a marketing agency are a B2B company. You are a business, a marketing agency trying to reach out to other businesses, right? And you're trying to help uh, restaurants or lawyers or whatever it is. A, uh, let's say a staffing firm or staffing agency. They are a B2B business. They are a business and they help other businesses with a certain service. Cleaning companies, commercial cleaning companies. They are B2B. They help businesses clean their, apart their buildings, whatever or their office spaces. Um, lawyers can also be B2B. They can be B2C, so they help consumers, right? They just help people that got in an accident, you know, whatever, personal injury uh, attorneys, sorry. And then, dude, I'm always drinking the Croy and I'm always burping, so I'm sorry. Anyways, um, but lawyers also do B2B, so bankruptcy attorneys are B2B, mostly for people that are, you know, businesses that are going bankrupt, and then also companies uh, that, you know, just, companies that sue other companies, whatever, um, or just a commercial, I don't even know what they're called, just lawyers that help companies, right? And then we also have, let's say, even restaurants can be B2B. So a restaurant is mainly B2C, where they're just helping, uh, you know, they're serving food to normal people, that's B2C. And then we have B2B, where they can do catering. So they can, you know, if you've ever worked somewhere, I'm sure like when I used to work at Best Buy, we would have to work on Thanksgiving and then on Thanksgiving, we would like uh, cater through Bob Evans. And so we would just get like mashed potatoes and all this stuff. And so that's also B2B. So Bob Evans caters to businesses and that's a, a restaurant as a business serving to another business. So a lot of businesses can be B2B. And what we want to do is we want, basically just want to help those B2B companies uh, get more leads and sales. The reason this, this is easier is because what you're going to learn throughout this program is how do we get sales and clients for ourselves? How do I get someone to get on the phone with me? That's the art that I've mastered. How do I get someone on the phone with me? How do I get them to respond directly to my message? How do I get in front of them? Now, this only really works for B2B because it's really easy to find a, a restaurant's phone number, a, a, a restaurant's email, or a cleaning company's phone number or email, or a staffing agency's phone number and email. Because all I got to do is look online. I, you can look up in Google, you know, staffing agency. It'll show you all the staffing agencies within your local area and their emails and their phone numbers. There's also plenty of tools that allow you to grab that information and that data. So, you know, you can scrape from LinkedIn. Everybody on LinkedIn puts CEO, owner, founder of this specific company. And so it's really easy to just search CEO, owner, founder of restaurants. And then you get a ton of restaurants on LinkedIn. And so they're easily identifiable and you can easily scrape their phone numbers and emails and reach out directly to them and pitch them a specific offer. Now, the reason you can't do this for B2C is because there is no search for B2C. So let's just say I help dog training companies and I want to help them get more dogs. There is no search function on Google for people that have dogs. Like, show me all the people in Dayton, Ohio that have dogs. There's no search function for that. There's no way that I can go on LinkedIn and look up, show me people with dogs, right? The only way to really do B2C offers with direct outreach, which is what we do. You know, we send out messages to people on autopilot and to get sales calls for ourselves. 
Uh, the only way that you can do that is by finding them using just other social media platforms. So like on Facebook, there's probably a group of, uh, you know, dog owners, dog owner Facebook group, right? There's probably plenty of Facebook groups on that and you can do Facebook outreach, but you can't do email. You can't do LinkedIn. You can't do uh, Twitter, right? There's no way to target people on Twitter using that. And so uh, the only other way is maybe Instagram. You can do hashtag dog and anyone that's doing hashtag dog probably has a dog. And so you can target people that way, but that's like really the only two strategies that you can use when you're doing B2C. Or if I'm targeting, let's say moms in my local area, like uh, I want to do a, a mom, we have a, a play place, whatever, a, a daycare, and I want to get more clients in this daycare. The only way you can do that is moms of Dayton, Ohio, right? There's Facebook groups around that, but that's like the only options that you have. And it's not very scalable when you're doing that. So let's do B2B, right? Let's, it's easier to find a company and find their contact information and they're always willing to pay more because they're a business and they make more money. They're willing to spend money, all that jazz, right? So it's much easier to sell to a business than a, a normal person. So anyways, let's go through. All right. So that's what I would do is start a B2B agency. And how do we do that? How do we start a B2B agency? So first thing is you need to target a specific niche. So, uh, all we need to do is figure out who we're going to target. And then what do that, that, what does that audience want? Now, when we're doing a B2B agency, all we're really doing is just helping them get more leads. That's usually just what they want. Or uh, you can also do, you can start your own staffing agency where you just help someone with staffing. That's usually the two problems that people have. It's either uh, as a business, I either have no clients. I need to get more clients to make more money or I have too many clients and I need um, help fulfilling on the clients that I have. So I need to hire employees. And then sometimes it's like, all right, well, I have clients, but I want more clients. All right. And I have the employees. I just want more clients now. And so then you get more clients and they're like, all right, now I have too many clients. I need more employees. And so it just goes up and up and up and up. And up. So that's something that, uh, that you can kind of help on the, both ends of the spectrum. But the easier way is kind of just to getting leads. And so uh, helping B2B companies get leads. And the way that you do that is direct outreach. So you basically just do emails and LinkedIn messages and Facebook messages on the company's behalf. So let's say that you're helping cleaning companies or you're, let's say we're helping staffing companies and I reach out to a staffing company and I say, Hey, staffing company, I can get you more leads and sales calls. They say, yes, I'm interested. Great. Let's sign the contract, whatever. And then from there, all you got to do is let's say that cleaning company, or I'm sorry, that a staffing company, they help HVAC companies with staffing. So they help HVAC companies hire more HVAC technicians. So now all we have to do is reach out to HVAC companies and say, Hey, I've got an HVAC technician in your local area. I wanted to see if you wanted to hire them. They say, yeah, that'd be great. Cool. You send it over to the staffing company. They put out a job post for, you know, HVAC technicians, get a whole bunch of applications, send it over to the, HV the HVAC company, and then they close the deal. So you're the middleman. You have the staffing agency as your client. You start reaching out to all the uh, HVAC companies throughout the country. And they, they say, yes, they're interested. And anyone that says, yes, they're interested, you just hand over to the staffing agency and they pay you per lead or per appointment, or they pay you a monthly retainer for that. So that's how it works. Now, what's great is that you're already learning the systems on how to do all that stuff. You're already learning the systems on how do we get appointments for ourselves. So the better you get at getting clients for yourself, the better you get at getting clients for them. So it's kind of what I do. Like it's, it's, it, it, it's so amazing because it's like this own self-fulfilling prophecy type thing. So the better I get, the better I get, uh, where I get really good at getting appointments for myself and the more, the better I get at getting appointments for myself, the better you get at getting appointments for yourself because I'm teaching you how to do it. So the more appointments I get, the more appointments you get, which is, you can say the same thing for them. The more appointments that they get, the more appointments or the more appointments that you get, the more appointments that they get. I know it's kind of this meta thing. Sorry. All right. So you're going to get good at that using this program. And so you're going to get, you know, sales calls in the door for yourself. And then when you're on the sales call, you're basically just saying, Hey, I'm going to do the same system for you. So who do we target for this? Uh, there, I have a niche list on this right here. So here is a niche list. Now all the ones that are, and I'll try to put this in the description. I have if I didn't put this in the description, I'll try to remember. Uh, but if I didn't, there is a, I have a YouTube video on my niche list, whatever. And you can just, the link is in there as well. Anyways, you, all the ones that are in bold here can be, uh, B2B. So all these bold ones are B2B. And then all the ones that I have kind of starred, which are just mostly these ones at the bottom are, uh, I think are the prime ones. So the, the ones that are like, anybody can just get into that and get a client really quickly. I have a guy that uh, just joined a program like a week ago within the first four days. I have three people looking at this sheet right now. I don't even know that. All right. Within the first four days, got a first client targeting uh, employment agencies and staffing firms. And there's plenty of those. And uh, he's 15 years old, had no clue how to do anything. Didn't know what a BB agency was. Probably didn't even know what a staffing agency was seven days ago, right? And within the first four, four days of me telling him, Hey, this is what I would do if I were you, blah, blah, blah. I gave him basically the spiel that I'm giving you right now. 
and he was able to close the deal within uh, four days. So great. So I would do uh, employment. If, if it were me starting out, this is what I would do. I'd do uh, staffing agencies. I probably would start with that. Uh, PR firms, maybe. I would probably start with something like that. B2B software, maybe, depending on the software because some, some softwares are really cheap. And so you, you have to think about uh, how much are they making off of this deal. So employment agencies make a ton. They make, like, okay, how an employment agency works, they make like 10 to 30% of whatever uh, the contract was signed. Okay, I'm trying to frame this. So if I'm helping you, if I'm an employment agency, I'm helping you hire someone for $50,000 per year. Like you're going to pay that person $50,000 per year. You pay me 10% of that person's annual salary, uh, 10 to 30% that is. So you would pay me five to $15,000 for helping you hire that one person. Let's say you're hiring a software developer. That's $100,000 per year. You pay me 10 to $30,000 for helping you hire that one person. And so if I bring you 40 leads and you close one, let's say one to two deals, right? You made five to you know $30,000 off of the two deals you closed from me. And then you paid me only two grand, right? So you, you made like 10 grand and I, you paid me two grand. It's, it's well worth it for them. Now for a B2B software company, they might charge a hundred dollars per month for their uh, software. Sometimes they charge a little more. Most B2B softwares are more like uh, a couple hundred dollars per month, but still not, you know, anything crazy. And so in order for me to make it worth it for me, if I get 10 members at $300 per member, that's $3,000. And then if you paid me $3,000 and you got, uh, you know, 10 members, then it, you just broke even. And so for, for you, it's not really worth it, you know? So we have to think about, uh, how's it worth it for them? Insurance brokers. That's a really good one. I think, uh, I, I just know some people that are in the insurance space and they would love uh, more leads and they have no one that's really good at it. And, and so if you actually get good at it, and then also some of these people, they make a lot of money, uh, per deal that they get. And so like I've heard people say that, you know, I spent $10,000 over the last year with this guy. He didn't bring me any leads, but they just kept spending money with him because if they would have just got one, they would have made $50,000 off of that one. And it would have been like, it would have been worth the $10,000 that they spent over the year. And so it's like people are more lenient on a B2B a little bit. So, cause the, the value is much higher than B2B, which is great. Uh, and then you can charge more photographers, videographers. I think that's a good one. And then accounting, I just kind of marked this one as we were on this you know, video, but accounting, I think is also a pretty good one. Now they don't make a lot of money either. So I don't know. Uh, they might make a, maybe depending on who they are, but they might make a thousand dollars per person that they bring in. Sometimes they do even less. So it's like $500 per company that they're helping, whatever. But anyways, what I would start with is employment, probably PR, uh, B2B software, uh, insurance, and then also marketing agencies. Those, that would be where I would start. So that's who I would target now. How do we price this? So I think that's a question that a lot of people have. And the, what we want to do really is we want to remove risk as much as possible for that person. We want to make it sound like this is so irresistible. And you want to do this on their behalf as well. You want to make, so like when you start getting good at outreach and start realizing this, and I put this in some of my videos, but how do we remove risk? How do we make this easy for them to say yes to? So an easy way to do that is just say, Hey, you only pay per appointment or you only pay per closed deal. So if I, if you, if I was offering you, Hey, I'll help you start an agency and I will do everything for you. I'll literally just get you clients. You only pay me 20% of the clients that you get. I'll do everything right. That, that, that's a no brainer, right? Because you're like, all right, uh, all I have to do is pay him 20% and I make thousands of dollars and I didn't have to do any work. All I just have, oh, I have to fulfill on the clients, right? And that's the only work I have to do. That, that's a super easy to say yes to. So how do we make it to where it sounds so good that they just can't not say yes. So if I said, Hey, I'll give you, I can bring you 40 appointments that with companies that need your staffing help this month, you only have to pay me per closed deal, or you only have to pay me per appointment, or you only have to pay me per lead. That sounds a lot better than, hey, pay me this monthly retainer and pay me $10,000 up front. Uh, now, what happens a lot, what I usually do a lot of times is I'll say, it's not like a bait and switch, but it's more like, this is the, the best value that I can bring, right? So I'll say, hey, look, I'll give you, I can bring you 30 com companies that need your marketing help this month, or your staffing agency help this month, or whatever you know, that service that they're offering. So I'm reaching out to a staffing agency. Hey, I'll help you get 30 companies that really need your staffing help. Can you take on those? And they say yes. And I say, look, we don't do charge a retainer. We don't charge per appointment. And uh, we don't have any VAs. Uh, you don't have to pay for a VA. And there is um, no paid ads involved. You don't pay anything for ads. All right. So I just say that what we don't do. And that makes it super easy for them to say it. So like, oh, you don't do paid ads. You don't do all that other stuff. That, wow. I mean, all the other people, they do all those other things. And all those things are risks, right? So paid ads, right? That, that's money down the drain if it doesn't work. Uh, paying a retainer, that's money down the drain. If uh, I didn't like the service, whatever. So I'm removing these risks and just by saying it. So that's what I'll usually say. A lot of people, what they'll do, and this works really well as well, 
It's just saying, hey, you only pay per appointment or you only pay per lead that I bring you. That sounds great. Awesome. Now, what, I, what I'll say on the sales call is you have, you have to pay me an um, upfront cost uh, to set up everything for you. And then it's $300 per appointment or it's $100 per appointment, whatever it is. Now, uh, the cost is really dependent on them and what it's worth to them. So for a staffing agency, it might be worth a lot more for an appointment. Like I've got a guy that I talked to the other day. And he was charging $1,000 per lead, not per sales call, not per close, per lead. And because the value of the deal was much higher to where it would be like a $100,000 deal, he was charging $1,000 per deal and he had to pay for 10 up front. So he had to pay me $10,000 up front in order for me to do it for you. But he had a really good system. He knew what he was doing. He was in the industry for a while. And I think he was doing some sort of software development, like helping people get software development gigs and jobs. And uh, so, you know, hey, it's $1,000 per lead. And that's literally just someone saying, yes, I'm interested it's a thousand dollars for that, right? Not even per appointment, not per close, just per lead. So, the, but the value for the companies are very high, right? So the the company knows that, like, if I just get if I get four of these, I'm going to close one of these, and I'm going to make a hundred thousand dollars off of that one. And so, if I pay four thousand dollars for a hundred thousand dollars, is it worth it? Of course, it's worth it. So the the value has to be high for them. And so if it's a B two B software company and it's three hundred dollars per uh, closed deal and you're, you're charging $300 per appointment. That doesn't make any sense because they have to do four appointments to maybe close one of them. And then, so they paid three, six, nine, 12 for uh, $300. They pay $1,200 for $300. makes no sense. Uh, but if it's a, if it's a staffing agency, they paid $1,200 for four appointments. They closed one and they made five to $10,000. That's a little more worth it to them. So uh, the price really depends on them. Usually what you want to do is make it at least three times worth three times more than what they're paying for it within the first month. So my program is usually two grand or like right now it's two grand. So if you're watching this and you paid more than that, I'm sorry. Uh, but right now it's two grand. It's going to keep going up, but the value has to be higher than two grand for you. And so I say, Hey, look, you're going to get access to everything to, for a year. We're going to do all this stuff for you. Uh, and so you're saving time, you're saving money just from joining the program. And then on top of that, uh, usually you're getting two to six clients within the first two to 10 clients within the first month of using my systems. And so if you get 10 clients, you're charging $2,000 per client and you made $20,000 if you got 10, right? Or let's say average five, All right? So you made $10,000 the first month. So you paid me two, you made 10 within the first month. All right. Th that's worth it to you. It's, uh, I think that's like five times worth. It's worth five times more than what you paid for. Um, and so we want to make it at least three times more than what they paid for it. So within the first month, I want to make sure that you're at least making six grand from my systems and programs. Uh, and if not within the first month, within the first couple months. And what's cool about my thing is that you don't have like a monthly recurring thing. And so once you pay, you get access to everything for a year and all that jazz. So that's kind of how I position it. And I want to make it worth more to you than what you're paying for. And so it has to be usually worth three times more than what they're paying. So if you're buying a burger for $10 to you, it has to be worth $30. Now it's like, oh, I want to pay $30 for the burger. Well, you want to pay $30 for the burger because it's only worth $30 to you. And so you're only going to pay a third of that. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Uh, so like the value has to be higher, right? Cool. Anyways, um, so if it's for a company that can, af can't afford as much, they only charge $300 per client that they get, then the value has to be a third of whatever it's worth to them. So usually what I'll do is, this is what I did starting out, I would just charge $900 up front uh, as an upfront free or $900 per month. $900, I don't know why, I just think $900 was pretty round. It wasn't $1,000 and it wasn't $500 and it's like close to $1,000. Um, and so to them, I think it was just really easy for people to say yes to $900 and I would usually do, Hey, we'll help you set up everything for $900 and then let them just, I'll set it up and let it run or, uh, $900 plus a hundred dollars per appointment. That's what I would do. Uh, and then they don't have to pay anything per month or something else I would do would be like, I would do a $500 per month plus $50 per appointment. I wouldn't do that anymore. I think the value per appointment was much higher because the clients that I got with that, like they would only pay me like, let's say $900 for the whole month. So it was like $500 plus the per appointment that I would get them and I would get them all these appointments. So they pay me maybe $900 to $1,200 for the whole month. And I would make them like $14,000. And I was like, bro, this isn't, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm getting a short, end, which to them it was very worth it, right? They wanted to keep going. Um, so I would charge a little more per appointment or maybe just charge per lead. So per lead is basically per person that says, yes, I'm interested. So pricing really depends on the industry. I would start around the $900, like $500 to $1,500 range. So I just kind of make it a little even around five or $900. And then I do a per appointment because people really like the per appointment thing because it's like, all right, well, I only pay if I get results, which removes risk for them. Yeah, all that jazz. Then also what I do is I like to say on those things like, hey, like, well, what's a, 
what, what is considered an appointment? What is considered a lead? I tell them what's considered a lead, and I guess we can go into closing. So what I consider a lead is what you consider a lead. So I'll say, I'm going to, let's say you're booking appointments for them. All right, I'm going to get you 40 appointments this month. And we'll have a tracking sheet, and I have a tracking sheet somewhere in the course, and you can find access to it. And the tracking sheet, basically, they can track, were they interested, were they qualified, did they close, were they unqualified, or did they not show up? And so you can, you can like click little dots or click little check marks if they're interested, qualified, whatever. And if they were uninterested, if they were not qualified, if they didn't show up to the call, then you don't pay for it. And you can say, you get to determine whether they were qualified. You, you tell me if they were qualified. You, that's up to you to decide. So I'm letting you have the freedom and the liberty to do that. And then also, uh, and so for you, you might think, well, you know, what if I get them all these appointments and then they say all of them are unqualified, all of them are bad. Then you just fire them as a client, right? If, which I, you, you won't really experience that too much. But if, if I bring someone 40 appointments and they say oh, one was good and I close that one, then I know you're just, you're fibbing, right? Fib. Uh, you're lying to me. So I'm just going to fire you as a client, right? We're not going to do any more work together. So um, they pay you the upfront cost and then they pay you a per appointment thing. And I say, look, I'm going to bill you monthly or I'm going to bill you weekly, whatever you want to do. And once they pay the upfront cost, if you're using Stripe, then what's cool about Stripe is that you can just bill the person whenever you want to. So uh, if, I, if I have your card on Stripe, I can literally just charge you $1,000 whenever I want. <laughs> it's kind of a weird power to have. But uh, So now you have their card information, and you basically just say, look, we're going to charge you per week. I'm going to set the appointments per week. You need to track if someone showed up, if someone's interested, if someone's qualified. If you do not track it, I'm going to charge you accordingly. So if I set you 10 appointments and you don't track any of them, if you don't say that any of them showed up or anyone – like you're not tracking all that stuff, then I'm just going to assume that all 10 appointments showed up, all 10 appointments were qualified, and I'm going to charge you for those 10 appointments. Now, if you track it and you say, let's say five were qualified and five showed up and the other you know, five didn't show up, I think, great, then now I'm only going to charge you for those five appointments. Uh, but you have to track accordingly. Because uh, if you don't, I'm just going to charge you either way. Because you know, I did the work on my end. So uh, that's kind of how I would say it on the call. And then also, a lot of people hesitate with... Um, all right, well, how do I close the deal? And Okay, I'm, I'm very bad at closing, all right? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not very bad, but I'm, like, I'm not the best. And I'm usually hesitant. I'm usually not making people pay right now. Like, hey, you need to sign the contract. I'll just say, hey, just pay me whenever you want. And blah, blah, you know, go ahead and have, have fun. Um, or they always need to talk to a partner and all that jazz. So I don't care. I'll just, I make the offer good enough where they, they just have to say yes. And the way they make the offer good enough is just removing risk, like I said, and then also having a money-back guarantee. So what I'll say is like, hey, look, we have this upfront fee, $900, but if it doesn't work for you within 30 days, if you're not satisfied for any reason within the first 30 days, I'll give you all your money back and you, we don't have to, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Uh, and then on top of that, and then you can say, look, I have an agreement and you can, we can both sign the agreement so that we are both on the same page because people love contracts. They're like, well, you have a contract for that? And I'm like, all right, yeah. You, you just make a contract and I can give you a template if you want, but super simple, just... Uh, make it sound cool, like the client agrees to blah, 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 right? So, and I'm sure you, if you're in the program, you probably signed an agreement from me. And I th it's just really there just so that you feel safe, right? And then so that also that we're both safe. So you hold your end of the obligation because it says, hey, you need to do these things and then I need to do these things. So if you if you do those things and you don't get the results that I promised, then I'll give you back your money. And so we both kind of feel safe with the agreement in place. So that's something like when you're kind of closing and they're hesitant on, you know, uh, the money back guarantee you just say hey look we have this agreement applicable by law or whatever that means and uh you know we can both sign it then the other thing is they're like well do you have any testimonials let's say you, you don't have any testimonials starting out all you gotta say this is a genius move all you gotta do is say hey you know how we're on this call right now and i'm talking to you right now and i'm selling you my services right now i literally just do the same exact thing for you and so you just look you know how i texted you or i emailed you or i sent you a linkedin message and you said yes and now we're on this call well, I have a framework and a system and exactly what I do to get people on the call. You follow that exact system and framework. So you were dumb enough to get on the call with me and now we're here. You don't want to say that, but <laughs> you basically just say, look, it worked on you. I just, I'm just going to do that same thing for other people. Right. And they're like, oh, I guess that, that makes sense. Right. It did work on me. <laughs> like I am here on the call right now. <laughs> and so it's, they're kind of like, oh, well, that, you know, to, to them, it makes sense because right? they're on the call right now. You're like, all right, well, I'm just going to – you know how good my outreach was. You know how you responded to my message and you liked my message and you uh, wanted to hop on a call with me. Now we're here. I just do that thing for you. And then at that point, you don't need any testimonials right? because it's super easy. Then also, you can just use my testimonials or anyone else that does B2B and you say, hey, we use the same systems as 
we, like this is the results that we get using these systems. And so you can just say, uh, you know, we, we had this guy that got this result or even people that are in the group, right? People that are in, like, hey, this guy closed this deal and this guy closed that deal. You can use those as testimonials for yourself because you're going to be using the same systems. And so I even say this, if you have a regular marketing agency and you're doing just normal, let's say, paid ads for somebody and you, you get a media buyer, right? So let's just say you get a media buyer that does, you know, all your paid ads for you. You just ask the media buyer for any testimonials or... If you're doing the, the, the media buying yourself, you're doing the ads yourself, you just look at, go on YouTube, look for someone that's doing, you know, case studies on whatever industry that you're targeting, let's say pest control, and someone has a video on the case studies of uh, the pest control ads that they're running on Facebook. You just take those, take those results and say, hey, look, these are the results that we're getting using these strategies, or these are the results you can get using these strategies. So you're not lying to them saying, hey, look, we'll help, we'll guarantee, we, obviously you can guarantee you a certain amount, and if you don't, you get the money back. Um... But also on top of that, we can just say, look, these are the results that we're getting using these strategies because obviously that somebody else is using the exact same strategy. It's working for them. And that's like a test. Now it won't come to that extent. You probably don't have to get to that point. Um, but you can just say, Hey, look, this is what we get because uh, we're on this phone call right now. And you know, you're talking to me, blah, blah, blah. Cool. All right. Now, how do we start outreach? So when you're starting outreach, it's pretty easy. All you got to do is say, Hey, I just want to see if I can bring you 40 appointments with companies that need your help. Uh, now there's a couple different, each channel, and I kind of talked about this in the videos, but each channel has their own secret sauce. Like there's a certain way that you message on Instagram versus, um, SMS or versus email. Like we all have certain formalities that we kind of associate to each individual channel. It's a little weird, but you know, email, we say, Hey, first name, I just want to see blah, blah, blah. You know, have those line breaks and everything with Facebook and Instagram. We don't do that as much. We just say uh, an intro that's a little more unique make it a little funny in the beginning and then have a good call to action at the end, make it open-ended for Instagram, stuff like that. So for Facebook, I say something like, Hey, I've got a one click appointment system. If you're interested, or I can bring you 120 appointments this month. You literally don't have to pay me per uh, pay me an upfront fee or I'm sorry. You don't, you only pay per appointment or what I would do also. It's like something that I would say is, and I don't know if you'll be able to do this, but like, you know, like I said before, you want to put your best foot forward. You want to make it sound really good and bring kind of back to reality. So I would say, look, I'll give you 120 appointments this month. If it doesn't work, I'll literally pay you $5,000. They're like, okay, how, how does that even work, right? That just gets them so intrigued. Like, how, how? So if it doesn't work, I'll literally pay you $5,000. Well, how does that work? All right. Well, I'm gonna, so I do setups now. And that's another thing that you can also do. And I know I'm rambling on. But setups are basically, I'll set up everything for you, give you access to everything, and then you run it. Because what I noticed is when I did a B2B agency is that it becomes kind of a difficult task to manage all the clients and you'll evolve over time. There's like the evolution of a consultant where you first you do done for you, then you do done with you, then you do uh, one-on-one coaching and then you do group coaching and then you do uh, a course. All right. So I'm more to the point where I'm already doing the course, right? I have to do group coaching in the course kind of right now. So that's where I'm at. And, uh, but you'll start here where it's done for you because it's so much easier to sell done for you where you just say, Hey, look, I'll do everything for you. They're like, yeah, of course I'll do it. Uh, so I don't even know where I was uh, with that. All right. So when we're sending Facebook messages, I would say, look, I'll give you $5,000 if it doesn't work. Uh, I would do setups and basically I'm giving you $5,000 worth of value. So I'm giving you all these softwares for free. I'm giving you the course for free. I'm giving you one-on-one time with me for free or I, you know, you have to pay for it up front, right? So you pay me, you know, $3,000 for me to set it up for you. And then from there, if it doesn't work within 30 days, I'll give you all your money back and you still get to keep the softwares and the course and everything else for free. So in their mind, they're thinking, all right, uh, you know, I get $5,000 if it doesn't work. But when I hop on the call, I say, look, this is how it works. Uh, if nothing works, you get to keep all these softwares, which the softwares are worth $10,000 in and of themselves. And I basically just kind of created my own special deals. Like I've kind of hacked a few softwares. I created my own in a few different ways. And the value is, you know, so much for me or for them. And so it's like, all right, the value of the softwares are $10,000. And so you get to keep those $10,000 worth of softwares for free if it doesn't work for you within 30 days. And so that's kind of how I would frame it. Or, or I would just do a double your money back guarantee. I was like, look, I'll pay you, you know, if they're paying me 2,500, I'll pay you $5,000 if it doesn't work. Now, the way that we do that, if you're doing a double your money back guarantee, honestly, that I, in the Gary Halbert tapes that are in the course, he talks about that as well, where he did a double your money back guarantee. And he actually got less returns with a double your money back guarantee because you have to add a some sort of stipulation. So in order to receive the double your money back guarantee, you have to prove that you did this. Right. And so in our agreement now, it's like, Hey, you have to prove that you sent 200 messages per day, uh, using our systems and strategies. And, and so you basically say to them, Hey, if you, if you don't get any leads within the first 30 days, we'll give you W money back. 
And then a lead, you can just consider a lead as someone saying, yes, I'm interested, to an original offer that you, so you sent out an offer, someone said, yes, someone should, you got one lead, someone saying yes, and therefore the contract is void, right? We fulfilled, or we fulfilled our duties, and so the guarantee is now out of place. So you can't get double your money back. Now, if the thing about money back guarantees, if somebody wants their money back, don't hesitate to give it to them. I never hesitate. Like if, even if you didn't uh, uh, fulfill the agreement where, you know, you're asking for your money back, but, um, you know, they, they already got a lead and they're asking for double your money back because you promised this. Well, all right, well, I'm not going to give you double your money back because it what you did get a lead in the thing, but I will give you your money back because we don't want to put any like bad blood out there. We don't want to make anybody uh, feel like we cheated them in any way. I don't want to make anybody feel like I cheated them in any way. Like right? if you feel like the value wasn't there, there's no reason you should pay me. There's no reason that I should have your money, you know? So, I. Uh, Anyone that wants a refund, I just give a refund too. So, um, anyways, hopefully that made sense. And so, when you're starting outreach, we just do, hey, we want to make minimize risk as much as possible, make it sound really good to them. On email and on SMS, we kind of just say as if we already have the end result. So we say, hey, I just I've got 30 companies that need your help if you're interested. And then on Facebook and on Instagram, we kind of just go out as if you know you can get appointments. So I can bring you 120 appointments this month. You only pay me per appointment, or you don't have to pay me unless you close the deal. Uh, stuff like that. So that's kind of how you do the outreach. Just start sending messages. And it's really easy. Just start sending messages in like certain Facebook groups and um, on Instagram and on WhatsApp and on SMS. And it's really easy. Just get a, it. You can get sales calls like the guy that joined the program, Alexi, and he got, he's 15 years old, close the deal within four days uh, using those strategies. Just saying, hey, I just want to see if I can help your staffing agency get um, more appointments, whatever, and close the deal and all that jazz. So, all right. I think that's it. Uh, hopefully that helped you guys out. If you're starting an HC, that's kind of, I just kind of rambled on, spit out what I think, what I would do, uh, everything that I kind of know if I was restarting my HC. So thank you for watching. I love you. I'll talk to you guys soon. If you have any questions for me based on this video, you can just chat with me on Discord and I'll talk to you guys soon. Here are the best lead list tools of 2023. I've got three softwares that I use consistently. Each one of them has their own separate purpose. Now the theme of this video is value. So what, what tools give you the best bang for your buck? And we will start with Ninja Leads. It's a tool comparable to D7 Lead Finder, but it has a lot better data. I use it mostly for local business data. That's what it's best for. So if you're targeting, let's say plumbers, electricians, HVAC companies, then this would work great for you. Now, I mostly use it for cell phone data, so it gives you the mobile numbers of these people that own these companies. It does give you emails, but not as many. It also allows you to bulk scrape multiple cities at the same time, so if you wanna do med spas across 500 cities throughout the United States, you can do that. It starts at $97 a month for 30 lists a day. Each list can have up to 200 contacts, so if you use 30 lists a day and have 200 contacts per list, after 30 days you'd have 180,000 contacts, which is insane. The second tool I use is called Use Artemis. It's mainly for LinkedIn scraping. I use LinkedIn scraping a lot for finding people that are already on LinkedIn, which is mostly everybody. There are some industries that Ninja Leads is better for, so like plumbing, you gotta think about plumbing. People that do plumbing probably aren't on LinkedIn as much, and so Ninja Leads is better for that. But anyone that's on LinkedIn, Use Artemis is really good for it. Use Artemis is anywhere from $29 a month to $99 a month. I personally have the $99 a month plan. It gives you 15,000 credits per day, which is better than any other tool I've seen on the market. Now, there are a lot of flaws to this tool. It doesn't give you a ton of data per search that you do. Chrome extension is kind of limited, and there are some pointless features that I don't know why they exist on the platform. But it does give you 15,000 credits per day with the $99 a month plan. And so a lot of these other tools are a lot more expensive and you get a lot less out of it. So again, the best value tool. What I also like about this tool is that it gives you mobile phone numbers. So you don't have to pay extra for a mobile phone number like some other tools. While we're on the topic of LinkedIn scraping, let me give you some honorable mentions. SalesQL is pretty good. It allows you to scrape LinkedIn and LinkedIn Sales Navigator. The data is good. It gives you mobile phone numbers. The top tier package is $119 and it gives you 10,000 credits per month. For most of you, I think that would be pretty good. Uh, I don't think a lot of people are gonna be using more than that. Next up is Apollo. I usually use this for e-commerce and business scraping. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with Apollo and it's mostly a hate relationship, all right? They say you get unlimited credits for $99 a month. Really, you're getting 10,000 credits. If you're getting 10,000 credits, just tell us we're getting 10,000 credits, bro. Like Now, the search function is really good and you can also use their Chrome extension to scrape Sales Navigator and a regular LinkedIn search. They have a lot of filters like technology, revenue, industry, and all that jazz. Some other problems that it has is that it makes you pay a lot more if you want mobile phone numbers out of it. And then the other thing is that it manually makes you scrape 25 people at a time. Like you can't just scrape 5,000 people if you want to, which is really dumb. If I paid for 10,000 credits, why can't I use my 10,000 credits? Why do you make me work harder and do manual labor just to 
get 25 credits at a time just to reach up to my 10,000 credits that I already paid for. So really the only reason I use it is for e-commerce brands and looking at people buy technology. Here's some tools you should avoid. Lead scrape, find that lead, up lead, seamless AI, and zoom info. The problem with these tools is that either they're really cheap and they have bad data or they're super expensive and overpriced for what they are. I actually have a mastermind where we help agencies get 120 appointments a month using these direct outreach systems. And just as an added bonus, a feature to everyone that's in the group, we scrape leads for you from Ninja Leads, from Use Artemis, and from Apollo. And so if you wanna be a part of that, where you don't ever have to pay for those subscriptions, we'll just do it for you. You can book a call with me and my team below. I'll talk to you guys soon. Everyone, so in today's video, I'm gonna go over how I get leads through LinkedIn, a guide to getting consistent sales calls through LinkedIn. Now, a lot of people say that LinkedIn just doesn't work or doesn't work that well. And I think the reason they say that is because we have these things called decisions and we like to see a good output with our decisions. So let's say this is um, our output. We do a lot of, let's say this is work, right? We're putting a lot of work in. We expect to get like an equal amount of return out of that, right? So we, we put 10 hours in in our work and we expect to get like uh, so much money, right? However much we're paid per hour is supposed to get that much out. Um, and so that's what we expect to see. But some, some people, they decide not to do things because they put in a lot of work, but they only see a very little return. And so when you're doing, you're making decisions like this and you see this kind of result, you don't want to keep doing that thing anymore because you're not get, getting the results that you expected to get. Uh, and so the thing is, is that if you use the tool effectively, you'll get that uh, asymmetrical decision. So it's like um, you'll put in a little work and you'll get a, a pretty good amount out of it. Uh, or even this where you'll put in a little work and you'll get a lot out of it, right? Um, that's the goal. This is what we want. Um, and so that's what automation allows us to do and the right kind of automation allows us to do because we can, well, we can set it up one time and we'll get a lot out of it. Um, and so LinkedIn for me, it is actually a lot easier to do than like Facebook or anything else. Um, now you might not get as many sales calls. I get a pretty good consistent amount of leads and it's like, I don't even have to try. I don't even have to do anything. Uh, that's because the automation is set up and it just runs. Um, and so that's what's cool about these automations. Like Facebook automations are kind of not as advanced, I guess, as LinkedIn automations. Like they don't do as much, um, which is unfortunate, but uh, LinkedIn automations are set up to just like run and then you can just, uh, you just wait for the leads to start rolling in. So that's pretty cool. So, uh, I want to put it to you that way. You just do a little work up front, right? In terms of like setting up campaigns and stuff. And then, you know, it's long-term rewards. If you know how to do this effectively, LinkedIn will be worth it. Um, but for most people, you know, they, they put in a lot of work and they get a little bit out of it. So then they say it's not worth it. So anyways, let's get started. Um, next thing, here's some like examples of, um, messages I got. I'm not going to go too much into this. Uh, some people right here is like people will just come across my profile and then they'll, um, they'll reach out to me because a lot of the times it's just the bio. So the bio is very important and I'll get into that. So first thing is we're going to go over setup. Um, what we need to set up in terms of our LinkedIn profile, you need to have at least hundred connection requests, um, or connections. If you don't have that, just start sending connection requests. Um, and you want to get to sales navigator. Now, if you have sales navigator, the thing with that is, is that it looks like, um, Face, sorry, LinkedIn is less likely to ban you if you have Sales Navigator because they see that you're a paying customer. So if you're a paying customer, they're gonna see you as a little more legitimate than someone that's just trying to come on and spam. So if you try to come on, send a whole bunch of connection requests and then um, you're also a new account, then it looks kind of spammy and so LinkedIn is more likely to block you. Now, uh, some things that I have ran into is not LinkedIn necessarily blocking any of my customers, but just um, giving them a warning and saying, hey, you need to upload a photo of your ID just to verify that you're a real person, uh, just so that we can you know, make sure that you're a real person. So that's something to be aware of, um, but I think that's avoidable when you have Sales Navigator. So that particular account didn't have Sales Navigator and it was very new, very had uh, very little connections uh, when we first started. So um, that's that. So to get Sales Navigator, I have this link here to get Sales Navigator for $27. So I will put this in the description below. This is a friend of mine. I use his tool. I have a Sales Navigator through him. I pay this much. And so it's really, uh, really cool that he just allows you to get Sales Navigator for 80% off. The reason for that is because I believe this, I, I don't really know, but I believe this is how it works. Um, you can buy enterprise accounts. And so you can like get uh, Sales Navigator, like you can basically get employees and give your employees accounts for really cheap. And so I'm guessing he has one of those accounts. Uh, so yeah, anyways, you can get that for $27 and we're going to go to set up the profile. Um, the profile photo needs to be clear and clean. Now I did not go to, I'm going to go to LinkedIn for me. I'm going to kind of show you what mine looks like. Now I'm, 
I'm not going to act like I'm the biggest LinkedIn expert. There are plenty of people that are way better than me at LinkedIn. Um, and so I'm just going to give you what I do, and it works for me. I get calls from it. I get um, people reaching out to me just because of this bio. Right? People will see this bio, and they'll just reach out to me. Uh, also, um, people will um, respond to my messages, as you saw earlier. You know, it's just it's pretty easy to get calls, and I don't really have to do anything. I set it up like a couple weeks ago. Um, I, I haven't ran a LinkedIn campaign for a while, but I just set one up a couple weeks ago just to like um, get this more fresh in my mind. Because I mean, I set them up for clients, but I just want to do it for myself just to, yeah, I don't know, get more results for me. And uh, it was pretty easy once it was set up. You know, I just get calls coming in. I don't really have to do anything until that campaign runs out of contacts. You know, so. Anyways, um, profile photo, clear and clean. Let's go to the next one. Bio needs to be top priority. Make sure you have a clear message. So here's my message. Helping marketing agencies book 40 calls per month through direct outreach. It's pretty simple. Um, and so people will just reach out to me saying, hey, I saw your bio. How can you help me? Uh, you know, so that's that. Um, content needs to be recent and valuable. Same thing that I said in the Facebook. Um, you just want to put post out just to show people that you're an authority. And the reason that you're kind of posting is because you want them to... Um, you want them to see you as an authority figure and you want them to know that if they want the end result that they're looking for, then they need to come to you. Um, so if they want, for me, it's like if they want more sales calls, and if I'm posting constantly about sales calls and how I get sales calls, then they're going to know like, hey, I want sales calls. I should go to Carson because he knows everything about it. Uh, background photo is up to you. Now, I have people telling me that, hey, you need a better background photo. Um, I have, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if that's going to really boost anything, honestly. Um, because to me, it kind of just seems tacky when people have a background photo that says, click here to see, or to join my Facebook group on how you can do blah, blah, blah. And so I just put some stars in the back and I call it a day. Um, and so I get a lot of calls from just this. For me, I just, you know, I usually read um, that. I don't really look at the background photo. So that's just me. Anyways, uh, so that's up to you. You can do that whole uh, you know, get make a, a image on Canva with words on like, hey, this is what I do. But as you saw with me, that's what I do, and I get results with some stars in the background. So, anyways, set up tracking. Um, understand the sheet and daily tracking activities. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to open this uh, tracking sheet for us. Um, there it is. There we go. So this is positive reply tracking. I'm going to lower my head here. And you have a lot of options here. And we have uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, SMS, and email that you can use. Uh, today we're just focusing on LinkedIn and the positive replies. So anytime you get a positive reply, you want to put it in here just so that you know who's responding to my message and what are they responding with and what message are they responding to. And so we can put in like the date that they responded, uh, the, their name, the channel that they came from. So we can, this lets us know Right. This lets us know how many are we getting more people from LinkedIn? Are we getting more people from Facebook? Uh, so that we can assess right how many calls are we getting from these different channels. Also, the um, what's this called? The uh, appointment log will let us see what you know channels we're actually getting calls from. And so um, for me, I only really run Facebook right now for myself, just because I I don't want to I don't want to get a ton of sales calls, so I purposely do that. Um, and so. But let's just say I was running all the channels and this is what my calendar looked like. So if my calendar looks like this and most of my calls are coming from Facebook and I only have like one from email, one from, I don't know, text message, then I would know, hey, maybe I should just double down on Facebook and go all in on Facebook just so, because I'm getting the best results out of that. So tracking these replies and tracking these appointments and where the channels and they're coming from is very important, okay? And also tracking um, where, what message they're responding to because if we're getting more responses with this type of message, then we should put this type of message across all our channels and see how people respond to it. So uh, it's all about um, killing the bad stuff and um, growing the good stuff. Anyways, so track stuff like that. We're gonna track our positive replies as well as uh, just daily stuff. So the date that um, it is, the amount of invites that were sent, the amount that were accepted, response rate, positive replies and calls, um, and the message that you're sending out or like the campaign maybe that you're sending out that week or that day and uh, I'll show you kind of how where you can get this data when we start going into the automation cool so Wallaxy, see this is the tool that I use uh, you can use any tool but um, for me I'm using Wallaxy, and it works really well super easy to do and uh, we're gonna go over how to do this so installing Wallaxy is pretty easy you're just gonna go to Chrome store 
look up Wallaxy. I'll put a link in the description below, add it to your Chrome browser, and then it's going to ask you to, you're going to click this thing, and then you're going to open Wallaxy. It's going to ask you to open a LinkedIn tab. So you'll open a LinkedIn tab, uh, and then you can refresh the page, the Wallaxy page, and then it's going to, you know, open your Wallaxy dashboard, and then it'll kind of look like this. So this is the Wallaxy dashboard. So, um, so if I click Wallaxy now and I click open dashboard, it's just going to open that right there. And it'll open this right up. So, uh, open LinkedIn, blah, 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 understand the platform. Okay. Prospect looks, campaigns. Okay. So we have uh, pretty simple. We just have a few things here. This is kind of an overview of your entire account. And you can look at all the things that are happening. As you can see, like this campaign went out and then this campaign's going out right now. Um, and then we have a few things that you can go into, which is prospects. So this is lists that you can um, go into. And these lists uh, are the ones that you can use to send campaigns to. So if I say marketing agencies in LA, or yeah, New York, San Francisco, and LA. And um, yeah, you can just use lists like this to create a campaign for. So I grab a list from a sales navigator or whatever, wherever it is, and I put them into um, a campaign. And so we're going to go into campaigns. Boom. And you have, uh, you can create a whole bunch of different, ca different campaigns. You can start a campaign up here. They give you a few different options, which is cool. But then you have also browse sequences and they have a ton, a ton, a ton of options uh, on here of different sequences that you can do. Now what I would do, um, my main thing is usually just an invitation uh, and then two messages or three messages. So that's what I would do, like right here. Invitation plus three messages. So uh, event horizon. You also have, um, Invitation plus two messages here. So this is what I recommend right here, just doing the two messages. The third message, you can just, um, you can try it. If it works, it works for you, that's awesome. Uh, the more follow-up really, the better. And I, I do recommend three follow-ups, but this is just what I'm currently running. Invitation plus new, two messages. So you can just click here and start a new campaign. Uh, so yeah, that's that. So uh, we're going to go over creating a list in Sales Navigator. So. You're going to open Sales Navigator and you're going to use these filters. So I'll put a link at the here in the description below. And uh, this is just a overview um, or a basic template for uh, a Sales Navigator search. Okay. So this is for people that are looking for um, CEOs and all that. So um, we have a couple different filters here. If you don't know how to use Sales Navigator, you just go to Sales Navigator and you click on the lead filters and then it'll bring up these filters. I'll try to maybe if I go back and I'll just try to show Yeah, lead filters right here. It'll give you these filters. And so you can go in here and you can look at um, all of the different filters that you can add in. Uh, company, headcount, past companies, like tons and tons of stuff, um, which is cool because we can really narrow down who we want to target. But this is a basic overview. If you're trying to reach out to like CEOs, this is a basic overview of what you can do to find the right people. Uh, now, for LinkedIn, um, what people are using right now, what's really good is just using these two uh, spotlight uh, filters. And these spot spotlight filters will allow you to add just a couple of, um, these are basically targeting people that are active on LinkedIn recently. So if they change jobs in the last 90 days or they posted on LinkedIn within the last 30 days, then they're pretty active. They should be active on LinkedIn, you know, because uh, they, they should be opening LinkedIn on a regular basis if they're posting on LinkedIn within the last 30 days. So um, that's pretty good. You can also just delete this one, change job in the last 90 days. And uh, sometimes like it's better just to delete that um, because sometimes the list get, gets bigger. In this case, it got smaller, but uh, so I'm just going to, I guess I don't really care. <laughs> But we have these, right? So self-employed, this is the company headcount. Self-employed, one to 10 employees, one to 50, 11 to 50, and then 51 to 200 employees. Uh, we have um, positive keywords and then negative keywords as well. So we have CEO, founder, owner, chief executive officer, and partner. And then we have negative keywords like assistant, advisor, coach, mentor, uh, executive assistant. So some people have the word owner or like founder in their title or CEO. And then their thing might be CEO coach or something like that. And so you can look up a keyword and it'll say CEO in their title, but they're actually just a coach. So we kind of remove those keywords right there. Then we have owner. Um, these are like seniority levels. So we want owners, founders, partners, and CXOs. 
and uh, Geog for United States. Now you can do that wherever you want, um, but this is kind of the basic overview of what you want to do. And then all you got to do is search up uh, whatever target industry you're looking for. So um, let's say in my example, it would be pest control. So this is cool because we're only getting people that are active on LinkedIn and uh, they have up to 200 employees, their CEOs and all this stuff, and they are um, have our keyword pest control. Now in this case, there's only 737 people, which is not very good. So what we want is about two and a half thousand per search. And so um, this is not very good. So what we want to do is maybe delete some things. So I think if, if I delete the seniority levels, I'm sure more would pop up here. Let's see, or not, um, 762. If I delete this, I know a lot more will pop up. So you have 9,000 total. So what I would do with this is I would uh, go back here. Oops. I would go back and uh, keep some of these things in. So if I were targeting pest control, if I were you, and I, they, this list had more than 500, and so this case it has 737, I would target this list first, do this entire list, um, and went to, for the campaign to be done and then go into targeting just like all of pest control because if we're targeting people that have posted on LinkedIn within the last 30 days we're getting just like the most active people so we can get some pretty good quality leads and we'll have a higher acceptance rate so connection request accepted rate and then we'll have a higher response rate because these are people that are active on LinkedIn now out of the 9,000 people that are you know that are, have all these um, you know all these functions like right? they have their CEO owner founder whatever and they're in pest control out of the 9,000, it looks like seven or like only a thousand of them are actually active on LinkedIn. Or, you know, most a lot of people are active, they just don't post. But this lets us know that these people are actually very active because they're posting on LinkedIn, you know. So, anyways, um, I would do this first and then go into um, just doing the broader market. So, after you've done all the ones of like people that have posted within the last 90 days and maybe even the change of jobs, this looks like it only adds about 90 people. So yeah, 788 people. Um, and so I would do this list first, as I said, and then go into the wider market. So first thing that we wanna do is to add these people into Wallexy. Now to do that, you're gonna um, open the Chrome extension right here. And when you're in a, a sales navigator page, it's gonna automatically open uh, their little dashboard for adding a list. So if I go into here and then I try to do it again, you know, that's not gonna pop up, but if I go back into here, it knows you're in there. So uh, I want to create a new list and the max number of imports that we can do at one time is 2,500. So if your list is like three, let's say it's like 10,000, then you want to um, shorten the list or make it smaller. And the way I make it smaller usually is just by targeting a specific location. So I'll say like San Francisco, New York, and uh, Atlanta, right? Um, as you might have saw with this list up here, I did one to 200 uh, within the last, posted within the last 30 days. And it says New York, San Francisco, LA. So I just shortened the list to those three locations, marketing, marketing agency. And as you can see, that my list was 2,300. Uh, the entire list was a little bit bigger than that. So I just had to narrow down to those locations so that I would get um, not as many people uh, in that list because it could only import 2,500 at a time. So go back to here. Uh, we're going to create a new list. How I like to create the list names is by uh, going by the, the filters that I used. So the first one is company headcount. So I'm just going to say 1 to 200 E as employees, or just 1 to 200. You can do whatever you want, but I'll just say E for employees. Um, job title, we'll just say uh, owner, because when I say owner, I know that I'm meaning like CEO, founder, owner, partner, all that stuff. So I'm saying owner, and then um, we just won't add anything for the seniority levels because that's kind of evident, you know, owner, owner, we're using both of these together. We're gonna to say um, 30 days, so posted within the last 30 days, and then the geography uh, US, and then the keyword, which is the most important part, which is pest control. Now you can do this however you want. You can make it more specific or less specific. As you can see, like I kind of skipped a few things. I skipped the 90 days, I skipped the seniority levels, um, but I will know what this means, right? When I go into here, I know what this means, right? One to 200 employees, uh, owners, like owner keywords, 30 days posted, New York, San Francisco, LA, marketing and marketing agency. Um, this is a, um, what's it called? Marketing is the, 
uh, this is the industry, so you can choose industry as well. This is a good one if you want to um, find people in a specific industry. So I chose industry marketing, and then I uh, looked up the keyword marketing agency. So that's how I would create the list names. Uh, so C, let's say, sorry, one, two, 200, uh, owner, 30, D, uh, US, and then we have pest control. Cool, and then we can create this. And then what we can do is just validate, and so it'll automatically start importing people that are in this list into my LinkedIn account, or my, I'm sorry, my Wallaxy account. And so I can actually just, uh, you don't have to stay in that tab or anything, it'll just run on its own so you can do whatever you want, and it'll start scanning these people and adding them into Wallaxy. Now it takes a little minute, uh, a couple minutes when it first starts, but once it gets going, it'll go pretty quickly. So um, that is that. Cool, that is how we add a list into Wallaxy. Cool, next up, uh, creating a campaign. So create a new campaign, as I showed you before. We like to go to campaigns and just do a simple one like invitation plus two messages. We can go browse sequences and find here invitation plus three messages. Let's hope, yep. So invitation plus three messages right here. So um, now you can, they give you this complex little thing. And now this is kind of, yeah, this makes it really complex. What I like to do, yeah, I just like to do the invitation plus two messages right there because it makes it super easy for us to do. Um, we'll just stop importing this. And we'll click next. You want to name it whatever you want to. I like to name it based on whatever the, um, the industry that I'm targeting is. Like, hey, this is the list that I'm targeting with this. Uh, message. So if you target multiple industries, you can, um, you know, change the name accordingly. And so we want to select the list that we're using. So they give you two different options, which is pull from a sales navigator list or um, from my own list. Now, if you click this, it's just going to open sales navigator and have you do the whole thing all over again. So um, I'll just do it from my own list because we just created one. So we do the pest control one. Yes, at all prospects, and you don't have to do that, but. Um, the first thing is an invitation note, and I do not recommend adding an invitation note. What I've learned from all the LinkedIn experts, I've been talking to a lot of them recently, and they all say uh, that adding a connection request note uh, does not actually, it does not work better, it works worse. So just not doing any of these, and clicking no continue. Then next, so wait one day, that's cool. And then our first message. Now, for some reason, mine just keeps having to reload, so I'm just gonna reload. All right, let's do this again. Boom. From my list, boom. And so it's pretty cool how, yes, at all prospects, no, how easy this is to do, which is awesome. And uh, now we're gonna go into crafting our message. Now, if you want to learn how to craft your message, you can go into my craft, how to craft your message video, and uh, you can learn a little bit about how you can um, use that. I'll also probably try to put some frameworks and some ideas, um, some templates that you can use in terms of making your own messages. But for now, we're just gonna um, create one up on the spot. So for pest control, I would say um, something like, hey, first name, uh, if I said I could, could bring you, bring you 10 bed bug heat treatments this month. Would you be interested? Question mark. And so that would be the first message I would send out. Um, now, there's a lot of different ways that you can say this message. And you can go into that other video to learn how to do that. So there's like the intro, there is the uh, the offer right here, and we talk about a lot about the offer, and then um, the close, or like the CTA call to action, which we usually wanna do a soft ask, especially on LinkedIn. We don't wanna like try to push to a sales call on our first message. We wanna get to see if they're interested. You always wanna go out with a message saying, seeing if they're interested. You don't wanna just be like, hey, how are you doing today? You know, because a lot of times that doesn't work. Um, and so the best thing that works is just saying, hey, this is our offer, are you interested? They say yes or no, we can move on from there. So that's our first message. And then we have a delay. Um, now you can just go with their basic one. I like to do like three days. Next. And then the second message, I just like to do um, how, how is 
it going over at company. So it'll put their company name. Now it's going to ask for a fallback. A fallback is basically if they do not have the company name, they want to know um, what you want to say instead of the company name just so that you know it doesn't sound wrong. So if the company name isn't there, it's just going to say, how is it going at question mark, you know, which sounds stupid. So the fallback is always your company. And then we leave it like that. And then we put a question mark here at the end. Oh, let's see. There we go. Um, and so it's just, how is it going over at your company? Uh, or it'll say whatever the company is, which is, how is it going at coldleads.com? How is it going at Walletsy? You know, whatever it is. And then next. And then you can just launch the campaign. And that's why this is like the easiest because as you saw, it's pretty easy to create a list and it's pretty easy to upload them. Pretty easy to get a campaign up and running. And once you click launch, you're good to go, right? That's it. Um, so you're really, you know, just paying $27 per month for the uh, sales navigator. And then if you're paying for Wallaxi, you know, you're paying for that. But, um, you know, you can just get sales calls coming in and you really don't have to do anything. So you can check it every once in a while. Like you can do your daily tracking, make sure it's working. But it's not like Facebook where you have to go in every day, go into a different group, and then message those people in that group. And then, um, you know, and then have to do it again the next day where you have to kind of like stay on top of it every single day. This constantly runs. So if, let's say, you're working whole day, you're forgetting about it, it's okay because messages are still going out, which is awesome. So, anyways, that is how you set up a campaign in Wallaxy. So I'm going to quit without saving because, yeah. Anyways, that's it. Um, there's also, you can add a third message, and that third message can be whatever you want. I have some templates for third messages a lot. The times I just like to do, hey, third time's a charm. I'm a real human, LOL. Just want to see if you're interested in blah, blah, blah. If you want to look at that, you can go into my um, my uh, crafting a message video. I didn't really go much into the follow-ups, but I will make a separate video about how to do follow-up. So, messaging. This is really quite simple uh, and a very similar to Facebook, so I'm not going to get too much into it. If you want to watch my Facebook video, you can watch that. Uh, but um, you know, here are some examples of people. I kind of use the exact same framework I just showed you. So, uh, hey, just curious if you're if I could bring you 10 qualified leads per week, would that be of interest? Yep. How much do you charge, right? And this guy's saying, what's the process like? You know, and I use the exact same thing, right? I just I showed you um, how are things going over at your company name. I just I use the exact same thing, and as you can see, this is working. This is last Wednesday. Um, I just took the screenshot. Kirsten, what's your offer and for qualified leads? What's your process? Uh, what do you charge per lead, right? And so people are interested. It's pretty easy to get people interested, and you really don't have to do anything. Honestly, I get a couple responses every day, uh, and now it's the weekend, so I haven't gotten really any responses this weekend. But um, and I really just set it up a couple weeks ago, and I just get responses every day. And I have honestly people just coming in. Really, uh, it's really easy to book calls when people just look at your bio and then they um, they want to book a call based on your bio. So when they're reaching out to me saying, "Hey, I saw your bio," that's pretty um, easy to get people on a call with that. So uh, this is an example of that. Anyways, so it's kind of like the same with Facebook. You know, I, I can kind of show you how the conversation leads. And so this guy says, "What's your process?" And so I would do something like this, where I say, "I use email, SMS, Facebook, and, and LinkedIn to reach out to your target audience. They get you leads. I follow up until they respond and send the qualified leads your way." Who do you target mainly? And so that's kind of how I lead the conversation. And so we always, I usually always have this can't like that same exact response I've sent to multiple people. If you're watching this video right now, you might have even received that response from me um, where you said, how does it work? And then I say, oh, this is how it works. And then that same exact uh, reply. And um, so it's really good just to have that canned response somewhere just so you can copy and paste it and put it wherever. And um, you really just say that. You can say, who, who do you target mainly? Whatever the qualifying question is for you. And then they say, you know, this is what I do. You say, okay, great. Are you free tomorrow at 10 a.m.? Or um, are you free for a call? Like I can go over how it works and all that stuff. Um, kind of like this. Are you free to chat tomorrow sometime? And then they book a call and that's that easy. Okay. So I will go more in depth. I, I'm creating videos where I just go in every day. Not every day, but every couple of days. Go into my LinkedIn account and I just show you exactly what the messages are coming through how I think about all the messages and then also how I respond to all the messages. And so you can kind of see how I book calls uh, in that way. So you can watch those videos as well. So I'll be making those shortly. LinkedIn posting. Again, this is very similar to Facebook posting, so I'm not going to go too in-depth into it because uh, I went really in-depth the last time. I'm not even as, as in-depth as I could, but we're going to go into uh, just a little bit. So we have 
three different types of posts that work really well is value, asking questions, and success posts. So value is like this when you have like um, long form copy. If you don't know how to do long form copy, that's okay because I have um, a, a whole guide on how to do this. I'll put the link below. There are three, um, three Google documents, um, one for just the title, one for just the hook, and then one for the, um, the whole body, so the rest of the message that you're saying. And so for this, let's say this is the title, so I have a whole framework on just how to come up with good titles, so how I consistently fill my calendar every day. And I say without relying on referrals, or without paid ads, without um, going to networking events. And so that, that's the hook right there, and then you click see more, and then you have um, you know, all that. And I have just funny photos. <laughs> I just like to do whatever. Um, always adding a photo to your post, because if I scroll through LinkedIn or Facebook right now, you'll just you'll constantly see photos, because that's just what works. Everybody does it. You know, photo, 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 video, 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 photo, 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 right? So um, it's hard to, you, know, it's, you cannot compete if you don't have photos in your, you know, in your message anymore. So, um, just because look, it's so much more compelling than like any of the normal posts. Like, I don't know, I haven't really even seen any normal posts. Let's see. Yeah, every single one of them has a, there we go, there's a normal post. But it's like, how does that compare to this or to that, right? It's like, you know, that just doesn't even, it's just so much smaller. There's no uh, color to it, you know, so add photos. Um, that's value posting, the very in depth uh, training on how to do that. Link will be in the description below. Asking questions, this is very simple and to the point. You kind of just want to ask questions based on that audience's pain. So this is a good example. This was on Facebook, but I just pulled it. Uh, why do you, why do beginner coaches and consultants struggle, struggle so much when starting out? Interested in see what everyone's, to see everyone's opinion. And um, I'm just, yeah, you want to talk about their pain, um, you know, and just whatever questions that you can come up with to target that pain is really good. Next one is success posts. This works really well because people just see you as the authority. Again, just posting funny photos. I just try to be unique, okay? <laughs> Don't judge me. Um, so um, the thing about this is is that I kind of go into this a little later on here, but uh, you kind of just want to show people that I'm the best person that you should reach out to when it comes to this end result. If you want this end result, you want to come to me because, look, my client's getting this. This client's getting that. This client's getting this. So if I come in and I say, look, it's really easy to book 10 sales calls a day, and then you're booking like two sales calls a day or two sales calls a week, like I was when I first started out, you're going to come to me and you're saying like, how does this guy even do it? Um, if I want that end result, I got to go to Carson because Carson knows the answers to that question. You know, if I want to start a consulting business, um, you know, Bastion Slots here, he was a friend of mine. Um, I actually bought his program a long time ago. It was like, it was, it, it was when I started my agency. Um, but he was like getting out of the agency space, going into the coaching space like everybody else. And um, <laughs> he just posts constantly of like, like I think four to five of his posts are just a success posts saying, hey, look, this, this client got this, and that client got that, this client got that, this client got that. And those just work really well just because um, it just shows like, hey, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. And so whenever I want the end result, you know, people will follow you for so many years and they, you know, won't want to change anything. Everything's fine. And then when they actually do want to change, they actually do want to get some sort of end result, like, hey, I want to start my own coaching business. Then they'll say, oh, Carson's the guy I need to go to to do that. You know, I'm not the coaching guy, but um, whatever it is, you know. So success posts work really, really, really well. Uh, it's social proof, and you want to post these as much as possible. So um, schedule is not set in stone. Aim for one per day. People love videos. Kind of go in more into that in the Facebook uh, video, but... I kind of already went into this, which the principle behind posting is we want to get in their heads that if they want the end result, we are the best source of getting the end result. So if you want 10 sales calls per day, I want to be sure that you know me as the best guy to help you get that end result. You know, and there's other people that do the same thing. And so I'm trying as hard as I can to show you I'm trying to learn as much as I can. I'm trying to do as much as I can to be like, look, I'm the person you want to go to because I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about. And the way that I know, or I portray that is by making these content and showing you, hey, this is, I know what I'm talking about because I'm making a video about it, you know, so, or I'm posting saying, hey, look at my success, look at my client's success, you know, so anyways, that is it in terms of LinkedIn, thank you so much for watching, if you have any questions, just let me know, um, I will see you in the next one. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely interested in hearing more, uh, let's go ahead and schedule a, a Zoom or a Google Meet, I'm guessing you have my email, you want to shoot me a, uh, <laughs> yeah, let uh, me see, calendar, uh, calendar 
Yeah, is it R R O Y E O? Yo, what's up everyone? Today is a long awaited video, how to get sales calls through voicemail drops. So I haven't made a video, this video in a long time, uh, or I just haven't made it at all because uh, I just have been prolonging it. I know a lot of people want it, so here it is. Um, so I'm gonna go over how to set this up, how it works, and then what to expect when you're actually doing uh, this outreach. So we're gonna get right into it. What you're gonna need is two different tools. One is Go High Level. Now that's just what I'm using to send out the voicemail drops. You can use whatever you want. There's a website called drop.co that also sends voicemails. I don't like it in particular just because um, it's a little weird, I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> when I tried to do it on myself, I was doing a test campaign. No, it was a test, it was like a free trial version of the tool. And uh, I sent out voicemail drop to myself. I wake up the next morning at 6 a.m. and I get a call from drop.co and it was the voicemail trying to go through. And, uh, and I'll kind of explain how this works. So these voicemail drops, what it's basically doing is it's not actually just sending it to a voicemail. Uh, so they're called uh, ringless voicemails. There, there's some called ringless voicemails and some called voicemail drops. So the ringless voicemails are supposedly voicemails that are just not ringing to your phone because it's ringless and then it's just going straight to voicemail. So somehow skipping past everything to go to the voicemail. And then voicemail drops are basically, it's gonna call your phone twice. The first time it's gonna call it and then directly hang up and then call it again super quickly so that uh, on the carrier side, it looks like that, you're, that you try to call but the call failed and then it just sends you straight to voicemail. So what happens when you do a test on yourself uh, with a voicemail, you'll just get a call really quickly and then it'll just hang up. And then maybe a couple seconds later, you'll get a voicemail coming to you. So that's kind of how it works. Um, and I can kind of show you on this phone here. Um, got a voicemail on this one and it's just boom right there. And I can play it here. I'm gonna put it on speakerphone. Reach out. I can help your marketing agency get 40 appointments per month with companies that need your marketing help if you're interested. Let me know, you can just call me back at this number or you can just text me back. Uh, so yeah, cool. Let me know, talk to you soon. <laughs> As you can see, my voicemail wasn't very great, but that's what it was. Uh, and then it sent to this phone and uh, as a voicemail. So how do we do this? Let's get set up first by creating the voicemail. So what you'll need is a tool called Audacity. So I have it on here. Uh, it's a free app. But now you can use whatever you want. You just need some some way to record your voice. You can record it from your phone and then send it your, to your computer. That works too. But I have a pretty nice microphone here, and I just wanted something easy to record my voice. So here we go. Uh, you can also use like you can use you can record a video if you want. You don't have to get this app, right? You can just record a video and then uh, upload it to uh, to a, a service to do video to MP3 or something like that. Uh, so record it on your computer, uh, whatever you want to do. But I like this because I can actually do a little bit of uh, editing to it just to make it like louder. You know, it's pretty easy to use. So here you go. You just select the microphone you want to use and then start recording. Hey, I just want to see if you're interested in getting 40 appointments per month for you with your agency. Uh, what I do is I help people set up automations and blah, 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 blah. Let me know if you're free to chat sometime this week. Uh, if you can text me back or call me back, that'd be great. Cool. You stop that recording. Now, uh, this here, it peaked pretty quickly. So I'm going to select from here to the end. And as you can see, it's very quiet, I guess. So what you can do is click analyze or effects and then amplify. And then it's going to automatically detect how much it needs to amplify by, uh, by making sure that it doesn't clip. So clipping means like, like going over uh, to where it's hard to hear, you know, boom. So automatically does it for you to where it amplifies everything else. Now, the thing is, is if we, if we, the reason I, if I go back here, if I selected this whole thing, it's already clipping at this point, right? It's already up to the max. So if I click analyze, or I'm sorry, effects, amplify, it's gonna say uh, increase by 0 0.89 because uh, it, it detects that this is already here and uh, it's already clipping. So uh, we basically select from here to here. Uh, you might not run into this problem, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, effects, amplify, boom. So now it's like seven. So amplify by seven because whatever the highest peak is, which is probably this one right here, uh, whatever the highest peak is, is going to bring that up to the top. So uh, 0 .0 uh, decimals. So that, uh, um, you know, cool. I just want to see if you're interested in getting 40 points per month with your agency. Uh, what I do is I help people set up automation. So it's louder. It's, uh, and so whoever's listening on the other end will be able to hear it better. Cool. File. Export. Export as MP3. And then you can save it to wherever you want. I like saving things to my download folder just because it's easier to know where it's at. 
save it, whatever you want to call it. So I'll just call this tests as the video test. Save, boom. It's going to bring up this little thing. I click OK. And then we're good to go. So I'm going to exit out of this. I don't like saving projects because I don't really need it. Go in here. And as you can see, it came up in here, voicemail, 915 test. It's already September, guys. Hey, I just want to see if you're interested in getting 40 appointments. Uh, my camera just keeps glitching out on me. I'm sorry for that. Your month free with your agency. So this is good. It's working. It's fine. Now we're going to create a workflow through Go High Level to uh, be able to listen to it. Upload to workflow. All right, cool. So all we got to do is go to automations. Go to, we're going to create, there's campaigns and workflows. I usually recommend people to use campaigns because it gives you a little more data. But in this case, the campaigns, it just takes longer. Like I try to do a campaign to myself. It didn't call me for like 10 minutes. And then when I did it on a workflow, I did it instantly. So uh, we're going to do it through workflow because it just works better. You can create a new campaign. You want to click start from scratch. Create workflow. I'm sorry, create workflow. I'm sorry. Uh, all right. Voicemail drop. And you can call it, I don't know, whatever your offer is that you set in the voicemail just so that you know like what is what. You don't really need a trigger for this, so you don't need to set that to anything. You just want to add your first action, and the first action being a voicemail. And then we can upload file, voicemail, boom, good to go, save action. Now, maybe if you do want to do this as a part of some sort of campaign, so whenever somebody opts in, it sends them a voicemail, you can add the trigger as, okay, anyone that fills out this certain form or anyone that books an appointment with me, you know, whatever you want to do. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to just add the context directly into this workflow, and then it's just going to run through them. So that's basically it. That's all you had to do uh, is upload it to the workflow. And then you can add extra elements to the workflow. Oh, my face, dude. I hate this camera thing. Uh, you can add extra elements to the workflow, like being able to send a text directly after the voicemail is sent. So I'm going to create a wait timer of like two minutes. Save action. And then do uh, send SMS. And then we can say, hey, just... Try to call, let me know when you're free to chat. Save action, right? So in that way, that looked really human, right? Because it's like, hey, I just try to call you, you know? And so the whole goal with all this stuff is to look as human as possible. And uh, so there we go. We just create, and you don't have to do that, but you know, it's something you can do. I heard other people that do like literally seven voicemails within one campaign, so you can do wait another day, one uh, days, Boom, and then send another voicemail, and then upload your second file. Like, hey, I tried to call yesterday, blah, 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 and you keep doing it and doing it and doing it until they call back. Now, if you're doing something like this to where it's a little more advanced campaign, you want to make sure that you go into here, into settings, and go into uh, stop on response. So whenever they call you back, it's not going to keep sending voicemails to them. And then whenever they text you back, it's not going to keep sending voicemails to them. Also, you want to make sure that allow multiple is off just because... Um, my face, <laughs> just because if allow multiple is on, that means you can add a context to a campaign multiple times. And that is not very ideal because let's say that you sent a voicemail to somebody, they said, hey, I'm not interested, okay, great. And then you accidentally add them to the campaign again and then they're getting the messages again, you don't want that, right? So uh, allow multiple off just for that purpose. Now I'm gonna turn it on just because I wanna test it on myself. So when you're testing it on yourself, you wanna turn it on just because <laughs> Uh, if you put yourself in the campaign and let's say something was wrong, something didn't work, and then you try to put yourself to the campaign again, it's not going to let you put yourself to the campaign again because allow multiple is off. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, we're going to put it on for now just to test, and then once we're ready to actually send, we'll turn it off. All right, boom. Back to workflow, and then we'll go and send out as drip mode. All right, so we're going to test it out first, and then we're going to send it out as a drip mode, uh, in drip mode to our contacts to, can you please keep up camera? Um, <laughs> it's not even... All right, so we're going to go to conversations. See if I can find recents. I don't think I'm in here. As you can see, we have people we were sending out to. I'm going to just find myself here. I'm going to go to contacts. We've got two phones here, so I'm going to try to find 937. All right, here we go. And uh, I'm going to just click on my contact to test myself out. And boom, general, I'm sorry, contact. You can scroll down, active campaigns. What was this one called? It's called voicemail something. Voicemail test. Voicemail. Okay, I think we call it voicemail drop. All right. And we don't need to select a time. Add. And then we're going to get added to the campaign. Now I'm going to hopefully my camera will stop lagging out on me. We're going to boom. As you can see, calls me and then ends the call. And then it's a couple seconds later. You know, I, the voicemail was maybe 15 seconds long. So 
we'll wait about that long until uh, it'll actually come through as a voicemail to us. And what's cool is I have uh, Metro PCS on this phone and it transcribed the message and sent it to me as a text message, which I thought that was pretty cool. It gives me a leg up because if, I don't know if this is for every carrier, probably not, but for Metro, apparently it is. Um, but transcribed it as a text to me. So it says, uh, new message, hey, what's up, this is Carson. And it spells Carson, C-A-R-S-O-N. I just found a company online, thought I'd reach out. I can help you uh, get, I can help your marketing agency get 40 appointments per month. With the companies that need your marketing help, if you're interested, let me know. I can give me a call back in the number. And this is, uh, so yeah, cool. Let me know, talk soon. Um, so it did that for me, sent me a text. And I thought that was pretty cool. As you can see, we just got the other voicemail that just came in, boom, right there. We'll see it. It's gonna transcribe it. Hey, I just wanna see if you're interested in getting 40 appointments per month with your agency. Uh, what I do is I help people set up automations and blah, 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 blah. Let me know if you're free to chat sometime this week. Uh, if you can text me back or call me back, that'd be great. Cool. cool. And also, it sent me a text, right? So the text is, right? So um, gives me the voicemail in there and it's going to text me in a couple minutes saying, Hey, I just want to see if you're blah, 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 if you're interested, um, or if you're able to get my call. And so we're going to get that text coming through in about two minutes based on our campaign that we just created. So you might want to turn it to one minute or even a no delay just because, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just put it to two minutes. So what you want to do when you do this is you want to, uh, get your contact list and then upload them into here. So the same that you would do with an SMS campaign, you would just uh, get your lead list of, let's say, all the business owners you want to reach out to with their phone numbers and emails and whatever, and then upload it to go high level. Now, I'm just going to use this as an example. Here we go. I uh, just got the text. Boop. Uh, hey, just try to call. Let me know if you're free to chat. So looks pretty hooping. human. Also, it automatically, you know how it says, like, it says maybe Carson at the top. Boom. I don't know if you can say, yeah, maybe Carson. And that's pretty cool because our, we set our name in the voicemail, so it detected our name, and so now it's saying, hey, it's maybe that person. Now, that probably only works for iPhone, I'm not sure, but pretty cool. And what we can do now is, what were we doing? What were we doing? Oh, yeah. Use Artemis, <laughs> sorry. And uh, this is a tool that I'm using currently to get lead lists. I somewhat recommend it. It's pretty good, um, depending on who you're targeting. So let's say you're targeting CrossFit gym owners, I don't know. You can export a CSV. Oh, sorry, not that one. Little lead lists. And uh, you can literally just download these directly from the um, use Artemis. You don't have to sort the data or anything. It's pretty easy to do. So if this will ever load, there we go. All right, so you can just upload marketing agencies, export to CSV, boom. So we have phone numbers and emails of these guys in here. Go to our contacts here upload, uh, get this file, upload it there. And dude, I'm just gonna make my face smaller, maybe that'll help. Um, full name, first name, last name, email. We wanna make sure that we match any of the, uh, of the fields together. So company name, we wanna make sure that's in there. So we're gonna look for company, company name, boom. Uh, company website, we're gonna website, boom. Job title, we don't need that, C country, Country, is that in there? Yeah, okay, country. Don't really need that, but location, so we'll put this as city. And then we have a uh, LinkedIn URL. I wanna put the LinkedIn URL in there. So I'm just gonna, we're just gonna remove my face. All right. <laughs> um, uh, we wanna do LinkedIn URL. I'm gonna put address. Um, just because, now you can use a custom field if you wanna create your own custom fields, but uh, I'm just gonna put it in as address because I wanna be able to see their LinkedIn profile as well just in case, let's say they call me and then I'm able to look at their LinkedIn profile as we're on the phone, stuff like that. And then phone numbers right here, you wanna make sure that you sign that because obviously we can't do anything without the phone numbers. So sign the phone numbers. Facebook, Twitter, we don't really need that, so I'm gonna, uh, don't import unmatched data. Next, advanced, I like to import it by phone number or, so we're gonna look at basically all the current contacts and see if any of the phone numbers are the same. If any of the phone numbers are the same, we're not gonna create multiple of the same contact. So it's not gonna create duplicates. And then I'm gonna add some tags. I'm gonna add, uh, depending on who they are, so I, I have a digital marketer, so um, I, that's just to tell me what audience they're from. So these are all digital marketing agencies. And then I have, let's, or if you know, CrossFit gyms or landscapers, whatever, you know, that's just what I do. And uh, I'm gonna also add a thing, voicemails, 
just because I know this is going to be coming into a voicemail campaign. And then you can add, uh, what I also like to add usually is where the where it came from. So this came from Artemis. I don't have it in here yet, but uh, just where the lead list came from, just so I know um, what's working and what's not working. So let's just say Artemis isn't giving me good results, so let me try some other tool because, you know, whatever. So just anything that I can use to identify where these this audience came from or who they are, uh, I like to use those and create tags for all that. So anyways, that's it. And we're going to click submit. No, I'm not going to do that right now just because we're doing a test. And then what you'll do is you'll click filters uh, and then you can find the ones that were created today. So you look up created and you'll, the date range, the date range is today from today, right? So these are all the ones that were created today. So we created a total of 170 contacts today. Now, um, that's one way you can look for these contacts and then you have all these contacts in here. Or you can also do, let's say you added multiple contacts in here today uh, for several different campaigns. So we have created, we're gonna apply that filter, but also we wanna add a tag filter. So we want only the people with the tag voicemails. Boom, apply. So now we have people that were created today and have the tag voicemails. Nobody else. All right, because I mean, I have contacts in here that were, you know, because I have inbound leads that come in, as you can see, 166 people are in here. But if I remove this, it's 100 and... 70 people because I, you know, four people came inbound and they probably opted into my course or something. So I want to make sure we add multiple tags or multiple filters here so that we're getting the right people. All right. So, uh, we'll do create it again. I'm oh, sorry. Tag again. And there we go. Voicemails apply. And then we can add it in as a drip mode. So you want to click add to campaign workflow. We're going to click, okay, proceed. We're going to look up our campaign here, voicemail drop, and then we're going to add in drip mode. So the reason we're adding in drip mode is because if you're sending it all at once, the problem is, is that uh, you'll get a whole bunch of calls really quickly. So you'll just get like 10 people calling you at the same time, which you can't pick up all the calls. And when you're doing that, they're not going to call you back again. So you're not going to like, I've texted, I had several people that called me back. And when several people call me back at once, I can only pick up one phone, one call at a time. So uh, when that happened, I basically, you know, I had to text everybody else back that called me, but they don't text you back. So it's either you pick up the phone or you're not going to be able to contact them. So we want to add it in a drip mode so that we're not a drip mode is basically saying, okay, we want to do one every one person every one minute, or let's say five people every one minute so that we're not getting a ton of uh, callbacks quickly at the same time. Uh, we're kind of spreading it out over time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say voicemail. I like to say the audience that I'm doing it to. So this is marketing and then also the date range. So let's just say we're going to do it from today till tomorrow. So 9, 15 to uh, 9, 16. We're going to start on today at around 15 minutes from now, or let's just say we're going to start at noon. Boom. And batch quantity for voicemails, not as many people are going to reply, uh, depending on what you're doing. So if you, if you add the text as a follow-up, if you, do multiple voicemails in a single campaign, then you're probably going to get more replies, obviously, because the more you follow up, the more people are going to reply to you. But uh, let's just say for this one voicemail drop campaign, not too many people are going to reply. So what I like to do is I'll just do every five every one minute. So five people every one minute. The thing is, we didn't verify these numbers. Um, we don't know if they're mobile numbers. Um, so it's like usually what I'll do like for an SMS campaign, I'll do like one every one minute. Uh, but in this case, we're going to get less replies than usually than a, uh, what's it called? An SMS campaign. So we're just going to do more per minute. So start from noon. Hopefully this makes sense, guys. Sorry if it doesn't. Uh, noon to, let's say, 2 p.m. All right, so if we're doing, I'm going to bring out a calculator out here real quick. Five every one minute for two hours. That's 120 minutes times five. That's 600 contacts that we can reach out to today within that time frame. Uh, and maybe we'll, maybe we'll just, this down to two every one minute so that's 240 contacts so uh, and I know we only have like 160 contacts in here so we're just gonna spread it out over the course of two hours just in case um, you know we don't we just don't want a whole bunch of replies coming in very quickly you know because we won't be able to pick up all the calls at the same time so it's better just to spread it out like that and then you just click add to campaign and then they're added to the campaign it's ready to go now um, I would add my camera let me add my camera back real quick Okay, so there's something that you need to understand about these voicemails, and it's that most people don't even listen to the voicemail, okay? So when you're getting callbacks, they're usually gonna say, you can say, hey, did you get my voicemail? And they'll say, 
no, I just saw that you called and I just wanted to call you back as quickly as I could. So I say, okay, great. And then you have to go into your pitch. So you basically just have to reiterate what you said in the voicemail. Hey, I just help marketing agencies get 40 points per month on autopilot. I just want to see if you're interested. Uh, and then they, they go into whatever, or I help landscaping companies reach 75% of their city without using paid ads. Okay, great. I help real estate market, you know, whatever, whatever your, your offer is, you just go into your offer on the call. And, uh, now obviously you can't be one. These are just people. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone because they're just calling you and they're people. So it doesn't really matter. And, uh, you have plenty of opportunities. So you, the more you send these out, the better. Um, but so when you pick up the phone, they probably did not listen to your voicemail and they're just calling you back based on what you, the, the fact that you called them. And so they just want to call you back because they think that it's a lead. Now, uh, what's, it might seem like a downfall because they're not even listening to your message and then you're, you're just, it's basically a cold call, but it's a little different than a cold call because when they're calling you, they can't say to you, oh yeah, I don't have the time because they just called you, right? So they called you, so they have the time. So you, you get to be in a little bit more of an authority position because they called you rather than you calling them. Now you did call them, but they're calling you back and uh, returning your call. And so you have the leverage to actually like give your spiel out and they kind of are there to listen because they called you back, you know? So it's a pretty unique strategy. So it's like, it doesn't work as intended because they're not listening to the voicemails, but it works. It still works because you're getting in front of people that are, um, that are in your target market and that are willing to listen to whatever your offer is. So it's pretty cool. Um, so as you saw at the beginning, I, it was, I sent this out to a couple people this morning, got a books call for next Friday and you know, it worked pretty well. So, um, it's pretty easy to do as you saw by the, you know, Creating a campaign is really easy. You want to have, obviously, a voice recording. Use Go High Level. You also need Twilio to um, send out the voicemails through Twilio. Well, drop. It's not too expensive. I'm not sure. I'm not honestly sure how much it costs for a voicemail drop, but it can't be too crazy. Might as well just test it with a couple hundred and then uh, see what it costs you and then just keep going, keep going. And again, not too, like maybe a couple cents per voicemail um, or a penny per voicemail, something like that. So, anyways, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, just let me know. And I'll talk to you soon. If I can find my mouse here, I would stop the video. Hey everyone, here is an update to the Instagram outreach automation. So I know this is long awaited. I've been working on it all night. It is currently 1035 on a Monday night. So I've been staying up working on this for you guys. Hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, it is a little complex, but it's not really that complex. It's not that too complicated. I'm going to try to explain the entire thing. It's not as easy as like the Facebook Chrome extension, but it's once it, you set it up, it's pretty, pretty uncomplicated. I don't know. Anyways, let's get started. I don't feel like we're recording this intro. So, <laughs> all right. So we're going to go over what it does. So first thing we can do is we can get lead lists. So we can search a, let's just say we want to target hmm, fitness coaches, fitness coach as a hashtag. And then we can scrape that lead list. And so it's what it's going to start doing is getting us all the fitness coaches uh, that have posted on hashtag fitness coach within the last hour or so. And yeah, so it's going to grab that information. Then we can put it into here, this Google sheet, and we can download this Google sheet. And uh, basically we run it on an automation called UI vision. So we put it, upload it to this, which is UI vision. And we have uh, an Instagram DM automation here. So I'm going to see if I can do something here real quick. Boom, boom, boom. All right, cool. There we are. So this is what we're looking for here, this table view. And this table is basically everything that's happening. So we're going to play this. I'm going to play it in a loop. And we're going to click. I'm going to actually go here. And then we're going to play it. Play. And as you can see, oops, okay, or not. It's going to go to this website, apparently. <laughs> All right. Uh, so it's going to open Instagram, hands-free. It's going to click on name and it's going to type in someone's name, click on their profile, type in our message. Now this is probably a bad example because this person doesn't have a first name. So we can use variables like first name, full name, username, stuff like that. I might also add variables like how many followers they have, right? And say, so, Hey, how are you doing? How was your day? Right? And so it, it, it should say, how's how are you doing today? And then their name, but, um, this person doesn't have, we just, this is, doesn't have a first name. It just has the username. So that's an example. Then it waits about six minutes, give or take a little variable in the waiting time. And then it sends out another message and does it again and again. Now what's cool about this as well is, is if I stop this, 
and start it again. Play loop. It won't send a message to the same person twice. So it's going to uh, boom. I'm going to open that guy up right again. So let's just say we accidentally restarted the automation or you scraped a list one time and then you scraped another list and the same person was in both lists. It's going to open this up and then see if the message exists. And if it does exist in the automation here, I know this looks complicated. I'll try to break it down everything for you so that you understand. It's going to see that, hey, something's there, and it's going to skip past it. Cool. And then it's going to go to the next person. As you can see, skip past him. Then it sent him a message twice in a row. I know that's a, a worry that some people have, like we don't want to send the same person a message. And so, and then it's going to go to the next guy, right? Which is Tiffany here. And here's another good example is that it's going to send, click her name. And then it's going to uh, put the message in there and it's going to put her actual name in there. So let's see. Boom. Tiffany. All right, there we go. Cool. So we have that variable that works. Awesome. So we're going to go through this entire process and how to set it up and get it working for you. I'm on your side. All right, let's go. Let me go a whole bunch of random tabs open. I'm going to go back to my Notion board here. How do I set up just for this? Awesome. So first thing that we need, we need to scrape Chrome extension. So what you're going to see in the course here is right below this video, you'll see this link for scraping tool. You're going to click on this. This is going to be Growthman IG email extractor. So this allows you to um, extract data from certain things. So you can add this to Chrome and pin it to the top here. Every time you open it, it's going to open an Instagram tab and you have a few different options. Extract followers, extract following, extract by hashtag, extract by location. So if you're targeting, let's say, restaurants, you can do hashtag restaurant, hashtag fitness coach, hashtag business coach, hashtag marketing agency. And so the problem with Instagram is that the targeting is a little weird because if someone does hashtag, I don't know, fitness, like everybody does hashtag fitness, right? If you went to the gym today and took a photo, it's hashtag fitness. So we don't want to we have to be a little more specific with our hashtags and then sometimes it's just harder to find people. So it's like hashtag real estate agent might be a really good one. Maybe hashtag like a certain industry like pressure washing. Sure. I'm sure you'd find somebody. Uh, and so it's really, it is your audience on Instagram. And I have a client right now who's doing barber shops. Really cool. Hey, what's up? Uh, <laughs> uh, and so I think this would work really well for barber shops because I'm sure a lot of barbers post, you know, their photos and they won't try to get more clients from Instagram that way. And so it's really easy to look up hashtag barber and do that. So we want to scrape uh, a business coach. Let's just do that as a hashtag. You can set them out that you want to scrape. I want to do too many because it does affect your Instagram account. So if we have too much activity on your Instagram account at one time, then you might have some issues there. You might get your account uh, suspended for a couple of days or blocked. That's also a uh, fair warning. If this has the potential to get, it, to get your account blocked. So if you, yeah, miss, you know, switch to an alternative if, if for a risk of getting banned, like sending out mass messages, automating things has the potential of getting your account banned uh, or blocked. Most of the time, what I found with Meta is that they don't really care. They care about using using automations, but if you prove that you're a real human, they'll give your account back. So as an example, I've got my Facebook account banned, but if you just request an appeal or like, hey, can I get my account back? They'll usually give your account back. It, like you have to do it within the first 30 days of them banning your account. And so I'll give your account back. Same with, I have like WhatsApp on my phone and we try to do WhatsApp automations. Every single time we try it, we get banned on WhatsApp, but we just request an appeal or um, submit a request for review. And then within a couple of hours, they give our account back. Same for Instagram. We've had, I've never had my account banned, but we had clients that have, and you just, you know, request, hey, can I get my account back? And they'll give it back to you. Uh, and so there's not too much to worry about. I would stick to 30 messages a day to start with and then ramp up to 50 messages a day, maybe even lower. If you're not very active on Instagram, start with 10 messages a day and then slowly ramp up to 20 messages and 30 messages. So that's what I would do. All right, cool. So we're scraping some business coaches here and we're going to use this tool to scrape and you can scroll here and look for like all, dude, all here. Yeah. So we see all the people here that we're scraping so far. What's cool about this is it also gives you emails and phone numbers. Holy cow. And these phone numbers and emails are actually pretty good quality because the person had to put it in there themselves. And a lot of times uh, it's their personal email, as you can see, and their personal phone number. So usually what they do is they they make their profile a business profile. And uh, when they make their profile a business profile, it says, hey, put your, your email and your uh, phone number in 
whatever your business profile so people can contact you. And they just put their personal profile, phone number in there because they don't know what else to put in there. And so we get a lot of really good high quality phone numbers on here. And it also gives you the country code. So if you want to target just the US, you can do anybody that has country code one, which is awesome. So you can do hashtag restaurant and pull scrape phone numbers from there. Uh, all that jazz. Cool. So we're, we scraped, let's see, 20 so far. And we're going to stick with 20 and we're going to stop here. So I'm going to click copy. I think once you click copy, it won't give you another option to click copy again. So you have to like go back and do it again, which is kind of annoying. I don't know why it does that. But copy there. And then what we want to do is the next thing that you want to do in the course, it would be a copy this Google Sheet. So you're going to click on this Google Sheet and it's going to come up with this. Now you've got black here and you've got uh, everything else is white. And so we want to, you can delete it. This should be blank for you. This just has something in here for now. But if it's not blank, well, you will just delete everything in here. And then what we want to do is start on number three and then paste it. So we're going to click paste. So paste anything you have. So we don't, we don't want to mess with these. We want to keep these where they are. And we just want to paste on column C and beyond. And so we have Instagram ID, the username, the full name, all that jazz, biography. Cool. Uh, something else that I know a lot of people want is they want to be able to filter things out. Let's just say you want someone with the keyword business coach in there. What I would do is I would create a separate page like this and I'm going to click paste and we want, you know, some people want, I only want people with this specific thing in their bio. All right. So you're gonna have to scrape from the keywords from the, let's say business coach hashtag. And so you scrape from the hashtag and then go into biography, click create uh, filters. Then you want to look for business coach, which no one has business coach. So it looks like business is in there. So we can select anyone with the keyword business. So first we're going to do a clear. So we're not going to select everybody and just select people with the word business business in their profile, select all. Okay, cool. All right. So we have these four people that have a business in their profile. And then what we do from here is we get all this data information, copy that. So I'm going to copy, go back into here, delete everything and then paste it in there. Now this is obviously a very small sample size, so not tend to work with, but you get the picture. Cool. So, uh, someone else is here. Hi, how are you? Um, <laughs> so anyways, that is how we do that. Let's move on to next part. So we want to make sure everything here is good. And then the second tab here will be messages, right? So what message do we want to send out to that person? And so to do this, we have a couple options here. You have the variables like first name, full name, or username. And so you can select any of that. And what I'm going to do is just do, Hey, uh, we'll do first underscore name. You want to make sure that it is exactly spelled the same. You can't have capital letters or misspelling on that because it won't recognize it. Um, and so, Hey, first name, how's it going? All right. I'm just going to say something simple. Obviously you want to create a better cold outreach message, but I'm just going to do this. And to, t to see if the, the name is any good, you can go into here into message right here. So it'll autofill into here. And so as you can see, Hey, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? And so if I go back into here and add a question mark, it's going to autofill back in here with a question mark. Cool. And it puts in their, uh, their name. Now here's the thing, smart business, fearless, right? That's not their first name because what it's doing, it's pulling from the full name here and it's just going to grab the first name within this. So it says business money, motivation, fearless business, boss, coaching, company with Tammy. <laughs> uh, and so when you're targeting businesses, the first name might not work as well. And, uh, or any of the variables might not work as well. Cause if I just said their username, Hey, I just saw your username, NZ business brokers, like no one's, <laughs> no one's <laughs> clicking on that. Uh, no one's responding to that. So I would, it depends on who you're targeting. Like if you're targeting fitness coaches, it probably would be easier cause they probably would put their name in there. Uh, or like, but if it's like companies or agencies or let's just say roofing companies, it'd be a little harder because of this, right? Uh, they put their full name as a company name rather than their actual full name. So what this is doing, it's just going to grab the first word of the E column. So the first name column here or the full name column here. So that's what that's doing. And so in this case, it doesn't make sense other than the last person, which is Ron. So, you know, whatever. Um, so we'll just go back in the messages and remove first name and we'll be good. All right. Cool. But that's just an option for you. I have those options. Cool. Ding. What's next? All right. We created the message. We know what we're going to say. 
We've got our uh, CSV ready to go. It looks like that's it. Let me see, make, make sure I cover anything, paste in the C, create your message, and download CSV. Let's go, cool. So we're gonna click here, uh, file, download. Now, uh, something I forgot to mention with this is you need to make a copy of this. You cannot just try to copy this one, right? So this sheet you're not gonna be able to use. Please do not try to request access to use it because people will come in here and they'll try to like, I wanna be able to edit this. Don't, because I'm not gonna give you access to edit it. Uh, this is a template for everyone to use. So what you wanna do is click file, make a copy, and then make a copy. And so you can copy it to your drive and then that will be the one that you can edit. This one's just an overview that something that you can use. Um, so you want to make a copy of the sheet and then have it on your drive and then be able to edit it, everything. So cool. All right, now we want to download UI Vision. This is the tool that we're going to use to automate everything. So we're going to go to here. It's going to be right here. There'll be a link in there. UI Vision, UI Vision RPA, add it to Chrome, and you're going to pin it to your taskbar here. So that's step number one. Step number two is going to UI Vision. I'm going to exit out of this to show you. You're going to get this. It's going to be blank. There's going to be a whole bunch of uh, demos in here and everything like that. You don't need any, like these are folders and folders and folders and folders. Make sure you just close out every folder and then create a new folder called My Macros. New folder, My Macros. And then you'll have nothing in here, but you know, you want to create that folder. All right. And then what we want to do is we want to go to settings here up at the top. And then we're going to go to. X modules pro and your license key and so then you'll put in a license key which will be in here as well let me see this is your license key so you'll just copy that you'll paste it in there and you'll have full access to everything cool uh, paste right and then you should have personal elite act personal edition active right cool awesome ABI I think everything else is good don't need any of this stuff. Next up, uh, put in the key and then download the pre-made CSV. All right. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, pre-made automation. So there's going to be another link in the course, automation zip folder right here. It's going to lead you to Google Drive and what in the world? Yeah. All right. You just want to download this as a CSV. So you're going to click download here and right there it should come in like that. And so then what we want to do is we want to open UI vision and click uh, uh, this folder button and then click import zip. And then we're going to look for the zip folder that we just downloaded and then open. All right. Well, this is a duplicate, so it's not going to open on my end, but it'll open for you. It's going to say Instagram DM dopamine. All right. What's next? Cool. Upload your CSV. All right. So I'm going to show you kind of how this works and how it looks. You want to be able to see, uh, let's see. I don't know how I can, all right, move this down maybe. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Uh, you want to be able to see all this stuff up here. So this is the stuff that we can edit. So this is like each task and everything that's happening. So it's going to read a CSV file, open Instagram, pause for five seconds, click, pause, click, type, whatever, you know, so it's going to do all that stuff. So what I want to do is I'm just going to, um, here, CSV. So we want to make sure that our Instagram outreach here is good. So everything looks good. All right. The, the message looks good. These are the people that I want to reach out to. Everything here looks good. All right, cool. So I'm going to file download and as the CSV download CSV. We're going to need, okay. This is Instagram outreach uh, CSV. And so we're going to open UI vision and then we need to upload, import it into here. And so we're going to click on CSV right there and click import CSV. And then we're going to click on the one right here that we just downloaded and then import. Then we want to do is I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Just bring this down a little. All right. And so we're going to look for the one that we just imported. So Instagram at reach number three, which is the, you know, cause I did it twice before. And so we want, this one is the one that we want to open. So we're going to click on, you know, you can click on all these little ones and each of these change. So you have the command, the target, the value description. And, uh, we're going to do the first one. So the, the command is the read CSV. The target is the CSV that we want to read. And so you want to change this to uh, your CSV. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to paste it in there. And then we're good. Cool. So we read the CSV. Next thing it's going to do is going to open Instagram. So this command is just open. It's just going to open Instagram tab into your uh, inbox. Now you want to be logged into Chrome, Instagram on your Chrome browser. Cool. Next is pause. Pause five seconds. Now it's five. Um, 
every, it's one is a millisecond, so 5,000 milliseconds is five seconds, I believe. <laughs> All right, so it, it'll pause for five seconds. Then we're gonna get into clicks. This is where it starts to get a little complicated, but it's actually really quite easy. And so I just wanna show you how this works. So if you've ever seen my RoboMotion videos, it's very much like RoboMotion, where you need to click certain elements on the screen. Now this is built out to where it might already work for you. The thing is that Instagram constantly updates their UI, so their user interface and how everything looks. And anytime they up update anything on the website, all the buttons change, and so everything kind of moves around, which makes it hard for the automation to do its thing because it's looking for a button over here, but it changed to over here. And so uh, it's built off of like this structure in this framework, and if anything moves around the structure and framework, like the numbers just collapse and it just, it can't work. And so when you do it on a Mac, like I'm doing on a PC right now, and it's if you're doing it on a Mac, it might look different, and so it might not work for you. If you're doing it on Windows 10 rather than Windows 11, it might be different, it might not work. If you're doing it on a smaller screen, it might be different, it might not work. And so, uh, those all those variables take a factor and so you you have to customize it kind of to your computer so we're going to do that right now i'm going to show you how it works so each one of the blue ones here have these ones in the blue right here they have a double dash in their blue they have a um, description so the description is basically what it's doing at that moment so this one's typing the username this one is clicking the profile link and then clicking next and then this one is uh find if a message was sent and so this is basically uh, find message. So like if that message is already there, if it's not already there, then we're going to send a message. But if it is there, we're going to skip to the next person. You know, uh, this one is type the message that we want to send out. And then this is click send. And so that's all the ones that you really uh, need to find. Okay. So you can run this right now and just see if it works. Right. <laughs> so you can make sure your message you typed in properly. You put the CSV in there. It's going to, it's got a six minute delay and you can just play the macro. And so what you can do is you want to play it on a loop. So you don't want to just click play macro here uh, because play macro basically it's going to start on row number one and then it's going to try to send the message to row number one. The thing about row number one is that it's, uh, it says message here, right? Or it says username. So when it tries to find the first person, it's going to try to find the word username and try to search for username and it's just not going to work. And I can show you what that looks like. All right, we're going to click, click play macro and it's going to open a website. Where's that? There it is. All right. And it's going to click, you know, everything works fine. All right, cool. But then it's going to search username. Yeah, because we're starting on row number one, which we don't want to do. So we're going to go back up and row, row motion, UI vision, click stop. All right. So what we want to do is click here and play in a loop. So play in a loop, basically it's going to go row one, then row two, then row three, then row four, then row five. And it's going to keep going. But we want to start obviously on row number two because row number two is where it starts, where our first person is. So we're going to do player loop. I'm going to change this to number two. And you can do it however much you want. Now, I, you, I want to do more than 30, but I think we only have three contacts in here. So two, three, four, five. So row number five, I think, is where it ends. So then we can click play from there. So it's going to run. And if it runs into any errors, then we need to fix that error. And I'm going to show you how to fix any of the errors that will come up usually what happens when you're clicking. So boom, that worked fine. Click next. All right, okay. Put in that person's name. Fearless business coach boss, whatever. <laughs> and put in a message. Let's see if that works. Hey, how's it going? Boom, send. Everything worked fine. Awesome. So that works for you. Boom, you're done. You just, oops, <laughs> automated message. That's pretty cool. And uh, that's all you got to do. Now, let's just say anything changes. Instagram six months from now doesn't work. That's the problem that happened with the other tool that we had. So if you ever tried our old cold leads IGDM, but I had a developer build it out and anytime Instagram changes, I have to go back to the developer to have them build it out. This is a little better because if anything does change, you'll know how to fix it. And so you don't have to rely on me to update the Instagram bot and I have to go to the developer and they, you know, so here's how I do it. All right. So anyone with the dash dash, those are the ones that you might need to change. And so I tell you in the description what it is and what you need to change about it. And so the first one is CSV. And so you just import, okay, if you're having problems, it's probably because you put the wrong CSV in there. And so you need to put the right CSV in there. So you go to CSV, import CSV, look for what the name is, copy the name and paste it into there. All right. Second one is click. So we're clicking right here, the description, clicking new message button. So that new message button is this one right here. And so we need to click this button. So how do we click that button? Well, if it's not clicking it on your end, what you need to do is right click and then click inspect. If you don't see that option there, you want to click these three little dots and then click uh, more tools, developer tools. 
Now it might pop up over here, it might pop up down here, either way is fine. What we're gonna look for is this little thing right here, this little uh, mouse looking button. So click here and then it should start like highlighting all of the things that you're hovering over, right? And over here, if we pin the dock back up here, the same thing, click on this right there, right? Hovering over all these things, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find the element that we need to click. And so this is the element we need to click. Click on that, okay? So it's gonna show up over here. Now, uh, how this kind of works, and this is like the only complicated one, is this first button right here. Because you would, what usually happens is like, all right, you wanna click this element, cool. This is the element I wanna click, all right, awesome. Usually there's multiple elements within the element, right? So this one, like you can see path, SVG, div, right? So there's a couple different ones. Usually the div is the one that you wanna click. But in this case, div is not the one you want to click. Actually, div didn't really work. Um, and so we're going to go back to finding the SVG, right? Find the SVG. And uh, if I right-click, what usually happens, you right-click it, click copy, and then copy full XPath. And then you paste it into here. So we're going to go back into click, and we're going to paste that one in there. Oops, come on, Bo. And we paste it. The thing is, is that that one doesn't work. So the SVG doesn't work just for this one. And so right above the SVG, we can see... These are the different elements. So we have div right here, and we have button right here. Div, 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 div. As you see that div style, static section, right? And so uh, I think SVG is just the photo. So like the actual icon here is that's what it is. It's like new message, the color, the fill, the height, you know. And so I think that's literally just the photo of it. And so we need to find the button, and the button is basically the thing that we can actually click. And we're not really trying to find the photo. We're trying to button the button within the photo. And so if you go up to, right, it just says button right here. And so this is the one we want to click, this button, right? And as you can see, it highlights over here, the button, uh, right? And so we're going to right-click that one, copy, full XPath, all right? So again, it might be different on your computer, and so that's why we're changing this, all right? And we're going to go in here. So we're going to go into the click, number four right here, change the target, and we're going to just paste, oops, delete this one, and paste our new one here, paste, awesome. All right, and then what you can also do just to make sure that it worked, you can click this find button right here, and then it says, hey, we found it, right? It's right there, cool. So that means it worked, fine. All right, next one is the type box. So once it clicks on here, it's gonna need to type in our text. And so we need to find this element. Let's just say you have a problem with this. We need to find the input box. And so we're gonna click on this again, gonna find the element, and we're gonna find the input box, right? So, all right, input dot, right? So that's the input box that works perfectly fine. So we're gonna click on that one, and we're gonna right click, Right, it comes up in here. We're going to select it, right-click, copy, full XPath. Go back in here, go to the type, and then we're going to uh, type it in here, paste. Cool. And then we click find. All right, found it right there. Cool, awesome. RoboMotion uh, <laughs> UI Vision also has their own selector tool. So you can click select here, and it'll select it for you. Sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does. So for some of these things, it doesn't work. And so for this, as an example, it did work and it worked fine and it's a little more simple to use. But for some of the things like clicking on the button up here, it didn't work for me. And then uh, finding whether or not the element was there, it didn't work for me. Uh, and so that's why I like kind of doing the, the elements because it's like, this is exactly what we're looking for, this one right here. And uh, I think this one's, the, the selector tool in here is a little more nuanced. So anyways, all right, next one is click profile. All right, so we're clicking on this, we're finding the name. So, uh, let's do Kirsten Fox. All right, all right, let's just say we're finding that person. Now we wanna click on that person's profile. So we need to click on the prof profile. So we're gonna find, or we can click this, this, this. But we really wanna find the div of the entire button. All right, so if I hover right outside of it, we're getting the div of the whole thing. So that should be the one that we want. All right, div, right click, copy, full XPath, dopamine. Come on, do I hate that? All right, boom, and then paste. Awesome. Then another click, clicking the next button. All right, that's pretty easy. You know, we're gonna, oops, use our selector tool here. Finding this next button, div, cool, copy, copy full XPath. Awesome. Go back into here, and then, oh, jeez. <laughs> Pasting that in there, boom, awesome. All right, the next button is found. What's the next thing? All right, uh, this one is, Probably the not even the most complicated. This is the this so this what this one's doing. Asset element not present. All right, so the one here number eleven asset element not present. This one is basically seeing 
have we sent a message to this person in the past? And so we just need to go to someone that we've only sent one message to. Right, so this person we just sent one message to. Cool. And we need to see if uh, we need to grab that element. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the message that we sent. All right, so the div here of the entire message. Cool. Grab that one. Copy. Full XPath. All right. And so if you haven't, if, you, if there's someone that you haven't sent a message to. I missed something. Jesus, Alexa, you scared the crap out of me. No. Shut up, Alexa. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> asset present. Cool. We did it. Fine. If there's someone that you haven't sent like one message to, you just send a random message to like a celebrity. Just in deeper. You can send a message to him and just say, hey, I'm just testing something. And then you, you don't want it to do it, do it to somebody that you've sent a ton of messages to because the elements change when there's a ton of messages there. So we only, someone that we've only sent one message to, grab that element and then send it over to them. And then put it in the UI vision, sorry. All right, awesome. And then it's gonna check this, you don't have to do anything. Type, all right, the next thing which is typing. And so basically, this is the text field that we wanna type into. And so, type message, so that's this box right here, so we need to find that box, the input element there. Boom, text pad, text area. I think that's it, right, text area right there. Let's just do that one. Text area and input area are about the same. So that's something that you can type into. Copy full XPath. Go back into here. Boom. I know this seems complicated, but again, it's built out for you, so you don't have to do this. Uh, this is just if you have the problems of it not actually working or if anything changes on Instagram. Cool. And then click, and this is the click send button. All right, so now the last one, we need to find click. And then the send button doesn't exist right now, so we need to type in something in here. All right, now the send button exists. All right, so we're going to click. That button right there, as you can see, a highlighted button. Cool. That's the button that we want to click. Copy. Full XPath. And then click. Delete that. And then paste. Boom. So we click send. Awesome. Dopamine. And that is it. Now we can, uh, everything should be fixed with it. No problems. Uh, play. Play a loop. Two to five. All right, play that. So. What should happen is that it opens the fearless business lady again and it skips her because we already sent a message to her, moves on to the next person and sends them a message. Let's see. All right. Click that. No problem. It's going to search fearless business boss, fearless business boss. Add a go, add, add a girl. Sorry. Next. Oops. Looks like it didn't click the next button. It had trouble. All right, so we're gonna stop this. We're gonna try this again. So I think maybe we just gonna have a pause or a delay in between. Click. All right, I'm gonna add a, a quick pause. This you won't have to worry about this. This is just my own error. I'm gonna two seconds. This is because um, sometimes when you do things a little too fast, like the the computer isn't keeping up with everything that's happening. Also, that if that's a problem for you, where um, let's say it tries to load Instagram. And then it tries to do everything, but Instagram isn't fully loaded yet. And your computer, or your Wi-Fi is a little slower. You just have to increase these pause delays. So right now I have it set to five seconds. Like let's just say it takes your computer a little longer to load Instagram. Just change it to 10 seconds. So that's 10 and then three zeros, one, two, three. Um, so anyways, that's a little extra lesson because of my ignorance. All right. Uh, let's do this again. Play loop. Two to five. Boom. Fearless business. Fearless business coach boss coach ing dot co. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I can rap. Let's do a quick freestyle. Uh, Carson is my name. Automation my game. Your life will never be the same. Uh, yeah. Get on this train. Uh, yeah. I'm about to hit the fame. Stardom. Going to Harlem. I did it again, bro. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. This is my fault. Let's see here. Troubleshooting. All right. We can go to logs here, actually, too, and it'll show us what's going on. Oops, let's stop this here. Timeout when reach looking for element. All right. So it could not find the element. Let's try this. Let's try clicking the next button with the selector tool. So we're going to click on this. And then we're going to go to UI vision. And the selector tool that it gives us, 
by clicking new message button, then we're going to click. All right, so this one is the one that it has trouble on clicking the profile. No, we, we can click profile. Okay, which is clicking next button. All right. So this next button one, we're going to click selector. And this is the one that we want to select. Cool. Actually, maybe it's because we didn't select one. Oh, there we go. All right, let's try that. So uh, sometimes when you click on something like this, this element actually changes. And so like this, it might be a different element than this. All right, so now we'll click on that, and then we're going to open this up. And then click the div here. All right. Copy full XPath. Let's hope this actually works, and so I don't look like an idiot. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Clicking on next button. All right, cool. Click that. Paste that bad boy. Play loop. Yeah. I can do magic tricks. All right, let's try it. This is like, I don't know what to do like during the automations. I just kind of find out where I put my hands. All right. Watch this. That was hilarious. All right, click next button. It did it. All right, and it should skip her because, because we already sent her a message. Come on, come on. You can do it. I believe in you. Let's go. All right. So skips her, reloads, clicks the next person. Boom. Person number two, put them in there. Let's go find that person. I'll probably make a, a more extensive videos on how to use UI vision. I just kind of learned how to use it today. So I will do some more extensive, just like I did with a uh, robo motion. It'll be in the Hey, how's it going? Boom, worked fine, awesome. It'll be in the automations portion of the course. So, within the Notion tab, let's go to Notion here. Let's just stop this automation. Stop. And so that's basically, I think that's all you guys need to know, really. And so I'll add more to Notion of how to use UI vision. You can look up how to do it yourself. It's a pretty cool tool. And on top of that, I just gave you full access to it for free. So um, using this code, you don't have to pay anything. and You can automate basically anything on your computer. So I'll probably do the same thing for Google Calendar invites because um, we're using the, which by the time you're saying this is probably already updated, but right now we're using uh, RoboMotion, which is a little more complicated. So anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. I'm going to go to bed and I will talk to you guys soon. Now, I give this away for free because a lot of people ask me, why do you give this away for free? And I say, well, if I had this when I was starting out, I would have been so much farther ahead. I have literally, I have people in my YouTube comments, you can go through my YouTube comments, and people saying, Carson, I watch all the other YouTubers, you're the only one that really provided value, and I was able to get clients within the first couple of days of using your systems and strategies uh, for free. And so I have people that make $10,000 a month that never paid me a dime, which is pretty cool. So anyways, we have... Uh, in here, a lot of things, I would watch the first three or four videos in here kind of talking about the mindset around getting appointments. And then all these other videos are about how do we actually get appointments to uh, get more sales calls for ourselves and everything like that so we can grow our agency. So that's that. Now, I do have an advanced strategies and an advanced course. So in the advanced course, we have a ton more strategies to get a ton more sales calls. And so we have like Facebook prospecting, Facebook automation works really well for me. Uh, Instagram works really well. WhatsApp automation works really well for me. SMS works extremely well, especially from your phone. So I've got S sending SMS from your phone on autopilot. So it automatically sends messages and you get a ton of sales calls from that. A lot of our people actually did. They just do SMS from their phone for the first couple of days, get appointments and sales calls coming in and then close their first deal and then keep going from there and then try the other strategies. WhatsApp, I don't know if I already said that one, but a lot of these uh, work extremely well. And then we have weekly coaching calls. So if you need any questions from me, if you have anything specifically where you need to ask me directly, we kind of hop on the call. We talk to each other for uh, an hour and a half where we kind of just go through the room, see what anyone's problems are and kind of uh, help each other out. And then there is a Discord community and everyone is very active in the Discord community. We have people, you know, uh, Matt Lucero here is having too many sales calls, which is a good testimonial, I guess. And uh, also... Closing deals, uh, twenty five hundred dollars closed. Uh, this guy closed four thousand uh, dollars. Uh, this guy closed his first deal. Awesome. This guy, Alexi, he started literally a week ago and closed his first deal within four days. He had he's fifteen years old, has no clue how to had no clue. Sorry, I'm burping. <laughs> had no clue how to do any of this stuff. Uh, literally four days ago or a week ago. So, closed his first deal within four days of uh, joining the program, which is awesome. So, anyways.
that's all the kind of what you get. Also in the Discord, you can ask me questions directly in there. I usually respond within the first couple of hours and I usually just send you a Loom video like this. Hey, this is what I would do if I were you. Also, we have a one-on-one -on -one onboarding call with me and you and we go over, you know, a lot of times the situation that you're in is usually, I've been, I had an agency for a couple months. I don't really know how to get consistent sales calls. I'm usually relying on referrals or word of mouth or nothing at all. I'm just trying to get sales calls and nothing's really working. And so that's probably why you're in this course and why you're, uh, you're looking through this stuff. So we kind of go over what niche to target, uh, what, I, what I would do if I were you, what like kind of uh, channels to use, because you don't need to use all these. You don't need to watch all these videos on uh, LinkedIn automation and Facebook automation and all that stuff. You just need to use what works for your audience, what works for your spe specific audience. And I've worked with hundreds of agencies in the past, so I kind of know what works for each industry. So I kind of give you that advice, help you set up the campaigns that you need. And then also on top of that, we give you access to a lot of the softwares that are in this course for free. So we give you go high level. We give you access to a Facebook automation tool, uh, Instagram automation, WhatsApp automation, Google Calendar invites automation, SMS automation, a voicemail drops automation, just all these automation tools that you don't have to pay extra for. We also scrape lead lists for you. So you don't have to pay extra for lead list tools. And we also give you access to tools so that you can scrape, scrape lead lists for yourself. So if you want us to scrape lead lists, like you just want all the plumbers throughout the United States, you can just ask my team to get it for you and we'll get it for you. And you can do that within here. And also if uh, you just want to pull it yourself, we'll give you access to tools and you don't have to pay extra for those tools. So anyways, also just some extra stuff like client case studies, a database of 450 million contacts. Uh, these, the client case studies are just things that other people in the community are also doing and how they're kind of using things and what's working really well for them. So like voicemail drops and SMS and how they're doing it. So anyways, that's everything that is included. Also on top of that, if it doesn't work for you within the first 30 days, if you're not satisfied, if you're not getting sales or leads within the first 30 days, I give you all your money back. Plus you get to keep everything that's in the program for free. So you get to show up to the uh, coaching calls, you get access to the community and you still get to keep access to all the tools for free. So uh, if you're interested, you can book a call with my team below. It is $2,000. It is not, uh, people think for some reason it's $15,000 or $10,000. It's two grand right now. The price is going to go up in, in about a month to three grand. We're just going to keep raising the price until people start hesitating. And so if you're watching this video, it's still probably two grand. So I would just book a call as soon as you can. Now the calendar fills up pretty quick. So you might have to book a couple days out. I'm sorry about that. But anyways, that's how it works. So if you're interested, also we do split payments. So if you can't pay two grand right now, but you can pay a grand and a grand, you know, a month from now, we can do split payments as well. So if you're interested, book a call below. 30 day money back guarantee, blah, 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 blah. I love you. Thank you for watching. And I will talk to you soon.